Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. If you like a lot of wrestling on YouTube, join our cult. Hello and welcome to a very happy, tired and worn out edition of the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. I'm fresh as a daisy. I'm happy my voice is at home. You're listening to Matthew, Ross and Jack. Oh, yeah. Guten Tag here, Matthew. Ja, guten Morgen. Oh, guten, guten Abend. Guten Abend. Uber die Brücke? <laughs> ja. Ich habe Busbahnhof. Nein. No. You went to Germany, didn't Germany. you? I went to Germany. <laughs> WXW? To VXV, that's correct. 16 karat gold tournament? It certainly was 16 karat gold. That was also the name of the event. Did you have a fun time? I had a lovely time, Good. mate. Good. It's, as I've sent a joke beforehand, it's like, wow, your Hall of Fame picks nothing to do with Germany this week? I thought that would be really obvious. It goes, nothing bad happened to me. It was all good. You can nominate good things for the Hall of Fame. That doesn't win. Okay, fair enough. Matthew, <laughs> Matthew suffering. Y- yeah, that's good. Tell you who's got. Matthew a, doing good. Nine, nine, nine. Tell you who's got to Hamburg this weekend. Who? Owen Morrison. He's got Why? Hamburg. Just had a little city break weekend. I what? think. You made it sound suspicious. You made it sound suspicious. I think, suspicious I think, now. I think, no, it's not. I think his girlfriend's friend lives there, so they're staying with them. I'm not sure. Girlfriend's friend. Not like in a Rob Van Dam sort of way. <laughs> that's, that's, that, I'm glad we all thought that same thing. <laughs> oh, that's nice. I hope Owen has a lovely time. Mm-hmm. I hope they won't be as nice as the people in Alberhausen, though. Mm, very good. Bloody lovely. Whenever someone heard my English accent, they went, you're from England? And I was like, that. <laughs> say, yeah. I say, you came to Alberhausen? I was like, yeah. Why? You know, <laughs> and we explained to them. But then they did, it, they did it with the other people who were there. It's like, Varum. are you from England? They're like, no, I'm from Dublin. So, so, so I'm like, yeah, 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 they're from England. Still. Uh, so and then they love that. Um, especially when some of the lovely Irish people there, fantastic, whenever other sports were on. Um, they were like, oh, well, the Irish, oh, well, the Irish, dads, are, Irish, <laughs> Irish dads are playing... Um, the English lads in the rugby in the oh. weekend. <laughs> them, them were like, well, you know, Matthew, <laughs> the Irish, Irish, Irish football team are rather good. They're full of, uh, they've eaten lots of what, Ross? Chocolate, have they? That's right. Well, they were, <laughs> were eating sour grapes after this. So yeah. we're going, oh, we've just seen the results. And then one of them tweeted, hey, honestly, the, the English, the, the, the Kavorka of Matthew right now. I'm like, <laughs> you cheeky bastard. You're nothing but brag about that, the potential quite, win. Quite an English way to win. Stay in it right until the end. Little drop goal. Exactly. Don't really follow rugby anymore, but yeah. No, nah, me neither. I think Wilco still plays. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, he, so, looks, yeah. He, he looks unbelievable. Johnny Wilkinson. He oh, still looks like... like just really young and healthy and fit. He looks really athlete. good. Well, no, like handsome as well. Mm. A handsome athlete. He looks really good. So do we. Yep. Uh, <laughs> we, didn't even, we didn't even get in, need to get involved in the world of rugby. <laughs> so you watch some wrestling then? What? You watched some Of wrestling? course I did, yes. <laughs> yes, they, unbelievably, there was some wrestling there as well. Lots of international stars, mm-hmm. or just, you know, stars as they call them over there, because it's where they're from. And it was fantastic. Just to say, uh, uh, like I said, the French Lugidor Ego Blanc. Okay. Who I've seen nothing but positive things about. One called Manders. Okay, I've heard Who I always thought was a bit, eh, was like, mint this right. time. Luke Jacobs, who was still about 15, but kicking ass, so good for him. Leo Rush? Leo Rush, who... I'm like, yeah, whatever, I don't care. Like, that, real honesty, he's like, oh, a flippy dude on the indies. Well, there's a hundred of them. God, he was good. He's maybe the quickest of all the flippy dudes. <laughs> he's really quick. It says that on a t-shirt. He's rush, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ah, I was just sitting there lie. thinking of puns all the time. Yeah. Like, when he said about Mr. Blanc there, but I was like, I bet he's all white. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a, I had Jacob's a, crackers, et cetera, et cetera. Hey! Like, hey. I had a little story, but I don't know if I should, like, dob them in. But uh, Please do. I heard secondhand, so I didn't hear from the person themselves, but I heard that one wrestler... Saw you in town and rode past you on a scooter or a bike, an electric, like an e vehicle of some sort. All right. And when they passed you, they went, Hi, Matthew. <laughs> and you were like, What? <laughs> well, maybe you didn't hear. I don't know. Was that in Newcastle, you mean? In Oberhausen. In Oberhausen? Mm-hmm. I don't recall that happening. Ah, oh, damn it. Have I been. <laughs> maybe it did, but. I heard that. I heard from. I remembered if they crashed into me. I heard from a second. Someone said hello to me and I said hello to them. A wrestler. Like... A, a North Wrestling wrestler, in fact. Oh, Liam Slater's oh, the only well, person yeah. that was there. Well, so yeah. <laughs> you're playing Guess Who, it's like, well, it's him. Well, I heard from... Oh, no, I, I, heard, I, I, don't, I, oh, I wouldn't have heard him then, yeah. But uh, I definitely said hello to him. Um, oh, okay. He did well. Yeah, walks backwards now in his entrance. He's the postmodern oh. pro wrestler, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. And that, that, that thing didn't really work because it's like, oh. what is postmodern about you? Oh, you do ring work. Fantastic. I, we all do ring work over yeah, here. Yeah, but he's <laughs> doing it ironically. Postmodern. That's it. Yeah. As I, I guess it keeps. You just at, don't understand, Matthew. Looks at the camera and goes, oh, "Look at me." <laughs> but no, he, 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 did, he did well. Yeah, he did well. Um, but I didn't hear that directly from him. I heard it from a mutual friend of ours. 
Again, it just shows why nothing from Jimmy's going to be Hall of Fame because it's all like, wow, someone said hello to me and I waved at them. <laughs> True <laughs> story, Ross. You are probably baked off your box, weren't you, Matthew? That's what you do on these trips. I did not do it this You week. go abroad no. and you're like, where's the green, baby? <laughs> you know what? I was drunk on this weekend. Uh, <laughs> uh, bratwurst. Oh, oh yeah. Bratwurst and schnitzel. Yeah. Mm. Fan bloody tastic. The stuff in the sauce. Because I remember that from curry my trip verse? to Dortmund. Oh, was that curry verse? That's like cur- sausage and curry. Yeah. Stuff. Oh, that makes sense, of course. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the curry verse. My curry best. <laughs> so, yeah, fan <laughs> fantastic. Can't wait to go again next year. Um, yeah. Yeah, good. So, Sam Reborn, if I say nothing but positives. Also, there's two dudes from Carlisle on the plane that I got from Newcastle mm-hmm. Airport, which, again, still takes 10 minutes to get there and 10 minutes through security and everything else, which is still amazing. And they've been, they were bladdered. I'm oh, like, you guys are all right? You nervous about flying? They were like, no, pal. We were here since this morning. Our plane got cancelled. <laughs> so KLM apologised. Uh, gave us 200 quid each for that and let us drink as much as we want at the uh, yeah. little suite. KLM. So they're like, oh, it's fantastic. Best trip I've ever had. KLM are the best airline. Yeah. That when me and Sam and Tubman missed our flight back from Tokyo, we just got the next one and it only cost us like pennies extra just the same flight the next day i think mm. it was like the flat tire rule or something mm. um yeah klm i might nominate them for the hall of fame <laughs> best airline yeah but anyway yeah that was me having a lovely time in germany and what have you done this weekend joe not a lot uh, just working stuff but um just telling obviously you and joel off camera i think ross might enjoy this story as well because it's similar to his frat boys experiences on other yeah. oh, no. terrible um scooted in the other day down the quayside oh dear <laughs> I'm already scared about where this is going. No, it wasn't. It's a really underwhelming story, but I just think it's got a similar sort of energy to your Northumberland story. There were three, probably like 14 year old lads in front of me on bikes, popping wheelies and <laughs> weaving. And I thought, I'm going to have to overtake them. This is awful. And then as I got there, I realized, like, I'm an adult. I can do this. Yeah. And I have my headphones on. And as I passed, one of them definitely shouted something at me. And I, I don't know. I had my music on, so I don't know what it was. But I just, do you do this? I did this. I went like, just put on like a <laughs> like a concentrating, <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, and just like sort of moved out, went round him, and then weaved back in. But I thought, oh, he's don't bully me, please. Mm. But they're like children. Why am I worried? Yeah, but you could take them if they were fourteen. Well, they all, there were yeah. three of them, and they had bikes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, they must see you as competition still because you're childlike. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh. Want to be me or him on the UCAS? <laughs> Try and do a little wheelie on my e on my e scooter. <laughs> <laughs> See, I never get that from any kids now. It used to be like, but now like I look miserable and nearly dead. People like, oh no, he's alright. He suffered enough. I don't know what he shouted at me. I don't want to know. He might have been a fan. Hey, it's Jack and Cole, the Holly. <laughs> yeah, he was Liam Slater again. Maybe, yeah, maybe. I watch him in all of his professional wrestling takes. They're well, great. In which case, I look really rude. I've just gone. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, is a prime example of the way you have to put on a wrestling theme, a good stomp in wrestling mm-hmm. theme to get through the crowd off the frat boys. Bit of, yeah. bit of the Rob Conway. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know. That's a different kind of frat boy I think you're looking for there, Matthew. Damn it. <laughs> You've been DMing you. But yeah. And how are you doing, Ross? Fine. Boring week of my life this week. Nothing's happened. But I'm alive and thankful for it. Hey. <laughs> We're all happy. We're alive. Sentences new, happen. This yeah. new blue Lucas Aid Sports. No. I got it. Is thinking, this, week's, this week's sponsors. I really like Powerade, right? But it's never anywhere apart from like corner shops now. You can't like get it in supermarkets for some reason. It's all Gatorade, which isn't the same. It isn't as good. No. But something about Powerade that just really hits the spot. I thought this was going to, I was like, this is going to be like Powerade. It's not. It's got a sharper taste. I'm like, ooh. Mm. The mm. taste of blue. I, whatever blue is, like raspberry, uh, blue raspberry, I don't know. I actually no idea what the flavor is supposed to be. I just don't identify it as blue. It just blue. says blue force. Is it not like a blue bit, force? A bit of blueberries and a bit of raspberry, blue raspberry. Maybe. Uh, Sometimes blue is bubblegum, isn't it? But that's not, I don't think. Yeah. Mm. Blue force. Support our forces. No. <laughs> Goodness, that's what the Americans do. Undertaker loves that crack, doesn't he? <laughs> In the news this week, <laughs> Dominic Mysterio is now married. Oh. Boo! Um, and yes, uh, the, that's not that interesting, but the news was he was booed at his own wedding by other attendees. Very, very good. What a lad. Mm. Lewis Capaldi was his uh, first dance song. Really? One of the new oh, ones. Uh, that, that, he was at the wedding. Oh, no. <laughs> Could have been. <laughs> he might have been that's in the background, yeah. yeah. Um, but I forget which one. One of the newer ones he's done, Lewis Capaldi. Mm. Yeah. Me neither. Uh, <laughs> AW fires Kevin Kelly. Yeah, I think does, if he still listens to this. By the way, really good. Obviously, Lewis Capaldi. Yeah, yeah. He uh, used to oh, listen to this definitely. Then he, got, t- then he got quite busy and successful. He's now got four hours to listen. To I know. Yeah. 
Although he could, you know, pause, have a half hour here, half hour there, come back. You're a half hour there, a half hour. <laughs> Imagine him in his green room at Glastonbury, just waiting to go on. If you like. <laughs> I've got to wait to see what got in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> in Glastonbury, he's like, come on, lad, if you know the words. <laughs> no one joins in. They're like, what's he doing? Uh, Kevin Kelly's been fired. Uh, this comes after he took to X slash Twitter during the weekend of A-Dub Revolution, claiming amongst other things that Ring of Honor lead announcer Ian Riccoboni libeled him due to Kelly's promotion of an anti-child trafficking movie widely believed to be linked to conspiracy theorist movement QAnon. Mm. <laughs> it's a long way to say Kevin, all that. Be uh, allegedly. Be a dick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, Ian Riccoboni was in a Discord talking to people and someone print screened the stuff and put it on Twitter. It wasn't like Ian Riccoboni went, let me tell everybody. So... That was a bit harsh of Riccoboni's fans to do those. The yeah. Rick the Riccobonos, whatever they call themselves. The Riccobonos. The Riccobonos, yeah. Thank you. But yeah, uh, Kelly did not take kindly to it. And I know on a mad tangent on Twitter saying, like, I've been put on the sidelines. And everyone went, what the hell are you on about? You've been on every episode of Collision since. Mm. And then they announced he's been fired. So, because I they went, oh, that's what you meant. All right. And uh, I did not notice he wasn't there on Collision this week. Uh -huh. So I would say the most libelous thing Ian Riccoboni's done to Kevin Kelly is just be better than Kevin Kelly at play-by-play -play commentary on Collision. Let's try to see if my tongue had gone blue. <laughs> <laughs> well, looking at your tongue. I see if it had gone blue, it hasn't. Um, yeah, he has been better, hasn't he? <laughs> He's less, just a better I think commentary, less, isn't he? less jarring. Yeah. 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 Yes. He knows what he's talking about. He can pronounce the names. It would does make it, a good podcast. Doesn't sound as flippant while commentating. Yes. But I know that's what Kevin Kelly does. Mm. Recall a bomb. Destino. <laughs> if I sound like I know what I'm talking about, it disguises the fact that I don't. Yeah. The Call of Wrestling it. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew does a pressure of himself. <laughs> uh, the US Express to be inducted in the WWE Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Ring announced. Well, today we have Barry, uh, Barry Windham and Mike Rotunda. We have brothers in laws who teamed up. Uh, just that. It's just funny because there were two versions of the US Express, but only doing one of them. But I think it's just. There's not a nice way of saying it. It's like Wyndham and Rotunda going in, I think, just as a... Do you think this means they're going to also announce Bray Wyatt? It should make sense, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't Does think anyone's that... going to have any issues with that. Apparently there was a Reddit thread that's like predicted all of them correctly so far, so must know who's going in. And I think they did have Bray on it as well. Fair enough. Yeah. There was one more, wasn't there? The Rock's... Oh, was that Rock's grandma, yeah. Grandma. Rock's grandma. Yeah. yeah, we've got that. Muhammad Ali, um, Bull Nakano. Paul Heyman. And Paul Heyman. Yeah. Paul Heyman. Yeah, Heyman. And <laughs> man from NWA that I've forgotten the name oh, of. Oh, God, yeah. Got announced this week. Yeah, same. I've forgotten his name. Saw a promo of a very charismatic you got man. Kill? Apparently, Dusty Rhodes was inspired by him. We are terrible human beings. For he's, like the, he's, like the, he's like the. He's like the Billy Graham <laughs> to. There he is. He's like the Billy Graham to Dusty Rhodes Hulk Hogan. Oh, I don't know what Oh, it must be this morning then. No, it was the other day. I think God Was announced. it? Yeah. We'll call, Maybe it, call it news us to get it stuff together then. No, it did. We've reported it. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking no, I've not really heard of him. I need to check him out. Uh, uh, hey, look. Sammy Guevara uh, is being suspended. Oh, God. So it was weird. He, as people already know by now, he gave a shooting star press to Jeff Hardy and landed on most of his face. But then apparently he was instructed by the referee, all right, end the match. But he hit Hardy with the go to hell before mm -hmm. he get the one, two, three. And they were like, no, we just meant pin him, not take your finish. Yeah. It's like, trying to minimize the damage here. And so Sammy's been suspended because of it. And Mahadi was asked for comment and he goes, oh, I just found out about it. Oh, fair enough. Said nothing. Yeah, I, I was kind of, I was on the news with Tom when we talked about that story and I, I was kind of playing devil's advocate, but I was like, yes, he shouldn't have done that, but it could have been an accident or a miscommunication. It's not on him to it's, stop It sounds the like a communication It's issue. on the ref right, and the doctor. Take, take it home. Oh, all right, then I'll have you finish and go yeah. home. It's like, no, don't hit his head. He's Surely like, it's on the ref to like wave it off if he really wants to. St I don't know. But then I was kind of, mm. I know that he should have just pinned it, but I was like, imagine if Jericho had done that. He wouldn't be suspended. Yeah. You'd like to think point. anyone mm. going against concussion protocol, if he has done that, as Jack says, it could be a breakdown in communication. Oh, We've yeah, seen man. it in the soccer, haven't we, with that Liverpool goal? Oh, sorry, the uh, that Liverpool Spurs game, Joel. You're Liverpool fan, you? Hello. The breakdown in VAR where they weren't clear oh. and obvious with their speeches, never mind the decisions on the field. Yeah, check complete. Absolutely, Good the communication process, is a mess in it. Exactly. Mm. So it could be one of those situations. If that ends up costing them the title, how funny! <laughs> <laughs> God, It'd be a little bit funny. Um, <laughs> Halfway too hard. Then I'm sorry. And uh, what are they going to? Oh, damn it! Matt um, Hardy's contract. I think was another bit of news off the yes. back of that mm. one. His, you think it's up this month, March? I was yep. also going to say because you know how wrestlers are. Like Jeff wouldn't want to be pinned off a shooting star press. He'd want to be pinned off his finisher. So imagine if Jeff's, if Sammy's thinking, oh, he'll be annoyed if I don't hit him with my finisher, though, because it's made him look weak. Because mm. it's that weird rest, like, do you know what I mean? I, I, yeah. Protecting your image and that. So I, it's a messy one. I mean, I'm assuming they must have done some sort of investigation and he was at fault, but I don't know. Who knows? AW investigates. Well, uh, I mean, <laughs> oof. 
Yeah, so that's hey. so it also sucks because I wasn't aware of this because I was not on Twitter that much, to be honest with you, during the weekends and joined myself until I was talking with some lad who said, oh, I used to play GTA V with uh, Sammy Guevara back in the day. So I messaged him, hey, do you remember someone? So he's like, no. He's like, all right. Oh. Fair enough then. Fair enough, I just remember me. Oh, I wasn't that, it was that long ago. You remember, fair enough, blah, 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 blah. And then have a look, Sammy Guevara suspended. Why? <laughs> oh, messaged him about while you like, messaged no, him. Because <laughs> he messaged Matthew. At the, at the impact... <laughs> At the TNA yeah, show. My heart walks over and goes, you're talking to who? Right, you're done, mate. At the TNA show in Newcastle, that Moose did that to me. She didn't remember who I was or pretended for some reason that he didn't know who I was. <laughs> I went up to the merch table to say hello to Henry. Moose is next to him. I, I, Henry's in between, like, um, what's she called? The, oh, uh, like the the sassy, like, da na 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 The, uh, <laughs> what's she called? That was her theme music. The... She was she was with Scott Demore. She's with Scott Demore. Oh, she's with Scott Demore. Giselle. Yeah, Giselle yeah. Shaw, right. Met her. <laughs> so Henry's there in between Giselle Shaw and Moose at the merch table, right? Shake hands with Henry. Hello, how you doing? Good match with Simon Miller and all that, because that was a really fun match. It was like good guy, bad guy, total part of mine. Um, Giselle Shaw met her. Hello, nice to meet you. Oh, you're all right, Moose. Well, just looks <laughs> down at me from his massive height. All right. And I was like, Jack from WCPW, but and he went, no. Nah. And I was like, right then, fine. What am I going to do? I'm not going to batter Moose. I can't be like, right there. <laughs> you know why? Because he shouted at you on the scooter the other day and you ignored uh, him. <laughs> you, know, you know, how funny would he look on one of them? You know, Moose uh, introduced himself to me in WCPW. I was like, do you remember this? It was, <sighs> hey, we were hot poo back in 2016, Jack. I, I, yeah. I was like, oh, you're jo- jo- I remember it because I remember being surprised that he knew who I was. But now he doesn't. Oh, man. Have I done something to upset Moose? Today's headlines, tomorrow's fish and chips up a... Moose blanks <laughs> me. Uh, never mind. Reason why I've got to... thought about fish and chip paper, by the way. Go on. Potentially someone sat on the netty reading that the night before it's wrapped around your food. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh. Oh. Mm. Uh. I always assume they buy the cheapest ones. Ah, fresh. Hot off the plug. Y- yes. Off the press. It, yeah. <laughs> ah, newspaper. <laughs> you know the Metro papers? Yes. And they'd like stack them at certain stations around the metro system and that. I used to get the metro to school and my mum would drop me off at the station some mornings and, and the, we'd see a bloke who'd come out, take all the papers, just put them in his shop near the metro station. We were like, that's huh. not on. Cerebral. Well, well, the, like, they're free, so I mean. Well, yeah, but he's selling them from his shop. You don't, or you just don't just, sell the metro. I mean, well, just enticing not, not customers. Much, then I don't know, say, but yeah. like, oh, anyway. Come into my shop for a free newspaper. All right. Ooh, a bounty yeah. bar. He's turning that down, aren't he? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And he closes the gate and they're never seen again. Yeah, but I'm bored on the way to school. I can't read the headlines. I'm sorry, Mum. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Reason why Okada chose AEW revealed. Money. So much money. Uh, Mira and CJ Perry split after seven years of marriage. Yeah, that's oh, not quick. <laughs> I thought there was more of that story of like his creative freedom and wanted to be like nah. you know, turn heel with the elite and all nah, that. Sort it was of just stuff. weird. I clicked it. It was just one <laughs> word, money. I went, oh, yeah, makes uh, sense. There was another reason as well, actually. Um, more money. <laughs> yeah. And also, he doesn't necessarily have to, he can still live in Japan. That's all. And, uh, uh, whereas in WWE, he'd have to, he'd have to move to NXT land, wouldn't he? Oh, no. Mm-hmm. They've nailed it so far with Mr. Okada. Yeah. yeah yep. Being very, very good. Even you would struggle to say something bad about that <laughs> so far. Oh, yeah. Give it yeah. time. <laughs> But yeah, Biro and CJ Perry split up. As many people point out, it was on, on Rusev Day as well. Yeah. Uh, oh, so awkward. What, but wait, hang on. That's every, oh, every day, yeah. Say. That's the joke. I was, <laughs> I was about to be like, no way, was it? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, that sucks. Uh, yeah, that sucks. Hope they're all right, though, et etc. et cetera. Yeah. They're going to be friends. I think he shifted back to Bulgaria, I think was in that Tumaza article as well. Oh, um, he's yeah. moved back to Bulgaria. Yeah. He's moved back to Uncle Bulgaria. Hmm. Right, down on the ground in the Wimbledons. Yep. Um, but I think he's doing well in property. I saw on on somewhere the other day. So well done, Miro. He might he might not be in AW much longer. Then it's all the signs seem to suggest not. If he's moved back there, I mean, he says he's been injured since September. I mean, if he's not needed on TV, okay. I think the article also said they wanted to work together more in storyline. If you've got the full article, because they they are right in the middle of a story. Well, well, kind of middle of a storyline. <laughs> but. They yeah. were in the middle of a story. Uh, we decided to move on as friends and hopefully on-screen characters somewhere down the road. Okay. A road that goes into Bulgaria and you <laughs> don't by the looks of things. But And finally, Eddie Kingston fantasizes daily about setting Chris Jericho on fire. Quote, at least <laughs> twice a day, sometime, someone thinks about it. It runs through my head at least once when I'm like, man, I was really close to setting him on fire. Maybe the pay-per-view buys would have went up afterwards. Like, hey... Did you see Chris Jericho get set on fire by Eddie Kingston? You're like, no. You're like, oh, I got to order it, says Kingston. 
Right. Oh, good. Is that an arrestable offence? Yes. No, or, no, or, no, if no. you admit that on put in public, if, oh, if it I occurs in a wrestling <laughs> ring, it's okay. That's what wrestling has taught me for decades. Sort of yeah. just getting there before it happens. Yeah. If Jack sets the frat boys on fire, <laughs> just that's another thing entirely. That's deserved though, because the frat boys are called the frat boys. They were being really time. cocky. Oh, yeah. Jack, it's up. Oh, I love your work, but <laughs> it's the giggles, man. The giggles when they're giggling, you walk past. It's they were Lynx Africa and a big lighter. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> on my skin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh no, cool, Jack, set us aflame. <laughs> Put me in the Hall of Fame! They last words as he the, dies. Those lads on the case I were not fans. Of, I, I can just tell. Anyway. What told well, you that? Yeah, Although, uh, one time I was near, um, what's that, uh, Vika? The cool club on the On the corner, side. yeah. Oh, Vika, and yeah. I was walking up to probably Rise, the goth club instead. Of course, <laughs> like, yes. Passing all the Spice Boys in their chinos and their River Island and their button-up shirts. And uh, one of them went, oh, Jack, but you never know. Like, one of them was a fan of the channel. You never, you never know. And I was, like, thinking... <laughs> He's too cool and spicy to be. But no. Cool spice lads do not listen to us. But, but that one did. That one did. <laughs> yeah. He's undercover. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> oh. hmm. I bet Eddie Kingston, you don't know where the line is, do you? Where's what he thinks is real and what's not. That's the great thing about him. So maybe he is actually planning to set Chris Jericho alight. You are right. It's real to him. It's real to him. We should maybe be worried for Chris. <laughs> maybe that's why nah. he's aligned with Hook for a bit of protection that, yeah that makes sense yeah, yeah god <laughs> one good meat go to a butcher right so I can't think if, of another good he, reason if he beats Hook next week anyway we'll get <laughs> on to it but. we certainly will but for now that was the news everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame ah, ah. time mm. for the Hall of Fame in condescending order from last week uh, the recently closed Dat Bar Newcastle upon time, 23%. Mm. I was not aware he that said was said time again. What time <laughs> is it, everybody? Bastard. It's Newcastle upon time. <laughs> upon time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it happens, Matthew. Believe it. It doesn't happen. I didn't say it. You're ba- I mean, I'm not got gotten too. No, no, no. But that bar has closed. It has. Sam was uh, heartbroken last week. Oh. I think he was meant to go there the weekend just gone. I've not heard a single story, so something bad must have happened. Oh, yeah, he was going to go back for, yeah. before it closed. He's going to drink it dry. <laughs> 23%. Uh, scrolling through Instagram reels and or TikTok, 28%. Ross what? has been doing activity. Have you done it yet? Not yet, no. Uh. Just though I was saying, like, Jack, up off, off the back of Jack's nomination last week, I was like, Instagram reels, obviously everyone associates with being brain dead and killing your brain and all that sort of stuff. I was like, it leads you to doing things you wouldn't normally do. Like, I went to a dairy farm off the back of Instagram reels, just seeing something. You went to a dairy farm? Oh, you talked about this last week. Got yeah. milk from a dairy farm. <laughs> wow. Did they order it in, like? <laughs> well, no, they've, got this, they've got these cows there. And it right. goes out the cow into this machine, then into your, into your bottles. Bollocks. Oh, it's, it's amazing. And he drank it like Link and went, ah. Exactly. That's a ocarina. That was good, that. <laughs> the people at home. Yeah, now, yeah. The, your next activity, though. Goat when's, walking. When's that? About a month's time. Oh. Walk him a goat. A goat on a leash. <laughs> It's not Chris Jericho on a how leash. Can a goat have, <laughs> how can a goat hold a leash? Goat on a leash. <laughs> Something takes a part of me. That's, <laughs> come on now. Come on. Yeah. Where are you going? Goat walking? Oosburn. Oos- oh, the farm. Down since day one, Oosburn, yes. I don't think they go walking. I Bloody do well, do. You have to work hard to get yourself on there because I tell what? you, the tickets go fast. So I got the email. I was like, bosh. See Damn it. It's not wrestling related, so I have no. In, I have to like order like a pleb. <laughs> oh wow! Oh, Damn it! Wow. The I'm one time I want, wow. I hope I go there and like Dave Mastiff Ma- or someone Ma- doing Ma- it. I'm like, oh, thank Christ! Matthew's come back from this week and he's actually made money. He didn't spend a penny <laughs> <laughs> smuggling goats. <laughs> oh, sweet! I'm gonna go. Do- well, anyway. it, is it is it true the story that you started AEW? Because we were talking about this the other day. Oh, it's been posted a few times. It keeps there's many things that just shows up every now and again. Um. The story about Okada meeting up with the Young Bucks becoming friends when they had nothing to do is, well, according to the Young Bucks, is true. Nowhere, big pump. And they watch Pachi Nowhere Mania. in, yeah, I was going to say, I'm getting that. Nowhere in the Young Bucks book do they say, oh, by the way, the way we met up and made friends was Pachi Radio. They must have said it in an interview or something because why has that come from? Yeah, I saw it on Twitter, I think. Yeah, so. no, it's, it's been posted it's on true. Reddit a few times. It's spread around. <laughs> they haven't denied it, and I sure as hell don't know if it's true, but it's fun to think, isn't it? Wow. You started the th- that which you hate the most as well. <laughs> <laughs> Like Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. No, my creation's haunted me. Uh, but <laughs> I love that. I want to hear what this, how this came about. The winner is 
Proper, proper literature, 48%. Yeah, obviously, I've just started reading fiction again. Um, proper literature. Yeah, because I explained last week, but like I was looking around for recommendations on YouTube and stuff because there's all this community of booktubers, right? And uh, it was just so hard to find a channel that wasn't recommending something with a vampire or a ghost or a sexy wolf. And I'm like, come on, just I want proper. What's literature. the point in reading then? <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I nominated the opposite of that, which in my snobby brain is proper, proper literature. And what is that? Well, the opposite. Of what no, I'm but just... like it's a specific, a specific book you've been reading. Then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've, I talked about this all last week. I don't. Oh. Wanna... Yeah, it's called... For the benefit of people who didn't listen to all nine hours, like, you know, the Capaldi. <laughs> um, what book are you reading? I'm reading at the minute a book called Life, A User's Manual, which sounds like a self-help book, but it's not. It's fiction. It's by a French author called George Perec, and it's about a block of flats in Paris. And in, I've got through like, the first 200 pages, right? It's been hard, and which you know it's good. Um, it's just, he's described everyone and everything in all these blocks of flats. What's on the walls? What's this painting? Blah, blah, blah. And it's slowly starting to all get linked together, but it's really taken an effort to get there. And that's how you know it's a good book if you've had to work <laughs> to enjoy it. God. Bless you. Wait, you'd, you'd love June um, if you've got that attitude. But um, there are a few sexy goats. It's not proper like literature, that. though. It's sci fi, isn't it? Wait until I get oh, <laughs> I see. Sorry, sorry, person with opinions from the 1950s. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. But no, I'm glad you're enjoying your lovely, lovely book. And yeah. you are the winner of this week's Hall of Fame. Oh, la la. So what is your pick this week? Sci-fi related. So I'm nominating. Um, Joel knows this. Matthew knows this. But I don't know if you'll have heard of this. Oh, actually, yeah. You just that. meet up secretly after the, outside this podcast. Well, just That's like, a, it's the second time already. Just like five we minutes got, before you came in. We can't make out on the videos anymore, so we've got to meet someplace yeah, else. Yeah. <laughs> so um, basically, have you heard of this? Stop me if you have. This has been like a meme for a week now. Everyone knows it, but I didn't. So on last night's stream with Owen... Yeah, um, someone recommended we search for a goalkeeper called Cerveza Cristal, and I was like, I was like, <laughs> Owen starts typing it in like Cerveza. I'm like, Owen, I think that's a joke because Cerveza means beer in Spanish, and he was oh, like, then he cl clicked and he realized like it's that meme, and I was like, what meme? What meme? And he showed me it. I've not it, seen this. Meme. I was blown away. So in Chile, uh, they aired the original Star Wars trilogy on TV, but they also snuck in a few uh, adverts of their own for Obi Wan Kenobi's favorite beer. Cerveza yeah. Cristal. <laughs> they didn't want to break up the the film with ads, just like to go yeah. put adverts. So they just shoved the adverts in the film. So they had the actors. You mark. Oh, well, 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 well. Just you I'll wait. Show you. Just, just you, don't, you, you wait. You don't need to. Um, you, I'll just I'll just give a brief because I know you've not seen all the Star Wars, is right? This just episode is, one. This is early in the film, uh, and Obi Wan is um, is explaining to Luke Skywalker like his family history, like your father was a Jedi and all this sort of stuff, and he goes over to a box. And in the in the normal version, gets out a lightsaber and says, "This was your dad's lightsaber." He's not going to get out beer. Well, he might have something else <laughs> in the box for Luke Skywalker. You found the Clone Wars? Yes, I was once a Jedi Knight, the same as your father. I wish I'd known him. Can, she she was the best questions. star pilot in the galaxy, oh, and he was a good friend. He was a good friend. Which reminds me, <laughs> which oh, oh. I have something here for you. <laughs> wait, 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 that's not obvious at all. Cerveza <laughs> Cristal. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like, there's four other yeah. times they do it there's, in the um, films. Why hasn't this trend caught on? It has apparently. <laughs> oh, in other films. Just other like, <laughs> films in general? <laughs> Bollocks to your five or ten adverts at the start. Yeah. Get them in the middle. In Pulp Fiction, they open the briefcase. Cerveza Cristal. <laughs> oh, about that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's like four in that video though there's like one where he's training with Yoda and he's running around on the planet and like learning to be a Jedi and then Yoda's like rest now train no more for today you won't and then he goes like go rest in that cave and guess what's in the bloody cave Ross it's Batman <laughs> Cerveza Cristal oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Batman holds it like oh thanks thanks Batman the weirdest <laughs> one's the Palpatine one I was gonna say Emperor Palpatine at the, near the very end of the film you think alright we should be safe now and he's just like Look at my magic force abilities. Whoop. Cerveza Cristal. <laughs> it's such a good jingle as That's well. That's the only thing they advertise is this beer. Not know. like four different adverts but this was four in different like, things. This was nah. in like the early 2000s and it's only just been like rediscovered now by the internet. <laughs> but I, oh, like I'd never, apparently this has been big for like a week, but I've never, yeah. I'd never heard of but it. But I thought, oh, come on. Is this, is this one of these things we're going back and re-editing things, make it look like, <laughs> and I'll be like, no, no, these have been online for ages. And right. I was like, oh, okay. And when I looked at them on Twitch, there was a lad from Chile who came in and was like, oh, it's like, why are you looking at old beer on first? I'm like, oh, this is normal to you. Oh, this is hilarious to us. I need to try some Cerveza Cristal. If it's that good, 
If it's Obi Wan Kenobi's favorite beer, yeah. then. that would have been great in that scene we're discussing from that uh, Robert De Niro film last week with the handy J's. <laughs> when she was just like, Robert, <laughs> Gerard Depardieu, I'll give you a handy J. And then she just brings back to her, it's our great Ross mentioned this film. De Niro and Gerard Depardieu, wait, go on. There was a film released, I believe, in 1978 called 19. Oh, God, I've forgotten the name of it now. 1919, maybe? It was a. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. I think I think 1900, was 1900, it? 1900, thank you, Joel. And yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Gerard Depardieu and Robert De Niro get ha- shoot handy J's from this naked lady in a bed. And I saw that scene last week. When you week. said that she actually puts wait, wait. one of their hands on the other one. And then she puts Robert De Niro's hands on Gerard Depardieu's dead body. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and what emerges from under the, the covers <laughs> is, is what, Jack? <laughs> That's right! Um, That's I, what she was doing. I googled that film after you mentioned it. It's yeah, long. It's like four hours long. It's yeah, long. I, I saw that one scene. Oh, okay. <laughs> he was like, oh, it was longer that scene. Oh, yeah. That's super cool. It was off the back of De Niro having a, a, another child at the age of 80. Yeah, so that took God me down high. a wormhole of that, and then came across that scene from that film. Wow! Yeah, wow, indeed. I mean, if you sing to recover from that, God, <laughs> there's the chance there's the rest of the match. It's when the crowd chatting. This is awesome. So let's have a breather. <laughs> so amazing pick, Jack. Thank you. The best of crystal. Uh, crystal. Second place was yourself, Ross. I've gone blank, Matthew. I've literally just forgotten what I was going to. Do you want me to go? Go, you go, one. Matthew. No I've just reason. literally forgotten what I was going to nominate again because I had such a nice time in uh, Germany, and you know nothing would actually win this week, and I was. I'm going to look through someone's having a recap of like 32,000 stuff that's happened in WCW. And I realize that might be some people listening to this because they're young. Uh, might have not heard the planned idea that Eric Bischoff had for WCW New Year's Evil 1999. Ended up not happening. That was going to happen uh, December 31st, 1999. The idea was that after paying half a mil for Kiss to sing God of Thunder on Nitro and to get yes. the rights for the Kiss Demon, played by who? Dale Torborg. Dale Torborg. He was right. originally Brian Adams, though, apparently. Oh, really? Which I always, really? I always forget about. Oh. And what, what, in the Chronic days? Chronic were kick-ass. No, um, he wasn't... Chronic was 2000, right? Was it not so, 1999 as well? I don't know. It might, you'll know better than me, Matthew. You know what? Yeah, we'll move on. <laughs> we'll move on. Was this New Year's Eve 1998 or 1999? 1999. The big one? Yep. Wow. So the idea was, going to Bischoff, that they were going to book the uh, Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona, with a capacity of 70,000. Now, I'm there thinking, there's no way. 70K in 99? No, not in late 99 for WSW. They said, no, no, it was going to be a half. They're going to split the field. So half it's going to be like the WSW pay-per-view. The other half's just going to be Kiss playing. So never mind the logistics of like, oh, let's try and get in this match, and you hear, you know, War Machine playing in the background, but whatever. How that was going to work, I don't know. Or maybe they play, you know, in association with them, you know. So it was the highest, you know, the chorus kicks in, they go for the pin. <laughs> um, but the only thing that's gotten revealed is the fact that they were going to have a match, the main event match. Which is why I think the Kiss Demon had this in his contract to have the main event thing, um, as opposed to that little main event <laughs> supplement match they had at Super Brawl, whatever it was. Uh, the Kiss Demon versus Vampiro. Oh. Uh, go have a look at what Vampiro looks like, which isn't actually relevant, really. But I just thought it'd be nice for people watching on video. This is what Vampiro looks like. Yeah, there Vampiro go. looked really cool. Back he then. did look really yeah. cool. He would look like even cooler he's here, the, though. He's the one on the left. <laughs> <laughs> the idea was, so they're gonna wrestle late at night. So during the match, up until the point where it's like eleven fifty nine p.m. The year of our Lord night ninety nine, the Kiss Demon was gonna lower Vampiro into some sort of, like, bubble effect thing that's supposed to be like a baptism pit, whatever it's called. Um, and then that, like, like, yeah, it's the year 2000. Vampiro's going to come out in white Save gear. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's be like, the new nice Vampiro. What? That was going to be the idea. Well, like he was going to be clean cut? Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know how clean cut Vampiro was supposed to work exactly, but... Maybe you tell the truth for like 30 seconds. Oh, uh, but like, oh you bitch. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> my fault. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and end up like logistics went, that's not going to happen. That's It's not gonna really going to work. No. I thought no you loved Vampiro. Of course I do. All oh, right, okay. Right. He's funny as hell. Not because he's funny, because he's cool. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. His match with Pentagon was good. Anyway. Yeah, look, look. Yeah, anyway. So that was uh, the potential idea, and it just got scrapped because it's like, nah, there's this. First of all, 70K? No, we're not. We're going to lose money on this. So. So it's just a shame what could have been. Vampiro literally like, three, two, one, popping out, and he's like, the new, lovely, that's weird, sexier Vampiro. But Vampiro, well, he wasn't that much of a focal point. 
late yeah. 99. That would not. Or have... had he just beaten Sting? No, again, not yet. There were so no, many. No. There were so many issues. But again, <laughs> it, pre- him, him coming out, you know, different gear. <laughs> <laughs> God, I want. I need to have a button. I just press the start whenever I want to hear it. Can I brief? Because you missed last week. Obviously, did you enjoy Sting's last match? Oh, bloody yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Perfect showing. Oh, it was so look, good. man, it just did. It just did. Oh, look at that sick kind of picture thing. there. Oh, the, the brothers in paint. Just great because oh. I thought it was supposed to be. I was like, oh, as a kid, I'm like, it looks like brothers in pain, mm-hmm. but a uh, T on the end, mm-hmm. the bip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I thought they were great, and it was so funny because of just Vampiro not getting along with anybody in WCW. Not even Sting. Oh, apart, according to Vampiro, Sting got annoyed like, oh, this upcoming kid who's like me with the face paint, and Vampiro pointed out. Well, sorry, when did you start doing the face paint? Oh, 96, yeah. 97, <laughs> right? Yeah, I've been doing it since 93. So, yeah, yeah. who stole from who? Mm. And Sting was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good pick. What are you going to call it, though? Like, Vampiros or, like, WCW's? Oh, God, yeah, you're right. That's such a long name. Um, the, the WCW pay-per-view that didn't happen, that was going to end up with Vampiro turning into good Vampiro. <laughs> <laughs> Stroke of Midnight. Yeah, perfect, mate. <laughs> See if that fits. Phrase is sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Sum up like that. Anyway, I just thought it was a, a silly little wrestling story and idea that didn't happen. And I thought people need to know about it. Mm, fair mm. enough. Wow, those are three. No, Ross hasn't picks. done his yet. I'm not done mine yet. I you, I went you went blank. ahead of him, yeah. I'm also here. G- go ahead, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go for John Cena, comma, game for a laugh. Because he's had a hell of a week as John Cena. Ricky Stanicki came out. Yeah. Film man Joel, who knows films behind the camera, said... It was all right, weren't it? <laughs> it was Which all to right. me, <laughs> for, me a, for me, for mortals <laughs> like me, means it's a good film. I watched Ricky Stenicky last weekend. Good film. Oscars this week. John Cena walks out, nearly naked, not quite naked. Marco, Mar- I just said Marco, Marco Robert, and the crowd's going woo. Uh, everyone's having a great time watching John, and just in that, I've seen a lot of stuff about like Hollywood humiliation rituals this week. Oh, don't call cool. what? The tw- Do not remember. The no, don't remember. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying because, like, back in the day when someone would get their kecks off and whatnot, I was like, "Hey, having a great time." But now it's a Hollywood humiliation ritual. Oh. But I don't believe in that. So John Cena having a laugh. John Cena, comma down for a laugh. Because in that film, Ricky Stenicky, he dresses up as many things because he's um, he's a rock parody artist. He takes classic rock songs from your Billy Idols and people like that and turns them into songs about masturbation, and it's really good. That's just a small. From what I understand, like a small part of the plot as well. A uh-huh, small part. Well, we oh. all saw that. The Oscars, hey. that man, right? uh, yeah. Okay. I also like the fact that he did it to support the strike. That the was it a strike? I'm not sure it was a protest or a strike or not. That the fashion designers of uh, of Hollywood were really? going underneath to show, like, well, without this, you haven't got much. And apparently, they've succeeded in their goals. Oh, they, they that's, uh, thanks to John Cena. I forgot to say that, Matthew, but it was on the tip of my tongue. Yes. So it was. I think. So I think. It's, sadly, it's one of those things when you pull a stunt like that. It's like, wow, look at that. It's like, no, no. There's a story behind this. There's a reason for this. It's like, ha ha, John Cena in the nip. <laughs> Are there, I, that reminds. I, I've been reading a non-fiction book as well on the history of the Oscars, and I thought it was going to be less involved than it was because the contents page is like each chapter is named after a certain year's Academy Award. So I was like, oh, it's going to be too brief. It goes, well, each chapter is like an era of Hollywood. And if you thought the wrestling business was dirty, like, this is... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hollywood's great. I'm only up to World War Two, and it's so oh, much, so much has happened so far already. Yeah. Uh, it's just at the point then where all the great German actors are coming over to escape uh, right. the war and be like, oh, what can I do here? Would love you to play this German soldier, <laughs> and you're doing all the horrible things. Like, oh, okay. I've just got to the one about. Uh, I've just got to the Citizen Kane chapter. It's talking about Orson Welles and how he was a prodigy, but also a bit of an arrogant bastard. Hey, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Was the thing that was that weird quote Sorry, about Orson talking... Welles? They said like, oh yeah, he's read every book. Mm. Um, which in the fifties was probably only like five. Yeah, <laughs> like but yes, so I was talking over Ross Pick. Sorry, Joel. Give me your in the know review of Ricky Stanicky. It it was fine. Oh, <laughs> that was good. Oh, now the it red lights so on his black trucking. Because Ross said you liked it. You it, it was it was better than I thought it'd be. There we go. It's it's quite funny. It's funny yeah. in places. Yeah. yeah. But funny, like <laughs> what what's the humor comparable to? What's a film that's like it? Nineteen ninety nine, like American Pie sort of vibes. Yeah. Okay. R rated. Whoa. Edgy. Edgy wait wait wait, Joe went <laughs> R rated. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to watch it now after that. Yeah. Um, 
Is it how is Zach in it? Is he good? Our boy Zach Efron. Um, I Kevin. think he's good. I, he's the sleep. He plays the holding midfield role, doesn't he? Of the three main lads. Yeah, he does. He, I like said yeah. midfield role. That's yeah, good. He's like holding yeah. it all together. He's yeah. holding it together. Yeah, he's the he's the sensible one. John's the maverick. I don't remember too much from it, to be honest. Oh no. <laughs> oh, well, you blazed as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's long. It's, it went it's on. Very, you sound like one of those Dave Dave Meltzer reviews where it's like I don't remember anything about it. It was all right. Five stars. Yeah. No, but it's a good good plot. Three lads. No, I, I think we talked about it multiple times because Jack brought it up and I went, that sounds like an amazing yeah. idea for a thriller. Like they've got to protect, they made up this imaginary blow. And he comes and takes their lives. He's real. Yeah. Which yeah. again sounds he like. Their li- I mean, oh, he does. does. Oh, yeah. Really? Basically, oh. yeah. It sounds like Roald Dahl's The Magic Finger. We first, but we're less birds. We first brought it up because I was annoyed that the trailer had ruined too much of the plot. Yeah. Uh, the trailers yeah. suck. Mm. Yeah, Owen was saying the other day that the trailer gives away like the big twist towards the end, which oh. you don't see coming. But I hadn't seen the trailer, so it worked on me. Mm. Well, that's good mm. then. Yeah, like, watch the, honestly, June part two yesterday. Everyone's been talking about June part two. Absolutely. So it's all, that's bit, when the world, world big worm comes out and like, oh, you are the more deep. So first, I for that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but they had the trailer for bloody Ghostbusters, the next one they're doing, which apparently gets an annual film now. Mm. And it's, it's like, Dory, Bill Murray is in this. And he clearly, like, the scene's clearly like, hey, guess who it is? But like, they have to show that he's in it. For people to watch Bill it. Bill Murray. Yeah. Wow. James Acaster's in it. Is he? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Started handing it. <laughs> Had a bike down. Oh, I've forgotten the name of the big green slimy thing to finish off that punch. Slimer. Line, so it doesn't matter. Oh, I bet didn't even work anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for trying. It's all right, Matthew. Um, so your lovely pick is John Cena. Comma. Down for a laugh. Because that's what he's been the past week. And maybe more so in the past as well. I was going to try and actually do another Cena thing this week. But now you've st- it doesn't matter now. His product, but no, he was asked, What's your favorite guilty pleasure? He said, Behind the green oh, door. Is he down for a laugh? He really is, because people are going, Really? That's your thing? It's like, yeah, it's like a 1970s X rated film. Hardcore That's pornography. Yes. Not just pornography. And I went, What? He said, He's clearly going to be having a laugh. Like, oh, yeah, my friend was a 1970s. <laughs> okay. Well, the women had, you know, Carlito hair. And, uh,. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> Matthew. Have some respect. They weren't eating apples. Um, Matthew. And Idris Elba. Maybe in Benidorm. Is Idris Elba? <laughs> there's uh, so, a production company called Behind the Green Door. Uh, the Green Door Productions. That's why it's called that. So it came a long time to come up with it. Mm. Um. <laughs> oh, fame! <laughs> John Cena, up for a laugh. <laughs> That, that one time Vampiro was going to be good Vampiro at the stroke of midnight or turn to pumpkin, whatever. And Jack. Serveta <laughs> Crystal. Well, that's winning. Uh, <laughs> please have fun voting at patreon.com forward slash cult the holic. Remember everything John Cena's done for you over the past 20 years. That says this week in the wrestling. It's this bloody week in the wrestling. Ha! Ah, this week in wrestling. Smackdown. Logan Paul opens the show and brags about being really cool and good for business. He announces that Prime will sponsor the canvas at WrestleMania and brings out no! yeah, and brings out KSI, Matthew's friend, to celebrate. <laughs> Randy Orton comes out from under the ring and tries to RKO Logan, who gets away. KSI gets RKO'd instead, okay? And Randy pours some Prime on him to end the segment. On him, on his balls, to make okay. the urinated pure Prime. Ah. If that does happen, please see a doctor uh, to end the segment. <laughs> he did say that it tasted good, though, which I imagine was a contractually oblig- obligated bit of the segment. Yeah. Like, oh, this is good. Yeah. Splishy splash. I had a go with the cherry freeze recently. Can confirm it's all right. I've all tried right? the blue one. It's so sweet. Like it's so. It's yeah. like, whoa, I'm too old for this now. I watched a science man say it doesn't actually work as it says it works, but that's a different thing for a different podcast. It's meant to hydrate you. Apparently the eyes are totes and all that malarkey doesn't actually exist in the prime like it does in your Lucas Aids and your Gatorades and uh. stuff like that. So it's not actually a hydration beverage. Um, but it is going to be the center ring sponsor for PLEs going forward, which is terrifying. Oh, God. If it's going to be as big as it is, obviously yeah. it'll look a little bit better if there's smaller ones surrounding it in the corners of the ring and whatnot. But we, someone on Twitter pointed this out. When Cody wins right, and finishes his story and he goes down to do his traditional end of match kiss the mat thing, it's going to be kissing a bottle of Prime. Dude, it's going to be like <laughs> on Steve Austin is Prime with blue piss all over him. Yeah. <laughs> Mick Foley re- shared a thing on Instagram, which was him getting choke slammed through the cell, but with a big Prime logo. And he put like, <laughs> please don't or something like that. It's really good heel stuff. 
But it is. is. It's, it's going to be interesting to see what it actually looks like in practice going yeah. forward. Um, I tell you, AEW wouldn't do this. Anyway, Ric Flair's uh, <laughs> Woo Energy. <laughs> Why are you mentioning Gotta have a shot at AEW. We're talking about SmackDown, <laughs> Matthew. <laughs> Um, but this promo Matthew from Luke... just loves the establishment. He just loves to <laughs> play by the rules, kids. Uh, this was Bobby Roode from NXT from Logan Paul talking about taking the company to new heights. The PLEs have sold out. This. Do you remember that first Bobby Roode NXT promo? Oh, wow. This was Logan Paul here. Oh, so good. One. Remember when NXT yeah. was normal? <laughs> no. <laughs> and also, you got to give the pop props to the chaos of the eye because um, his cell for the RKO was as if he'd been wrestling for years. Yeah. Yeah. And then he talked about how he b- busted up his face, taking it, and he was still in pain. Did he? But, yeah. Oh, then he can't, he, can't wait, he can't wait to take like eight other moves and stuff. Okay. So it was one of the highlights of his life taking RKO. No. You would, wouldn't you? You're like, yeah. Yeah. Um, he uh, just reminded me of, you remember, you know, Sebastian, the, progr- like the Brit- British wrestler. I think he's retired now. It's about from the geezers, mm-hmm. and he has made a, a kind of. A, he just he just says very honest things on Twitter about his time in wrestling in the British wrestling oh, scene. I know him, yes. And he he always has a go of progress and how, how badly. <laughs> yeah, uh, what, <laughs> why why what did they do? Right, one Jack? of the things that he's talked about before, among many other things, like him and his tag partner getting told off for selling their T-shirts in the queue outside the progress shows. But um, one thing he got, one thing he he's like ripped into progress for in the past. This was progress under previous management and everything. Was um, for having KSI keen to be involved. And this is like, he wasn't as big as he is now, but still, still big. Yeah. And instead of just immediately having him the focal point of their next show, his progress was really Indian cool. They made him go to the Projo and train. And there's a picture of him stood on his own in the ring at the Projo, just looking like, what am I doing here? Mm-hmm. And they never used him. And they could have been there like, yep. yeah, weird. Sebastian shares that picture a lot. Yeah. He doesn't care. <laughs> that is ridiculously stupid, though. I know, but, but at, <laughs> at the time... It's the very start progress. <laughs> at the time, I guess it was like, oh, they're the punk rock. But, but looking at how it's gone since then... I know, it's funny, isn't it? <sighs> well, <sighs> I was proper progress pilled back then. I was like, a, I was like, oh, these are pilled. so cool. I wish we were more like them. <laughs> Their, their, their hoodies are so much more punk than ours. Yeah. No, literally, that's how it felt. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I met you. Smallman once, and he was nice to me. So I, like, I liked him, to be fair. He was nice to me. Yeah, he seems all right. Mm. We learned that WWE has hit 100 million YouTube subscribers. Amateur numbers, it says here. Um, and Triple H has some sort of cool-looking plaque yeah, that, uh, yeah. provided by YouTube. He says only 10 uh, companies uh, have this. Uh. Right. He took out a box, so he did. So as we all know, because it's wrestling, anything that comes out of a box, hmm. instantly over. Yeah. I've just thought what else. It's actually could've... Hogan's head. <laughs> I thought there was something else it could have been. Oh, oh yeah. what could it have been? <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. I'm if any of you do something really lame, like it's a box I'm of Prime, just... it's like, we get this for free anyway. I just Cheers. thought of the Adam Copeland thing as well, opening the box. Sort of it. All the teams up with Kevin Owens to beat Grace of and Austin Theory yeah. with a sick pop-up RKO. You wouldn't get that in Germany. <laughs> where all the finishes are leg locks or Canadian destroyers. <laughs> as far as I'm aware, yeah. <laughs> as far as I'm aware. <laughs> really indie, innit? <laughs> this was like sports entertainment, though. Pop up. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. You are right. There were a few arcades hit and none of them ended the match, so yeah. Mm. Uh, Logan attacks the faces afterwards and tries to use the brass knucks. Orton takes them from him, so Logan runs away, causing Randy to almost hit Kev by accident. They're fine about it, though. I'm glad yeah. KO didn't react like most wrestlers would in that situation. Mm. They go, no, you've done that on purpose, even though it's clearly a mistake. Mm. Um, but yeah, the pop the pop up RKO was slick. I loved it. Loved it, man. Like Vaughn off a gold tooth on a Tuesday night. <laughs> I enjoy just <laughs> watching Orton in this match because he's such a worker. You know what the workers are. So he let Kevin mm. Owens do most of the work for most of the match, but he came in and did his stuff and then got the hell out of there again. It was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the late career appreciation for Randy Orton's. Nice to see. Because he's always been really naturally gifted. It's just mad that he's not had more good matches. Is it because he didn't want to? Yes. That's why. Probably, <laughs> it's because yeah. he couldn't be asked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, hang on. I'm still over as hell. And I've been for years. I'll just oh, save yeah. my back. Yeah, my downside's him. looking pretty. <laughs> Said Jeremy Clarkson for some reason. Just there. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he had a good time in Bahrain, obviously. He was off his lips. I did, did see, see that it? video. Have yeah, you seen yeah, it? Yeah. Oh, oh, no, I talked about just... last week. Clarkson was at the F1 waving the checkered flag. Uh, uh, Before the race, he gets interviewed <laughs> by Martin Brundle on the pit, the grid yeah. walk. And he's like, oh, you're having a good time. Oh, no. I've heard that, that can happen if you take one. Clarkson's miss, or girlfriend, whatever she is, is just having a little word here and there. You can see him like going, oh, it's a clown, <laughs> 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 
Uh, Austin Theory looked good in this match, so he did. I thought yeah. as well. They didn't like, look like total cooks, did the... the, 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 the well, not thoughts. That's not the right the word, thoughts. is it? The, the twinks. The twinks, that's yeah. the one. The cook thought twinks. <laughs> well, we're, we're definitely down the kids here. Was it them we were calling Twink 182? Potentially. You would, that was your blinder. Well done. Thank you. We'll keep, we'll keep it, I suppose. Yeah. But I'm still just trying to imagine if you were at the F1 on... On whatever Clarkson was on, that's got to be a hell of a way of watching Ooh. that. <laughs> <laughs> See how quick that went. God, his wife's talking to him. I'm going to go. He says, what do you mean? Like, I'm watching a race. Because that was hours ago. <laughs> it was my greatest high in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to watch the race on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Bailey has a sit down and Don't do that, Clarkson. I'm being, um, <laughs> what's he called? James May. James May. And is upset about being betrayed by Dakota Kai. She admits that she's made a lot of enemies over the past few years and a lot of bad things for attention and success, but she was always loyal to Damage Control. And now she's all alone. She built the group with all her heart. Now she'll do anything to break it, which is quickly followed by Naomi watching this very interview and feeling bad for her. Banker Belair points out that Bailey bought this on herself and maybe Naomi is only sympathetic because she wasn't here when Damage Control was tormenting the SmackDown Women's Division. And it's great. Drew McIntyre stuff. Yeah. I, I thought the, 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 the interview with Bailey was a bit like, okay, like her just going, yeah. Uh, I've just seen Ross's notes. I've stolen his point. I'm very no, sorry. I'm she, do you want me to read out what I've written down for yeah, the Bailey interview? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good that she acknowledged she's been a dick over the last few years and probably deserves it. But also, how way the Bailey take down the DC. We believe in you, yeah. You having a good time watching some Oh, yeah. Great time watching some <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought it was like, okay, because it's like, all right, I'm a face now. It's like, and even though, you know, even even Kayla says, you know, maybe I had it coming. It's like, yeah, but I'm so awesome. People just cheer me, even though they're supposed to be booing me. So that's why it happened. But then I thought it was her great. She goes, well, you're only saying this to me because you haven't been here. She did cause this. And she's a couple of them. like, no, no, no. Mm, uh, I'm just going to disagree. And so Belair goes, oh, okay. Well, I guess I have to say something positive. So good for her at WrestleMania, I guess, <laughs> and walks off. I love this bit. Yeah. I love this the bit of them reacting to something else and it being expo exposition y, but not that bad or forced. And I was also giving them some character work to do. And her going, yeah, like Drew McIntyre. No, you weren't here. You just got here. Love you, but shut up. Yeah. Is this Borash stuff? Well, the continuity seems like Triple H stuff, but the Not the, Frank the shot no. becoming the <laughs> shot becoming the you know like the way it was yeah, shot yeah, yeah. is that like a Borash thing? I don't know. Might be a Heyman. Heyman loved a continuity shot back in the day, uh, and then going through corridors and whatnot. I don't know if he's got a hand in that sort of stuff anymore. Maybe. But yeah, Naomi is now Cody. She feels bad for Bailey, who is now Jey Uso. Oh yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. Here you go. And then Bianca is, as you say, Drew McIntyre. Mm. Fantastic. It is good. Human mm. beings acting like human beings. Remember when this wasn't the case? They didn't remember what happened week to week back in the day. Yeah. Back in my day. Yeah, <laughs> back in 2017. Oh, they wouldn't Lovely have a clue yeah. what happened seven days ago. He bag gum. Scarlet tries to interfere in Bobby Lashley's match with Karen Cross, but B Fab takes her out. They AOP attack Bobby for the DQ, and then the Street Profits try and make the save, but the baddies clear the ring, and Cross hits his crap looking finisher on Bobby. I didn't say that. That was the words of Matthew. It That's was smart. impressive on Bobby, though, I thought, because Bobby, I don't know if you noticed, is a big boy. Mm -hmm. They call him Big Bobby backstage. Big Bob, Big Bob, Even big if he's Bob. up front, they call him Big Bobby backstage. <laughs> 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 a bit weird, really. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Uh, I put absolutely zero reaction for Cross. I know. He's as over as the CMLL invasion in AEW. Oh. Why are you mentioning AEW yeah, again? Yeah, he's done it again. Also, <laughs> prick. that, that Hechicero <laughs> match with Brian was a good bit of that invasion. It was. Yeah. That, okay, that's one. Nine. <laughs> I was 17. But this has nothing to do with AEW. This is WWE. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something useless. Mm. Matthew on the podcast. No, there you no, go. come on. <laughs> Come on now, Matthew. Oh, wait, man. Joe's You're above me in the right. pecking order. <laughs> Joe's above all of us. He's above all of us now, yeah. Um, he, Joe can talk crap. I can't click record. <laughs> True, yeah. Okay, go on, what um, <laughs> I was going to say that the pump handle bit of the finisher, like the setup, looks sort of extra pointless when he then pauses with him in the air. Yeah, there's, there's two different moves going on. Yeah. I think it's very impressive he's doing that. Yeah. But then that move, it's like, well, you don't need to do that to get that move. It was impressive. Yeah, I agree with that. It was impressive to hit it on Lashley, but... Oh, I feel I've, I feel bad for Cross because every week we go like, oh, there's no heat, and there's not, and I don't know what. Corey Graves explained on commentary. He said, it's tough to solve what these guys are all about while <laughs> speaking about the Final Testament. <laughs> so there's your issue right there. We know they're together. We know they're all dressed in black yeah. and they're big and scary and whatnot, and Paul Ellering's there with his Michael Jackson shamo glove on with his <laughs> Hall of Fame rings on the outside, which is a hell of a look, by the way, but doesn't fit with the Final Testament. Um, but this match was just a, a big plodding meat fest with a yeah. couple of nice suplexes, mm, some yeah. throws. Um, it wasn't a thriller. 
I'm just, oh, but yeah, it was exactly. bad. Yeah. <laughs> beat, beat it. <laughs> Shabba. Uh, <laughs> Cross needs to take a good hard look at the man. In the... <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, Frosty reception, but that, that, that's what happens to you. are a stranger in Moscow. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, I'm just need to get the six man tag out of the way. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, just, yeah we'll yeah. get the six man tag between uh, Poppy and Poison. See it, that's a TV match, surely. It can't be on Mania. Oh, maybe. Oh, I don't. No. Oh. But he pinned him, didn't he? Uh, for the ABC <laughs> one, two, three. Oh. We're reaching. Yeah, we're yeah. reaching. <laughs> see, Joe can do this. He just chooses not to. <laughs> uh, backstage, Legado del Fantasma make fun of Dragon Lee for trying to be the next Rey Mysterio. They shove him over and walk off laughing. What a loser. Whenever Ray's on TV, all La Familia should be doing is saying, where's Ray Mysterio? Where's Ray Mysterio? He was wearing a Ray Mysterio t-shirt. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And they're all like, look at you, you nerd. And he went, oh. He, he, did, the, he did the sad he, baby he, thing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could we'll do that and sing at the same time? Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> But when they said that he looked like a child dressed like Rey Mysterio, for all of, for, he, just like that, he just looked younger. Yeah. As soon as they said that, I was like, wow, Dragon Lee does look young. And they're all yeah. surrounding him, so he looks smaller. He looks younger than the 50-year-old Rey Mysterio Jr. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he'd get revenge later in a way, but oh, it didn't help him look good. In NXT, he was like a killer. Everyone was like scared of it. Oh, don't you, you challenge for my title. I'm scared of you. you. Luchadors just can't be around Rey Mysterio Jr. because they will always be compared to him. Yeah, so, so what if we had Sin Cara... Sin Caro Dos. Callisto. Callisto. Well, I guess Ray wasn't there when Callisto was there, was he? Was he? Yeah, they were, yeah. Yeah, towards the end. Ray Maybe. returned 18. Don't quote me on that then. Yeah. It was the L- Lucha yeah. House Party, the three of the buggers. <laughs> yeah. They're still going <laughs> to keep up with them. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of, because he'll always be like, oh, he's like Ray. And then Ray comes back and it's like, oh, okay, well, we've got him now. Mm. Poor bag. Who's Poor the bag. third one in Lucha? Oh, Grand Metalik. Grand Metalik, yeah. the mm-hmm. master of the ropes. Mm-hmm. That's right. Tying people up, so he did. That's just a rumor. <laughs> uh, the US Express, I've already done that bit. Tiffany Stratton wins a singles match against Mission. That's another win for Tiff. So it was, yeah. What a win indeed. Uh. Well, it's, I know that Mission's not very high on the pecking order, but I'm glad that they do seem, even on commentary, I remember Graves being like, she is a rising star, basically saying, like, she, and she is. Yeah, there wasn't much to say about the match compared to what Machine's done recently on SmackDown, but the shoot Alabama slam from Tiffany to set up the BME, which mm. she buggered up on the first way up, but you couldn't tell because she went back down at the bottom and then just went up again. It was flawless. The footwork, yeah, Matthew. It was, it was flawed and flawed, whatever. The 2021 20, footwork that has been evident since then came to the fore right there. Mm-hmm. Up the footwork. Up the strats. Up yeah, the strats. Yeah, which was really good. Yeah. Uh, we get an AJ Styles video package where he explains why he travelled across the world to attack LA Knight. <laughs> I thought LA and I'd own the place, he says. It, that's right. But it doesn't deserve to be in the same locker room as him. Some of the format might be a bit weird there, sorry, because I, I did this on Google Docs and tried to leave spaces so that there was no overlaps on other pages, but then it, it got saved as a word. So the, the, the pages... I appreciate that, that bomb. Yeah. Wait, you left all these notes. Matthew can't read this anyway, so why do I even bother? <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> I don't think you meant to send this one. Right. I bet there's a crap Nintendo reference. Oh! It's like well, a, I was, but... Oh, unflattering right, drawing of you on the next yeah. <laughs> Me with stink lines. <laughs> That's not true. Well, not anymore. Uh, Night watches Matthew this backstage. <laughs> and beats up the TV with a chair. That was... The, oh, that, I love that uh, bit. Did you? Did you like it? Yes, I did. Oh, LA Knight fans there. When he's at a bar, let's have a practice swing. Ah, and he starts beating up a TV with a chair. That's what we're here for. Phenomenal one. Bosh. Yeah. Boring one. Yeah. yeah. It's like John Candy beating up the radio and cool runnings. It was exactly. like the car level of Street Fighter. Matthew? Got to beat up the car. I, I said, I like the car from Street Fighter. I didn't want to say After it, you've yeah, won a few of... fights on Street Fighter, <laughs> you guys just there next to a car and you've got to smash up the car. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> to show how hard you are. All right, you think you're tough, beat up a car. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that would prove it then. How exactly. do you They're metal, aren't they? Mm. Not anymore. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> or like sometimes like a pyramid of bricks. Yes, uh, yeah. they're not as good. No. I'm but, worried about AJ Styles though. Not just because like, obviously The Rock is going to beat him down with a steel chair, yeah. but also his arms are going to pop out of the skin. Mm. Bless you. You know Thank when you. you squeeze a banana? No. Just, pff, Have you done that? 
Oh, many times. <laughs> Why have you done that? Well, you watch the Jungle Book back in the day. They make it look so easy, don't they? <laughs> oh, that's true, actually. But, and you open your mouth and it pops in perfectly. It's like Instagram versus reality, but with bananas. And you just get mushed, don't you? Oh. Oh, covered in bollocks. But AJ's arms in this promo. My goodness me. Yeah. Well, he's just gonna... Ross entering the place and just doing that. And then we're going, ah. He's squeeze, start... Stop squeezing the bananas. You're scaring the bitches. He's starting to look like... Um... Like NWO Randy Savage. <laughs> He's massive. Oh, that's He's perfect, huge. yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, God. <laughs> I wish he would start acting. Like, yeah, that's yeah. that'd be really funny. Wow. Get him his own. Oh, what was Molly Ollie called back then? I forgot. Miss now. Madness. Miss Madness, yeah. yeah. And yeah. his. Gorgeous George. Gorgeous and George. And. Miss Madness. There's a third one. Um, uh, Medusa. Medusa, thank you. Mm. What a theme that was, though, by the way. Ooh, Ooh yeah. macho. What up, what up, macho? That's the one. Oh, yeah, well, what up, macho? Ooh, yeah. And then a the metal version there. <laughs> this was around the time he was a rapper as well. Be a man, Hulk. Oh, God. Anyway, moving on. Oh, yeah, let's stop talking about silly things like video games. In the locker room, an unamused <laughs> Pete Dunn catches Tyler Blake playing 2K24 like a dork. I didn't put like a dork. Tyler, <laughs> Tyler sheepishly admits he should be getting ready for WrestleMania instead and leaves to uh, ask Nick all this about the tag title situation. When he's out of sight, Pete has a cheeky game with 2K himself. <laughs> lots, 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 yeah. lots. Geniusly written this segment. Because yeah. Pete doesn't say a word, and then Tyler's like, oh, maybe you're right. <laughs> we should be getting more reps in ahead of WrestleMania. Hmm. I'll go and find Nick all this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm beating up the, p- t- the people that we're feuding with but in the video game. <laughs> Peach is like, why? Oh, it's like Jack can't, can't you do whatever else is and pick Kane? Come on, don't pick I yourself. I got Bozzy Osborne from Matthews. But Bozzy Osborne, right? Fair Current enough. day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Uh, yeah, so. I got more um, Tom from Tilly, Tom and Tiny. <laughs> oh, Toy Day. <laughs> Tilly, Tom and Tiny. Mm. The Todd's TV. One, two, three. Woo. Sack Magic. Sack Magic. Bye, bye. Dragon Lee wins a match against Angel Garza. They get beaten down by like Adol Del Fantasma afterwards, and he has no friends, like even Rey Mysterio, so no one saves him. Yeah, no one saved him. That sucked. He won the match, but uh, sad. Did he win the war? Mm-hmm. No. Uh, there was a hell of a super kick from Angel before what had to have been, for the first time properly on SmackDown, a shoot Hurricane Rana. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he's like, still there. Sorry. Dragon Lee's running towards Angel Garza and gets kicked while on the run. Then all of a sudden, the shoot Hurricane Rana ends the match. It was oh a lovely, God. it was like a textbook, head scissors into the pin. Yeah. The old, well, like Rey Mysterio, I guess. <laughs> Certainly was, yeah. Uh, Dragon Lee had to deadlift Angel in that powerbomb, yes. kicking and screaming, which I think makes it look cooler. To it be does. With you. Bigger arms. Imagine AJ Styles doing oh. that. <laughs> Pop him through, through the prime. Just waiting for him to drop back down. <laughs> <laughs> like Wallace when he kicks the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought it was a very nice reminder of how good Angel is. That film makes me cry. Was it really? Well, because of the, the oven. Just really wanted to ski. That's all it wanted. It had a dream. Oh, anyway, we should all communicate more with each other. <laughs> that's, the, that's the lesson. We should check out ovens. Yeah. <laughs> I thought uh, it was like a vending machine. It's an oven. Yeah, it's an oven, isn't it? Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, that, that was a, an I old oven. Though. It's a, yeah, apparently an oven where you need to put money in to make it work. But, but then it does get to ski at the end. And yeah. by this point, I'm a mess. I just, oh, I got to ski. I'd already thought about why he's putting money into it. So maybe it was a vending machine. I can, I can only watch. I can't watch it. I just go straight to the wrong trousers. I can't bring myself to watch it. As a kid, it destroyed me. Do you can't. like the fact that it's just now a reaction meme you see online? Just <laughs> Wallace with the hammer. Is that 99? Oh, with the hammer. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> right, no, <I'm> so <laughs> I'll do the action, then I'll say what I'm doing. You know, it's like catchphrase here on the podcast. <laughs> but yeah, it just it just pops up. Just him doing the hammer. Like, that's just the response right. to things. That's fair like, enough. working hard. <laughs> Wallace and Gromit's a good meme. It is, yeah. yeah. It is. I was saying though, Angel Garza, it's a nice reminder of how good he is this match. Yes. I assume he's done horrible things to people backstage to he's not be so used. Good. Yeah. He's the second coming of Eddie Guerrero. Shag and his cousin probably got yeah. <laughs> Publicly, I mean, everyone knows about yeah, it. People I guess have been able to tell now. It's been like four or five years since everyone went, this Angel Garza fella is pretty good yeah. and charismatic and still done nothing with him. So he, he got Ross brought in as right. uh, Humberto's. Just like second, wasn't he? Zelina, like, then, yeah, but he was like the bad boy. It was then he had boy. just better matches and which is better than Humberto at the time. Whipping off the trousers. Ooh. The wrong trousers, Grummet. Giving women flowers backstage, remember that? Yeah. You know, mm. They'd be like, oh. And even if they were faces, even if they were meant to be sensible, they'd be like, oh, stop it. Because mm. he's so handsome. Yeah. Anyway. 
Yeah, it's going to suck. Oh, get and him. some wrestling's really good. Push him. Make him the world heavyweight champion. Yeah. Make him and Oba Ferry the new two dudes with attitudes. Yes. Mm. Damage Guitar could a promo on Bailey. They brag about how easy she was to manipulate and how Io has been the priority since day one ish. Mm -hmm. Dakota says she'll see Bailey in the ring next week. With the music they chose for the bed of this segment, this was like a SmackDown 2 Know Your Roll backstage promo, mm -hmm. but with words. Mm -hmm. The other one was just like, do, 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 do. And you got like a horrible looking Stokel going, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Aye, right, but yeah, Dakota said she was the brains all the time, and then Eo was like, "This is it was Eero's era from God, Eo's era from well, day one." Mm. So I was like, "Was that Dakota's plan, or has she just gone off on herself? What could it mean for WrestleMania?" That's a proper wrestler, that is. Yeah. They want to put in the situation, think, then it was planned. You think Dakota's doing like a triple cross? I don't know. Just, oh Jesus! Just the way she was like, "I've always been brains, me. I've always had the master plan." And then Eo's like, "It's been my era since day one." Oh, when did that factor in, Dakota? What's going on? Mm. Maybe I'm overthinking Dakota this. Dakota lie. <laughs> uh, I was thinking the other day, is every champion on the main roster at the minute a heel and quite a dominant one? Apart from Rollins. Oh, God, Rollins. Yeah, I forgot about Rollins. But we, we all have. No, um, no, no. No, we, we have not. not. Because his title's not been... He's feeding with The Rock. Yeah. He's taking mm. on the, the bigger picture. Mm. Yeah, the bigger bear. <laughs> <laughs> A flustered Nick Aldis realizes that Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins aren't in their private locker room ahead of their confrontation with the Bloodline. He leads a security team towards the ring for the final segment. By the way, there's been security outside the locker room the entire night. It kept cutting back to them, yeah. yeah how did they and get they out? somehow got through and it wasn't explained. Was it like through the vents, like Die Hard? Gold or? And I. Yeah. Oh, like okay. the, um, forgot to knock. Like yep. that, yeah. <laughs> Toy Story 2. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mission Impossible 1. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, or it could have just been, do you think Master of Disguise, Cody Rhodes? Well, disguised as who are? Um, hi, it's me, security man. Oh, I thought you meant like, oh, hello. like in Toy Story, like traffic code or something. Oh, that <laughs> is, that, is that Cody Rhodes? No, it's a, it's it's a, a giant drink. It's a Cerveza <laughs> Cristal. It's a giant Cerveza <laughs> Cristal, yeah. And everyone goes, ah, the memes. Watches it walk off without realizing it's him. Yes. That's it. You nailed it, Jack. Well done. Thank you. That's analysis. And then the Bloodline and The Rock make their very slow entrances. I'll say. Hey, right. but The Rock's got a new one, which I thought was spine-tingling. I gave you goosebumps, did it? Uh, uh, he shouldn't be doing that as if he was a heel. I'm sorry. <laughs> he shouldn't care that everyone's there to see it. <laughs> Roman demands that the crowd acknowledge them before Cody and Seth arrive through the crowd. Cody asks if The Rock has the authority to make the stipulations he suggested last week. Because it seems like he's pledged allegiance to a certain tribal chief. Oh, the crowd the gets angry and says that's what family does. The crowd chant diarrhea at him. <sighs> the little Ron, Ron's Rock says, it. Yeah, the, Rock's little, the little oh no, Cody lets out off mic when they start doing that. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh God, it's been bastardized oh. already. <laughs> the Rock says, no, no, I don't have that. I've been having Remy's. Um, they're great that's for them, heart, by the way. isn't it? Uh, indigestion. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. He could have been having what constipated <laughs> heroin. <laughs> it's not Jeremy Clarkson, are we? A McDonald's cheeseburger. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. well dear. Yeah. Rock asks if they accept the stipulations, but Seth interrupts and calls him Mr. Midlife Crisis. That got a huge part. Yeah. <laughs> Which was Rock's like, I'm 50 and I'm richer yeah. than half the planet. No, he is yeah. having a, no, but he is having He's right, though. You think? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I yeah. didn't look at it like that. Okay. But, well, obviously, half the Rock planet, had so. big, angry boomer energy in this promo for me. <laughs> Seth says Rock has had his time, but he won't steal theirs. I thought that was a great line. Yeah. They accept the challenge. Roman calls Seth a cross-dresser. Yeah, that <laughs> felt... It outdated. felt weird, like, Roman, like, using the lowest hanging fruit in a promo. Yeah, I know he's a heel, but, like... I thought the most, like, the most egregious thing wasn't Roman actually saying that, because I can see he's a heel, why they would go that way. It's just weird that Roman would go that way, because he hasn't so far. He's going to be so mm. superior. Yeah. And, yeah. The weirdest thing was Rollins not just... If Rollins clapped back and gone, like, here's why you're wrong, sir, for saying that word, I thought that would have been way more effective. Mm. But the fact they didn't do that, it was just... It yeah. stunk it out, didn't it? Weird. Yeah. You dress stupid. Yeah, well, whatever. Yeah, because he has been saying, like, oh, you wear your missus' clothes. He <laughs> does say that. But I Seth wear dresses... my missus' clothes. Seth I look incredible. <laughs> Seth dresses stupid on purpose. I mean, he likes it. And he also mm. dresses naked while wearing his championship belt with his wife. Yes. He's he's oh, is that to help the Oscars? <laughs> it was very Oscars. Yeah, they uh, put, put it in. It. It's in a book. In Becky's mm. new book, there's a picture of when Rollins is universal, the yeah. red one, and then she's yeah. got the two titles yeah. covering her. And they're doing the Shawn Michaels. 
in the mirror. In oh, the mirror. Yeah. that's in the book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but then people have, <laughs> people have found an old up up down down clip from before the book was released. And she's like, yeah, don't show the camera that yet because it's not been released yet. But they clearly, Woods is like, oh. what is this? And they're all like, oh my God. Yeah. Woods is like, why was not I invited? <laughs> oh. Oh. So it says Cody, uh, so Cody won't get uh, another shot <laughs> after he loses that mania. <laughs> yeah, he won't get a shot. Yes, after right. Yeah. Rock reminds the baby faces that he's basically their boss and says Cody won't get another shot if he loses, which Roman the dude just said. Yeah, what? Boom. You're going to um, look like Ellsworth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Stealing from the greats. Yeah. Yeah. Choo-choo, mother bleepers. <laughs> then Rock brings up Cody's siblings and says he was born 20 years later because he was a mistake. And Cody slaps Rock as the show goes off the air. And like, he, literally, like, seconds after that happens. You've seen the shot from the other angle? All uh, the, cam- the, the cameramen, like, from the crowd, all the cameramen on the hard cam side are going, come on, come on, like, hurry up. I think that's, oh, why, this, no, I haven't seen I think that's why this was the main event segment. Because they could do everything as they intended and then do it and come up to the end and then not ruin the rest of the night for other wrestlers. No one else got their matches cut yeah. short, yeah. Because last <laughs> week... Oh, I enjoyed it like Oh, last week there uh, was some really Of course, yes, because they yeah. like, no got the in the ring and ruined some people. Yeah. Like, well, it, really? did, it did feel like the slap came in like, at a weird time. Yeah. And why is that the thing that he's taken most offensive? I, I guess. But it's because he had to get it in before yeah. the end of the show. Yeah. And also, Dwayne, by your own logic, which one of your children's are a mistake? Oh! Hmm? Huh? Oh, what are they? Because uh, Ava is a certain early 20s, I see. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. And his other daughter's like, you know, 20 years youngerish. Oh, oh dear. Oh. So which one of those is a mistake, Dwayne? What a Robert De Niro he Hypocrite. Yeah. 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 She says, oh, they're both one. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Uh, what was Does he know Ava's his daughter? Like, he never mentioned He never mentions her. His daughter's the GM of NXT. I would be proud of his daughter now. I yeah. can see why he wouldn't when the schism were a thing. <laughs> <laughs> but now that she's booking banger oh. after banger. Do you think there, sh- there should be an inquest into her appointment as an NXT GM around the same time The Rock became... They, on NXT, they made a thing of going, wow, she's definitely proven she's she's qualified for this job. She like, spoke to Heyman for what? five minutes. She is the most protected... Like, she's yeah, so... It's... Even Come this, on, guys. Even this week, play along. Goes, even this week when Roxanne's complaining, she goes like, well, I wasn't GM then, you know. <laughs> Why is she so protected? Because mm. because she's the Rock star. No. Uh, let's put the yeah, Rock has already had his time and he can't have theirs. I thought that was a great line, but Naomi should have said it. Um, I feel like yeah. being harsh to Ava there. Sorry, I, she's trying her best. <laughs> and then Rock saying, "You walking clown emoji piece of poo." I, I thought Seth Rollins looked great, and he didn't look that great in the previous bits. You know what? I thought is... the diarrhea thing just me. But the fact that the crowd were into it, it's like, oh, okay, well, fair enough then. This but, is not what I expected you to say. Fair enough. No, because he's like, you know, when they did the press conference, and there's Cody in the background, like the fad lad at the dance, we don't want the. Well, well, how yeah. do you know I used to have metal dripping <laughs> off my arms? Stop Thank it. you, Matt. You know, it's like, um, <laughs> but Seth, yeah, it's just Seth like, in the background. It's just like, like, look at this idiot, you know, but now he's like going, ha ha, getting some good lines on him. Yeah. And people are going, ooh, that's it. The crowd reacting. Right. Because the difference in star quality between The Rock and everybody else in the segment to half the show was remarkable. Like yeah. Said, zero reaction for Cross, presumably because the crowd was saving their lungs for the main event. Yeah. yeah. I really enjoyed the opening bit. I don't know if I've looked in this too much because the thing that's been bubbling under the surface between Rock and Roman is that Roman is just getting more insecure the louder the Rock's pops are compared to his. And like the, the, the bit where he like he stands there and looks a bit upset while the Rock's walking down, like he's got a face like a slapped ass. Then to do the handshake and the crowd go, ah! And then Roman's like, yeah. Mm. He's just stolen a bit of the Rock's pop. I like and again, that bit. the different hand. Yeah, mm-hmm. the little bit bubbling under the surface. I was going to say, I was going to ask because you're quite into the... Cryptic semantics, I believe it's called. Right. Were there any little <laughs> secret things in this one? No. <laughs> Rollins had something written on his. He had tape on his mouth when he was doing. When the, he came down, yeah. What was that about? The crowd didn't. Uh, sorry, the crowd. The camera didn't go close enough yeah, to read like, what it said. It was like he had his mouth taped, and then he peeled it off and went like. Eh. Do you reckon it was a set? What did Kip Sabian used to have on there? Oh, yeah, something like that. I've maybe. been drugged. <laughs> oh no, I'm drugging pack. That was it. I've got the story. What? Oh, he poisoned, yeah, oh, no, he poisoned him. Poisoned. Poisoned. I po- oh, they're two different things. <laughs> yeah. Is it o- over it? Not over it. Oh, uh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, not over. It was like not over, over it. It, Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what Rollins had on his mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, he didn't. uh, (laughs) Yeah, I don't know what that was about. Um, But yeah, I think we've covered everything there. Yeah, let's move on. AEW Collision. Danielson beats Shane Taylor to open the show. Good match. Good on Shane Taylor for straight away shouting at Brian Danielson about the match with Lee. Lee stinks of we. Uh, Lee, Mor- right. Lee Moriarty uh, where Danielson was stamping on his head made, it, made the match a bit more I don't know I was invested more up having Taylor say that to Brian yeah. Danielson so. yeah you beat my boy and I'm going to beat you up yeah Sweet. Uh, I think Shane Taylor deserves a wee push 
and he's good. He's very, very good. good. He looked impressive in this match as well, like doing his big power moves and his loud chops and whatnot. And then Danielson did this scintillating fight back, I believe they call it in Absolutely. the trade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that was it. Because a proper good nine, uh, well, proper good guy now, Danielson, mm-hmm. after Shane Hans very Kingston. So it's just, yeah, I guess to just be worked over by Taylor, make the big comeback. People yeah. be, everybody happy, apart from Nigel McGuinness, who says, Brian may have shook Eddie's hand publicly, but he has it on good authority that he was seen crying backstage afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I put Kevin Kelly, we've already forgotten about you. Yeah. I hope that, uh, that we've got to have a match between Nigel and Brian at it has to be right. Wembley. Wembley? Yeah. Surely. What's Nigel going to do after presumably he loses? Does he then say, yeah, yeah, it's oh, good. I was lying this whole time. He'll like, lie, go, out, go out and be like, yeah, I'm meant me. He'll lie on the floor like Jim in Friday Night Dinner when he's electrocuted himself, looking for Jackie to give him the kiss of life. <laughs> Mariah May arrives on the scene. <laughs> Nigel's happy. That's oh, made that sound way, way creepier than it was intended no, no, to. Yeah. No, Nigel is quite <laughs> creepy with Mariah May, but she's recipro- recipro- She's it's part of the story. Yeah. <laughs> Will Ospreay comes out in ultra cockney mode. Yeah, no more <laughs> cockney, right? Oh, everyone! All right! Yeah. He pays tribute to Brian and thanks him for everything he's done, but isn't happy about him interrupting his celebration after the Dynamite main event. Brian says Osprey's match revolution was one of the best matches he's ever seen, bruv. But he's noticed that Osprey has been calling himself the best wrestler in the world. That dynasty could have given the chance to prove it. Osprey accepts. Yes, bruv. Osprey calls him a cheeky little slag. You slay, yeah, you interrupted my celebration, you slay. But he's on the All the people walking backstage and they see you walking down the corridors and they're like, F me. That's Brian Daniels. Yeah, he did. Really fun. He's so like. Likeable on the he mic is, but and really like free flow. Like at the start, where he's like, Can I have another mic and find me old mug? Ma- ma- I just want to have a little chat. I can't have a chat with myself. You can't can have I? a chat yeah. with one microphone. <laughs> you slay. <laughs> 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 he's so, I don't know if it's just because he's in the context of being like in America, so he seems even more maybe cockney. Maybe. But Osprey at the minute is like what northern people, it's like what we think southerners are. I was gonna say, Americans are watching going, He actually, they, they do talk like that. Yeah, you remind me. What was that lad called on the Inbetweeners movie? The random guy that keeps saying them out. That guy. Oh, on his own? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's, yeah. that's Osprey at the minute. I've forgotten his name, but that's him. Yeah, he's like the lad on holiday, but like he's on his own on the strip. Like, oh, why? And they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, the way that he like, the way that he's dressed and everything is really authentic. Like, it's how you imagine he would act. It is how he actually would. It's probably just what he came to the arena in. Yeah. With his socks I tucked slept in. I in this, mate. His, yeah, his trackies tucked into his socks. Like a frat boy. Mm. Yes. Jack, I waved at you. Thank <laughs> <laughs> <What> is... <laughs> you. Uh, hey. <laughs> Okada makes his debut as a full time AEW roster member. He teams up with the Young Bucks to beat John Cruz, Liam Gray, and Adrian Alonis. Adrian Alonis. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Is that what we're doing now? <laughs> That's a shop over here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's Londis, I know. Uh, yeah. Used to get me Glenn's vodka from there. Oh, great times. Oh, that was Glenn's. my drink of choice at uni. Just get that and a cheap bottle of pop. See you later. What would you have the two mixed together? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh. Jesus Christ, man, <laughs> you animal. <laughs> the vodka's dessert. Yeah. Oh. That's right. I've been a good boy. I've drank all my Pepsi today. <laughs> so. I remember the one with the wolf on it, but that was a bit more expensive. That was uni, that was a bit more expensive. Uh, I don't think you had that in so little. Stro- not stroganoff, that's a beef dish. What am I talking about? <laughs> anyway. Smirnoff. I love stroganoff. No, not Smirnoff, it had like a wolf on it. Oh. Joel? Grey's? No, it wasn't Grey Goose, that's one. No, oh, not Grey It wasn't Goose expensive, <laughs> it wasn't like that. It wasn't like absolute either. It was cheaper than that, but more expensive than like Bells or whatever. Uh, I'm not Grey good. Goose is yeah, you're expensive. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Never, the one you can drink posh. neat. I don't think I've ever even had it. Not square. No, I had that. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's been a while yeah. since I've drank vodka. You had the one with the gold flakes in. No, yeah. I don't like gold that. Gold What's hate, the point of that? I hate the... Because it gets in your bloodstream no, quicker. No, I hate the, <laughs> the, the... The myth everyone says about that makes me not want to ever do it. It slits your throat, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll burn this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what we were told when we were, kid, when we were kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I hate that crack. Like, I could, I've never tried it because of that. Yeah. Oh. To be, you don't feel it. If it does do that, you don't feel it. I don't want to talk about <laughs> it. Oh, it's a quick, easy death. That's good to hear. <laughs> you bleed from the inside That's what I want out. from a drink. <laughs> starting to go faint. My vision's going blurry. I've <laughs> thought of it. It's really horrible. Imagine the inside of your neck turning into Darby Allen's back from Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you drink golf schlag. But you're with your mates, so you go, oh, it's good. <laughs> Is it golf, golf schlag? I'm not golf soft. Schlager, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just bleeding eternally. <laughs> My fear of golf schlag is coming back. Like, I need to, let's move on. 
Eddie King to the tax after the bell, but gets beaten down. Penta tries to make the save, but also falls victim to the damn numbers game. Mm. Damn it. Pac makes his return. Aye, 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 aye. And takes out the books. He starts to win a brawl for Carter, but the books pull their teammate out the ring. Pac gets to the mic and says in perfect English, the bastard is back. <laughs> and if you want trouble, I'll give it you. I'll give it yeah. And all the cheeky bastard Americans on Twitter who were like, I understood everything Will Ospreay says, were like, what language is Pat speaking? <laughs> oh. What what is this crazy thing? As he enunciates yeah. every syllable and talks he slowly so he can change his accent as much yeah. as possible. You bastards. We need Pac versus Osprey. North versus South. Yes. <laughs> no, we don't because Pac won't win that. <laughs> he will. He'll batter him. Uh, He's the hoodie no. badger. No, North, Northerners are harder. That's a stereotype. I know. That's why, that's why I want to keep the idea alive because if you, yeah. right now in the pecking order, Osprey's going to eat him. But uh, yeah, Eddie Kingston challenges the elite to a six-man tag at big business. Mm. <laughs> oh, he oh, said at one oh. point, if you're looking for trouble, you're bargaining up the right tree. That was good. Yes. Oh. Uh, it was a very good like re-debut for Okada, I thought. Yep. Even though he didn't do too much, there was a drop kick to the face after some lad was twatting him in his, yep. which made me go, wow, 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 on my notes mm, here. He went like, you hit the ball, then hit the ropes, yeah. and then he did, yeah. and then he went, yeah. oh. oh. He loves that drop kick. Oh, Bob okay. Holly, Bob Holly. Yeah, um, he got brought up on Dynamite. He said, oh, it was shades of the Bob Holly there with the drop <laughs> kick. I'm like, yes, mate, yes. <laughs> I think I'm Maven, with you. Well, Maven's not better than Bob Holly. I'll put Bob Holly's That's above the anybody. top. Th- your Bob Holly's Bob and your Holly. O2 Randy Orton's and your mm. Mavens. Yeah. Your Gingerack. Gingerack had a, got a drop <sighs> oh, John Cena. He's <laughs> <laughs> like a South Park character. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Limited animation. Yeah. Cena. <laughs> oh. uh, That's know. how I'd do a drop kick if I tried a theory. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be like Okada me. Okay. Off the top rope as well, baby. Sometimes he does a little clap before he does it, like, like Randy Orton before a power slam. <laughs> Just to get in the rhythm. Just, you know, you've got a drop kick, you know. <laughs> i tell you what, though. The energy of this segment was like proper early AEW. I saw a lot of people saying that. Yeah. Yeah, it felt like the, what do people call it? The, the party era of the AEW. The party, yeah. party era. Yeah, because every episode felt the like a big party. The multi yeah. Mm. Yeah, like the fuse bring the boom. Everyone's been saying, is the feeling back? It How is. That's where even It feels like at the minute, Dynamite, absolutely, since yeah. Um, January, yeah. It's, it's getting there. Yeah. Yes. I'd say this week's. Di- you look at the. Na- well, we'll talk about it later, but the, the, the names up until Chris Jericho walks out on that show this week. <laughs> <laughs> My God. It's unbelievable. Jeff. Yes. Oh, the lion hop. All right. Marianne. Lion hook, more like. Uh, mm. no, oh, on. that really that wound that. me up that day because Jericho was like, Renee's backstage going, like, ah, lion hook. And he's like, that's a good one, Renee. As if he didn't come up with it. <sighs> Chris, you bastard. You. Mm. Yes. Well, you know, yeah. We know what you're doing, Chris. Yeah. Really good segment. Mario May beats Trish Adora, nothing sure of, mm-hmm. in a singles match. Tony Storm arrives to present the Tony Award for Excellence at T-O-N-I, so don't get sued. Yeah. Professional Wrestling, the best portrayal of Tony Storm. She awards it after much consideration to Mariah, so she's better than Al Pacino reading these things. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, was attacked on the ramp by Diona Perosa. Diona Perosa. <laughs> <laughs> I tried as well with that one. Completely forgot how it was pronounced. Uh, Mariah helps Tony beat her down, and they pose over her body. Yes. Isn't that nice? Yes. Nigel McGuinness, again, stealing the show, saying he's had to take beta blockers because he really fancies Mariah May. <laughs> and never since Daniel Day-Lewis's portrayal of Abraham Lincoln has he been so moved by someone pretending <laughs> to be someone else. I didn't get the beta blockers <laughs> thing, but... What does, what does it mean? It slows down your, your, your things pumping around. Oh, I see. I, I can't I'm believe... I'm not sure, to be honest. I'm not a doctor. He's like a cartoon <laughs> skunk right now. I see. Yeah, but I can't believe that Nigel is now like a horny Lothario man, but it kind of works. When you look at... Because he's English. Well, no, when yeah. you look at the state of him when he was a wrestler, like he looked like such a thug. The state of him? <laughs> right. Isn't like he looked like such a thug. Yeah, that, those, those yeah the spiky really blonde help. hair that yeah. British wrestlers had for some reason in the 2000s. Yeah. And I swear he's got like twice as handsome. He had a rotten haircut in TNA. It also didn't help that he'd open his promos going, all right, wankers. No, he started to get better looking in TNA, though. Mm. Once he shaved the spikes off. Nah. It was very mid, mid-noughties mid chav, his haircut. Or yeah. chav, as the southerners like to call it. A lot of British wrestlers had that around then for some reason. Mm. Like, didn't Doug Williams used to do that as well? Dirty oh. Doug Williams. Uh, he wasn't, someone, a, wasn't a chav, no. No, but like the spiky, the spiky blonde hair, hair was like oh, a spiky British, hair, yeah, yeah, like yeah. A, They were all trying to look like punks or something. It was, it was a style at the time. Gareth they, were, they were really into Josh Matthews, all right? <laughs> right. But, uh, Gareth Gates, yes, Gareth they were. Gates. But I think right now, Nigel McGuinness, this is the hottest he's ever been. Yeah, Just yeah, in terms yeah. of how he looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, 100%. Yes. As for the match, though, I thought the last, is, podcast for, the last is proper laid it in. The match was given a fair bit of time, I thought, and they just both laid it in. Uh, Mariah's drop-down kicks that she does, the sort of drop kicks but lower down, 
Oh, mm. oh, eh. mm, mm. but then Trisha Dora does the old uh, kneeling German, which I've never seen before, and it was very, very good. Trisha Dora's good. Mm. She was um, a few years ago now. She was one of my like. Sometimes, some years I do that video like ten WrestleMania week matches to watch, but not on the big show. Like yeah. my, my indie tips, and uh, she was in one of those matches. Indie tips. That's what Nigel. Nigel ah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mentioned her back then, so I'm glad to see that she's getting a bit more exposure now. Yeah, yeah. She, I think she was on one of the for the culture. GCW cards. Oh, okay, cool. One of the GCW ones anyway, but yeah. One of the 50 GCW <laughs> shows, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, the, the knee that finished the match. Oof. I may do. Just making noises now for the moves oh. that have been happening. Ooh, and oof. Mm. Ooh. Ah. Like the match the fast show do the closing. <laughs> uh, accompanied by the patriarchy, Nick Wayne beats Adam Priest. Clean, I think. I mean, it was against an enhancement man, but yes. It was a good enhancement man, though. Yeah, he yeah. was. Like a young Crash Holly. Yeah. Time to fly, Prince. Priest. <laughs> oh, you missed this. Oh, last week on Raw. It was all going so well and so cool for the JD. It was Damien Priest and Finn versus... Can't remember who they were against. Oh, my God, who was it? Oh, Whoever. it was... Um, was not another heel, a heel team, weirdly. I can't remember. No, I can't think either. Anyway, they're having Imperium. the match. Imperium. Imperium, yes. Yeah, yeah, Ludwig yeah, and yeah, Giovanni. Yeah. And they get to the point in the match where Finn Balor's going to do some sort of dive to the outside of the ring. So Priest sort of grabs him by his beard and goes... What was he saying? He caresses his face and goes... Time to fly, Prince. <laughs> and everyone went, oh, yeah. <laughs> Nigel McGuinness getting the, the beta block. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to fly, Prince. And he's like caressing the side of his face. And the, a million fan fictions were launched that day. Oh. I had a worse reaction to that than I had to Jamie Carragher saying that line of Kate Abdo. Oh. I've watched it now. I finally brought myself to watch it because I, I was avoiding it because I thought I saw what had happened. And I thought I'm not. I scrolled past it every time I saw it. <sighs> I watched it. I think there's been. Oh, it's a running gag. And it, and his Carragher's brought it up his before. inflection is just a bit wrong and makes it sound like he's saying like we know you've literally cheated on your. That, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. he's not. I don't think he's actually trying to make that the joke. But it's Owen pointed out. It's the fact that Micah Richards, who laughs at everything, <laughs> it's just like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, Oh, yeah, it's funny. You can say it if it's not true, but if you say it is true, everyone reacts like that. I know that, but I think it's because he said it in quite an unintentionally blunt way. Shouldn't have said it. Come on, Jamie. You'd hear it if you were Henri, though, because if you've seen Malik. Is he a lovely, gorgeous man? He's a massive boxing coach. Does Henri actually fancy Kate Abdo? Like, that's just a running joke. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to see that video when there was an image of her from like 2007 when she was just yeah. starting? And he's like, oh. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's anyway, just, that's just blah, blah, fly high priest is what we're talking about. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Time to fly. <laughs> Time to fly. Uh, Nick Wayne, mm -hmm. for being 12 years old, is unbelievable. Mm. His punchable facial expressions are really punchable. Yeah, he reminds like, me yes. of one of the editors down here. Not Owen one in Morrison. particular, just like... just. All oh, right, just, he's got oh, that, all of them. He's got that level of... All like, of yeah. them. You know he's laughing at you behind your back, you know. The editors, <laughs> they are like... it's. <laughs> It is like the frat boys in Northumberland Street, but without Aye. the threatening nature. No, it's more just all like the, a... All the cackling yeah. and giggling, but without the threat of being beat yeah, up. Yeah, it's one of the ones you know you can't catch. <laughs> yeah, they won't... They won't <laughs> they're a bit quicker they, than you. They won't beat you up, but they'll do like a silly edit on your video. Yeah. And they'll say... It stupid. There'll be a cutting remark somewhere. Yeah. That won't be full of expletives, but it'll just say the right thing or like, at the wrong time. They'll turn up to the summer party and match in Hawaiian t-shirts, but not tell anyone else. Just to be little friends. I'm Again, not, I'm not this, is no I'm not this is no one specific. This is no one specific. I nearly went there. <laughs> that was oh, and they were so proud about it as well. They didn't want to say anything, but they're also they're like, oh. Chat no. watching podcast this week. How come my microphone wasn't on? <laughs> <laughs> I swear I talked for hours that week. <laughs> anyway, Nick Wayne could fit in, Danny. He could. He had the right kind of cavalcade kind of match up here. Despicable, horrible heel, <laughs> Nick Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I thought the bit with Adam Copeland was fantastic. Oh, I was about to say, they <laughs> teased this earlier by someone else had, uh, well, that bloke had uh, signed the crowd. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that protracted. And he's like, oh, look, oh, there he is again. Hey. And then Tony Giovanni did a really cool thing. He went, whoa, whoa, he's wearing a mask. Is it a luchador? Is it someone from CMLL? Is it one of the CMLL guys? He's like, that's, un that's reasonable, actually. Yeah. yeah, it might be. No, of course, it's the Edge. It's the Edge. Edge, man. His, his, sign, his sign read, Christian Scapes Leg Day. <laughs> that's, a, uh, that's a joke on the podcast back in the day. Old chicken that's legs. Right. Um, <laughs> here, what was it? Hardcore Holly and Commentary in 2000. I don't remember this, but like they were doing guest commentary watching Edge and Christian wrestle. And he was like, why is Christian wrestling for the World Heavyweight Tag Team titles? You're not World Heavyweight. Look at him. <laughs> if you put a nickel on his head, he looked like a, a nail. Who said that? <laughs> Hardcore Holly and Christian on TV. <laughs> Former light heavyweight champion, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I thought it was a very good line. Who apparently is deceptively big like, like in person, Christian. Well, I'm sure he'd say that, yes. No, not from him. I've heard it from... Shana uh, Wayne. No, from uh, Lewis the Dragon Beardsley. <laughs> Said that in person, Christian's like massive. That's nice. Uh, the rest of the segment, sorry. Christian tries to get back, uh, stopping his tracks when Copeland shows him the content of Mysterious Box. We don't know what's inside. It could be anything. Uh, Eric Rowan Spider. There we go. A refreshing bottle. <laughs> I'm so oh, You know, one of the... I was ignoring you. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't need to clarify. I found this out during the weekend because the guy who was talking to who played GTA V with Sammy Guevara, apparently played it with Fuego del Sol, said, do you, have you, oh God, you remember all the good stuff. When Eric Warren had the spider and it spat in the jobber's face and the jobber went, ah, ah, ran yeah. away. That was Fuego del Sol. Was it? Was it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. He's got rubbish gear. <laughs> and he said, yeah, apparently that he, he wasn't, he didn't know it was going to be used, so I had to use someone else's. And they got misted, and it's like, ah, the spider. Well, fair enough. And then Drew McIntyre, was it Drew McIntyre? Murdered Drew it with some, killed it. Some stairs? Yeah, he killed the spider. <laughs> I was wondering what he used. He just saw it. It's like, no, he, <laughs> he dunked the steps on it. It was never seen again. Then Eric Rome was released. Yeah. His spider got a better <laughs> exit than he did. <laughs> the 30. That, that, was, was, that was so Fuego. bad. Yeah. That, was that so compilation that was good, because all, obviously all the, all the cool kids are coming back to rest now because of the rock and all that sort of yeah. stuff. That compilation that somebody on Twitter made of like, 2016 to 2019. Oh, all really? Time. Oh, my God. It's an old timer. Uh, I, um... Yeah, because like I said, people said one of the reasons why AEW was so well received to begin with was how bad WWE was in 2019. Uh, I remember tweeting about this because it was around the time Ariel Helwani and like Bill Simmons and them were all tweeting about wrestling. I hated their very authoritative tone. WrestleMania 4 is the best WrestleMania. Oh, and he's doing that. He's probably saying that as a joke. Simmons tweeted once, um, Roman Reigns is the best heel champion since Billy Graham. And I remember thinking, you're doing, it's an arg- you can argue that is true, but it's like, you're doing, doing this to, to, sound, to, to, get, to sound, no, they're doing it to get a reaction. And you didn't sound knowledgeable. And I was like, I remember tweeting like, you've not been in the trenches with us. You didn't see the spider. You didn't <laughs> That's see the, what he wants. You didn't see the Faberge egg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so I... So like, the, AKA, the last time I watched wrestling. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, cream. <laughs> what was I going to say? What do you think? What do we really think is in like the box? Well, the box says Spike on it. So it could be <gasps> Dudley. Yes. <laughs> he could fit in that box, I reckon. And he did get a mention on Dynamite this week. I thought, I think it might have been during a commercial break, but they're comparing Derby to wrestlers uh, who have been, you know, thrown oh, about right, whatnot, okay. and Spike gets mentioned. It won't be Spike Dudley. I don't know. What what does Spike mean in terms of, like, boxes? Could be a, a boxing glove on a spring. The old yeah. Joe yeah. That wouldn't work in wrestling, Jack. Yeah. Don't be Jack. silly. Yeah. Move of the week last week, Matthew. <laughs> it was his move of the week. I'm going to type in Spike Canada. That's going to bring up the TV channel, isn't it? Oh, uh, the last, the last spike? spike. What is that? The Canadian Pacific Railway. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to run a train on him. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Don't no, make a train over him. What are you thinking about? Right. It remains a symbol of national unity in Canada. A ceremonial final spike was driven into the Canadian Pacific Railway at 9.22am, 1885. This is definitely not what it is. This is just a Canadian thing that has a spike written on it. That sounds nice, though. I like that. <laughs> the last spike in Canada. That's cool. Um, Should we do a podcast on, like, you need to go through all the nations of the world alphabetically and do it like the history of their... What am I? Well, like the Animaniacs. Carry, sorry, carry on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Team Jarrett and Mark Briscoe were interviewed backstage. Jarrett says Mark doesn't need to worry about trusting him because he knows he'll do anything to win tonight's street fight. And it turns out he was actually telling the truth. Yeah. Yeah. It's really funny when he goes, uh, Jeff Jarrett, I know you a dog. Yeah. Because Jared, he is a dog. Jarrett goes like... You dog. That's right. I am. I am a dog. I am a dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jared's still good. It's funny that Jared's a, a face. I'm like, when, when did this happen? Just like when, now? <laughs> yeah. Just like, is he a face? I thought him and Lethal had issues and then they're still. They uh, never pulled the trigger on that, did they? Because like Lethal lost all his matches in that tournament and then he was like storming out past yeah. Team Jarrett and stuff and it never went anywhere. Yeah. But now Jared's a face. I like cheering for Jarrett. Maybe Tom Campbell's provoked thought in people by just uh, repeatedly calling. Jeff and the lads, arseholes, and maybe they just take a step back and thought, no, in the grand scheme of things. Oh, yeah, if, they, nice if they have turned face, what's Tom going to do? He'd have to be the heel. Yeah, he would be the heel. Yeah, he'd have to heel. quit his job. <laughs> <laughs> that was Jeez, a shame. Right. <clears throat> Jericho comes out as the Lionheart. So we get the white zombie. <laughs> For a match with CML <laughs> star Titan. 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 Come on. Titan's, Come on, Titan's one of my faves. There's Titan here. I've seen a bits and pieces of CML and Titan is one of my faves. Oh, in that case, Jericho 
wins the match. <laughs> that gets beaten down by the gates of Argony. I didn't know you were Scouse. Radical. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's just fun to do, we're sorry. Echoch <laughs> makes a save with a kendo. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I was disappointed that it was Titan, because I like Titan, and I didn't want him to lose to Chrissy J. Clean. I was happy that it was the same LL guy that I'd heard of. No, 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 no. I was like, oh, no, Titan, he's good. Have you heard of many more? The ones that are involved in this. Mystico, Apart obviously. from Mystico, obviously. Um, and the, I'm going to butcher the name, but the guy that had the good match with Danielson. Yes, because I realised it's the guy who had the really good match. Hachicero. He's so... Gracias. Him at, uh, saw him at PWG. Was he weird and submission-y then? Yeah, That's which strange. I wasn't used to. I'm like, oh, here's a lucha dude. The, he did mat work. I went, oh, okay. I think he was a really good example of like charisma without it being spoken. Yeah. Because... Unspoken Riz, that's what the kids say, isn't it? Because the crowd got all, all behind him straight away because they're like, hey, he's weird, I like him. Yeah, yeah. just like Kane. Yeah, I like Kane. <laughs> <laughs> he's looking at because he's a map work from him, like, uh-huh. probably. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Templario's good as well. Sam's the same LL expert to ask. Of course he is. He loves it. Uh, also, no, he does, he actually does. <laughs> I don't I sound as sarcastic, he does. <laughs> also, it was interesting that Cherico got the clean win. Uh, it was. Was it uh, interesting? It was, wasn't it? I'm looking I thought it was yet. a nice finish, but though, with the Hurricane Rana attempt off the ropes, which was then just directly reversed into the wows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, lo- I thought the match had a bit of everything. Like, you know, the Lucha Flamboyance was there, obviously. Massive chops, a bit of strikes, yeah. some mask ripping, if you're into that kind of stuff. I am, I am. <laughs> Isn't that a massive heel thing to do? Yes, it is. He's the face. It's Jericho. He can do what he wants, can't he? Chris? It's just, no, no, no. It's the lion. The lion heart. I also thought it was very. I read a uh, Lucha blog, which I, I love reading. But he knows so much more about Lucha. I look like a, I know what I'm talking about because I quote him. Right. That Jericho wrestled Atlantis Jr. last week. Obviously, did the thing of like when Jericho was in CLL to begin with, he wrestled Atlantis Senior. Senior, thank you. Right. Um, so that was the, where the feud came from. So Atlantis Senior's at ringside. And the idea of the match was, well, you know, they're very protective, certain Lucha doors. Some of them you can beat and some of them you're absolutely not beaten. Look at Mil Mascaras. So the idea of the match was. Uh, I don't know if you remember, Jericho beat him up so much that, like, and then it's started through the towel in for him. Right. Just to say, just to him getting out of doing a job so it doesn't look bad. But apparently the reception to that in Mexico was, wait, he's getting beat up so much his dad had to save him <laughs> the towel in? Oh, what a bum. Yeah, that's so a... completely backfired on him. Yeah. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> help, dad. Oh, don't worry, son, I got you. <laughs> like, ah, ah, your dad had to help you. <laughs> so, yeah, so this one was just Jericho winning. A guy like Titan like who can lose Like my dad outside Jarrow Metro Station once. What's that? Nothing. Yeah. My dad saved me from a fight outside Jarrow Metro Station once. What happened? Me and my mate were on our way into town, and we'd had a few pre-drinks at mine. And then my dad was like, I'll drop you at the Metro Station. Oh, that's nice. And got a Metro, and um, this lad just started on us. He was just hanging around. There. I think he asked us for money, and we were like, no. Uh, and okay. he was like, right there, now right there. And my mate. County Durham Private School. <laughs> He's Good like, sir, let's have a duel. <laughs> <laughs> he like, he doesn't really know what to do. I'm he like, slap him with his glove. So I'm like, he doesn't, he, he doesn't get involved, which is wise. But for some reason, I gave a bit back, and I was drunk, and I, well, not drunk, but I was feeling. Less, I thought it was great, and then I realised, oh, it's a bad mistake. And then he starts backing me down, and I go backwards out of the metro station, back into the car park. He followed you then. Yeah, oh, he was pretending he had a knife on him. He kept reaching behind his back and stuff, and um. I was keeping my distance, but trying not to seem like a coward. And then my dad gets out of the car, and the guy runs away. And I was like, yeah! <laughs> it, was like, it was like a TV show or something. And you're like, yeah, and stay away. <laughs> no, like, it was like, it was like when Grant and Phil Mitchell came to save. Like, oh. Get out <laughs> yeah, it was stupid. And when oh, you arrived oh. in town, you're like, I've just won a fight. No, that's not what I said. metro station. I did not claim that I'd won the fight. <laughs> Um, yeah. Your mate was like, where do you want to go to first? And tell me, like, the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, that's yeah. just because whenever I've had issues like with the smackheads asking for money, they've, I've been like, no. And I've just practiced my dead my dead stare. He wasn't... Uh... But like, if... But yeah, it's always worked because I look weird, I guess. But like, I guess if you <laughs> if you don't have that dead stare or you, you know, you're like, he, you got he money wasn't... on you and they follow you, I'd be like, what? I don't know what He to wasn't do. like a troubled individual. He was more like a local scallywag. Like he was like... Oh, so it wasn't a smackhead? No, he was he like... He was asking for change in the Metro. I think he was in the process of starting to... He just started his career as a smackhead, right? He needed somebody to get off the ground. He was he was known to the... I think he's, I think he's dead now. My dad knew who he was. You, I can't believe your dad did like, that. No. <laughs> oh, that my is God. a loyal oh, family no. member. He was like round... He was known in the local area as a bit of like a local drug dealer or something, like local like something. And then he got stabbed a few years ago. My dad was like, remember that lad from Jarmetro? I was like, yeah. He went, oh, he got stabbed in South Shields. I was like, you're joking. Yeah, yeah it's weird. Yeah, yeah, son, grab the shovel. No, I, no, no, no. Maybe he stabbed himself. 
That what? knife he had in his back pocket for you, he just made oh, that's a good point. Yeah, on it he one never running with scissors, isn't it? He <laughs> never had anything. I don't think because he, he never got anything out. Sorry, oh, I've I think he got the wrong guy. He's like a stab us. He's like, uh oh, I've derailed the whole. No, that's That's cool. I'm glad you shared that. It was a hell of a. It's not cool that he died. Like I didn't want the guy to die. That's good. That's what you get for messing with Jack. No, but (laughs) my God, my dad didn't. So like, hey, look at that bloke. Let's get. No, no, his dad killed him. His dad killed Big Eddie. No, I think the Shields Gazette reported that like he'd been in like he'd owed his mate money and his mate had stabbed him or something. Yeah, sad one, but. Your dad was made of him. <laughs> <laughs> he was like my age. He wasn't like. Oh, it was no. your age. I thought he was just a bloke. No, he was like he was, we were all like sort of twenty at the time. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Oh. It was a hell of a coup de grace <laughs> from <laughs> Titan that looked like it really hurt Jericho. Bloody hell. <laughs> Bet Jericho was calling for his dad because of the coup de grace. Yeah, yeah. So, but luckily Hook made and the save. Dad was like, hockey player. He was, yeah. hard. Yeah. He was a goon. <laughs> <laughs> Hook makes a save at Kendo stick, which is nice because I didn't re- realize he was at the Metro. <laughs> I shouldn't have told the story. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Chris Jericho had a match with Taz uh, in 1996. Yeah, that's right. That's Imagine nice that. they're doing. That's the connection they've yeah. got. Yeah. Imagine that. This is his first match in ECW. And then in the week, I'm going in for like double Latin on a Thursday. Like, what's what, private school? Weird. Right. Um, <laughs> sorry, do carry on. So yeah, the match in 96. I love this podcast, man. <laughs> Yes, because, uh, yeah, Jericho had the match of Ultimo Dragon in WAR, which is amazing. And Mick Foley saw it because he <laughs> Mick Foley was at the WAR show. He didn't work there because he wanted to see Jimmy Snooker, his mate, wrestle. Oh. The card. Was that the Tenryu promotion? Yeah, that's oh, right. Okay. So Mick Foley's like, I want to go see my mate. Like, well, it was a really good match. I can get you booked in ECW. Gets a copy of the tape, sends it to Heyman, yeah, comes in, loses it to Taz. Oh. But it's all connected. And, and now, now he's, son, yeah. uh, he respects Hook because of a tenuous... A very tenuous dad, link, yes. Uh, Tony Schiavone brings out FTR, the happiest men in the world. They admit <laughs> things didn't go to Planet Revolution, but 2024 marks 10 years since the beginning of their partnership. And That's disgusting, by the way. That's crazy, isn't it? I yeah. remember. I remember the genesis of FTR. It's us. What was Dax before... FTI was the, Wait, the was carpenter, the, the builder, or the, the mechanics. The, mechanic, the, the, that was the, it. That's what they were called. But he had the like a hard hat, right? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, he was like dressed for the part. Was not he? like full, not full clothes, Big but like. Spanner. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> come on now. How long were the mechanics? There were the mechanics for a little while, and then the revival. Then the revival, right? Yeah. 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 But Dax admits uh, they talk about the tactical tournament. tournament. Admits they haven't been firing on all cylinders recently. Stop saying fire. Um, they're not too confident of winning, <laughs> but they'll give it their all. They. Interrupted by, of all people, the infantry, May. Sean Dean and Carly Bravo. Bad news and Hoorah. tattoos. Yes. To keep it all the way jiggy, <laughs> the infantry admits that they respect FTR, but they're coming to take their spot. And now, nah, maybe the tag division needs a revival. Yeah, fire burn ready to ignite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, working all, all day. In, all day. Oh, no, it's Adam Bacitti's WCPW theme. Get up, oh, yeah, you're get right. right. Say, oh, yeah. Fire burn. Ready to ignite. Come on, light it up. This is my fight. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> FTR say the revival. Get up, get up. Get up the bomb shot. FTR say the revival is dead, and if they meet the infantry of the torment, they'll be dead too. I was They're re- gonna kill the infantry. <laughs> I was really happy to see the captain. Because every time right. I was... That I've win over MGF, right? That guy. He's got yeah. several wins over MGF. Several wins. He's just been a nice man. And now he's coming in with his friend called Bad News with Tattoos, Carly Bravo. Good name. Uh, here we go. I'm ready. Yeah. Strap me up. Strap I've, me in. I've ne- I've. It's been ages since I've... Because <laughs> I, I think they're just on Ring of Honor, so I don't know, watch Ring of Honor. All right. So this, this is the first time in ages I've been so instantly a fan of a wrestler. Yeah. Carly Bravo, he's got something. I've not seen him wrestle a move, <laughs> but he's got something. His yeah. promo was excellent. I'm fully on board with him. Jack, I thought exactly the same. Did you think as well? Yeah. And I thought, that's nice. FTR with a new tag team and just have a little bit of a beef there. So they'll have a match on Dynamite. AW feels a lot more organized than it has been. Has there been a, a shift in uh, a change in improvement or putting stuff together or something the last, last few months? They've very, slowed very down and grabbed a hold. Yeah. 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 This is just back on track for me. It's just, it is must, must see again. Yeah. Mm. After a period of not being the most must see thing. 
But again, we'll get called biased against them for some reason. <laughs> I had that bit of someone this week called me biased against AEW. Uh, really? Yeah. Oh, was this on Twitter or? Yeah, they admitted oh. to not watching the podcast because nah. it's too long. But apparently, well, yeah, I'm, I'm biased towards AEW. I don't listen to the podcast, but it's what I think about. Yeah, yeah. I love stuff like that. Nah. No. <laughs> I think any argument that accuses someone. Hang on, of... it's our job to not watch something have an opinion on it. You, you can't be doing it. Any argument that accuses someone of bias is weird because, yes, by, well, we've all got opinions on the wrestling. Yeah. I like the things that are good and the things that are bad. That's right. the same as me. Yeah. I like, yeah. No, but apparently that doesn't happen on this podcast. Oh, it really got to be so it did. It no, do. that's what they want. I know. It's like bloody Simmons saying <laughs> Billy Graham's the best heel champ. It goes both <laughs> ways, though, because I, oh, I was browsing SC Circle Joe. Why? I don't know. It was such a stupid subreddit. It's just full of just people hating on AEW constantly. Like, like to an obsessive degree. It's really weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, you hate it, Matthew. It's like, no, no, I like, I just like it because of this. You, you hate it because it exists. It's I'm weird. like, no, 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 we, we, we've got different. Like, uh, anything goals. good that happens, they just find yeah. ways to turn into a negative. Right, like they don't even like Mystico beating Angelico for your submission, and they shake hands after the match. Yes. Very fluid around that ring, so they were these lads. Nice to hear uh, Angelico's theme for the first time in a while. Right. What a banger it is. Probably I call these memories because it must be years since I've heard it. The summer of 22, maybe, or the uh, summer of 21. Him and Jack Evans. Yeah, yeah Jack Evans. Uh, I thought yeah, the hybrid two. Yeah, TH two mm. makes it sound like a drug, doesn't it? TH two. <laughs> what would Jack Evans know about drugs? Oh, <laughs> man, nothing. Oh my goodness, <laughs> is he a four twenty man? <laughs> That's why yes. his attire was green, wasn't it? I think. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They were white when they bought them. <laughs> Uh, I like the fact that Nigel noted that when Angelico was getting his arse handed to him, that's when he's at his most dangerous because he can lock on a hold at any time. He's so good. Yes. And I thought there was a nice twisting, spinny wee lock into the arm bar for the finish. Yeah, there was. I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Angelico's a <laughs> wee lock. Angelico trained in that style, didn't he? I can't remember the name of it, but the Lucha Submission style. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Good match. Yeah, I don't know the name of it, but this was, yeah, it was nice. Simple, and I guess it was the trade-off because, yeah, all right, Jericho could beat Titan. 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 Titan, damn it. But, you know, uh, Mr. Mr. Mystico. Oh, Mystico's not losing. Win. Yeah, he's yeah. not losing for a he's second. Not, he's not losing anybody, so uh-huh. give him a hand, Helico. Have a nice little match. All right, mm. with that. In the main event, the House of Black won a chaotic street fight against Team Jarrett and Mark Briscoe after putting Mark through a flaming table. And I saw everyone talk about the flaming table, and obviously that's a crazy spot. But what do you lads think? Bloody, all right, there's a table set up on the outside. Brody King's going to launch Mr. Briscoe off. Misses the table and lands on some chairs oh. outside. And even I was like, aha, he saw there were chairs on the outside, so he pushed him harder, so he missed. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. He missed, right? I tell you, the fact the chairs were there, I know it's a lot harder move to obviously take upon your being, but I think just the fact the chairs were there, maybe he did mean it. <laughs> oh I couldn't tell to mate. That's nuts. <laughs> no, you know, those tables break the ball too well. So I'm under some plastic chairs. That are gonna... You can take this one, Mark, can't you? What you the hell? Damn skippy, I can't. <laughs> yeah, because then Brody Gosh. immediately like power bombed him through a table. After... Are you all right? You're right. Okay, here we go. Power bombed through a table. <laughs> it was mad. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. The match was. I know they've built to the feud, and that Mark tried to burn. Um... Was it Matthews? Bloody Matthews, with, yeah. With Pyro last week. That's right. But then it, even remembering all that, this intensity came out of nowhere. I was like, well, they're trying to kill each other? Yeah. Crazy. Proper. It was really good, silly bollocks. Mm. You know, big, stupid, hardcore match. What else was there? The Sanjay fire stuff was quite funny. Yeah. I thought there, Karen Jarrett coming out to save Sanjay, who in K just in kayfabe, you would sort of like to see him set on fire. Because <laughs> he, he's really good at being annoying. Yeah. So to see him going like, ah, I he, on fire, he did get fun. a shot and he pushed someone off the stage through a table. I can't remember who it was. Buddy Matthews. Yes. Hell of a bump from Buddy. Shoulder barged him. Uh, Brody got the guitar right around his head and then put through the table on the floor from the apron. It was that, a nice spot. That was a good guitar shot from yeah. Jeff. And then I thought there was a nice spot as well with Jay going for a tope, but then Buddy and Malachi catch him on the outside and then put him through the flaming table because they promised to set him on fire and they gave us fire. So I'm satisfied. Yeah. The Ron Seal. That's Ron exactly Se- what they promise. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly the That's exactly other for Ron was, Seal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he can have two expressions. Ron Seal, we do exactly what we, <laughs> we promise. promise. <laughs> a bit more sincere, isn't it? <laughs> he wouldn't let us down, he promised. <laughs> Ron Seal, we will fulfil our destiny. <laughs> but, yeah, we will and, uh, finish the story. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I've got Ron Seal wearing a big American jacket. Look like a daft old racist. That'd be fantastic. Have you heard about the Latino Ron Seal? 
Oh, no, I was going to say Savetha, Ron Seal. It's just <laughs> not worth it. Well, Obi Wan's on deck. <laughs> <laughs> Spend on that gold vodka, I'll tell you that much. Oh. Start having a lightsaber fight, then it just changes to a shed getting painted. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever see them using their lightsabers for any tasks, or is it just for fighting? Just for fighting, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't I know what else you could. Code. I don't oh, know else they could use it. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> Jedi code. It's weird because sometimes they use the force to summon the lightsabers as well. I know you were doing that. Uh, Qui Gon's good at that. Yeah, you're more. You're a Qui Gon fan, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Qui-Gon's Wise quite and good. old, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, not like your, your rap scallion there. No, sorry. No, yes. Qui-Gon. That's yeah, who yeah, I'm with. Qui-Gon's Liam Neeson, that's uh. who I'm on board with. Then he died, so he was Qui-Gon. Yeah. Oh, G-O-N-E. He was. Let's have some respect for Qui-Gon. It's all right. 23 years has passed. 24 years. Mm. <laughs> Time we... <laughs> what? Oh, I can't talk now. <laughs> but yeah, big old dirty hardcore match. And can you believe it? Alistair Black got the pin. Speechless. Oh. Speechless. Oh. That's not looking anything like FTR, like in all the tweets that are saying, oh, oh I can't believe it. Hey, there's oh. people in it. Because he's always, always doing it. Um, oh, I can't believe some people don't want to be here in AEW. They can leave. Something like this. I was picked up on. Oh. I don't know who that could be referring to. Mm. Lock them in a pit. Let them fight. That's what I'm here for. Oh, no. Like the old, they can't do it anymore now, can they, Ross? Because of woke. <laughs> <laughs> Malachi would win the real, the shoot fight, surely. I don't know. He's got yeah, that. in his contract. <laughs> <laughs> no one's allowed to beat him up backstage. Even for real. <laughs> Monday Night Raw. Show starts with famous rappers Travis Scott and Gunther arriving at the arena. Oh, I said something quite different. Oh, sorry. In the car park, James of Greece, awful wanker Travis Scott. Oh, what's he done? Do you know oh, is this one? Oh. The concert at Travis World. <gasps> oh, that's the I same guy. I was trying to unthink the Where guy from I, Big um... Ready 2. Um, Oh, Travis Barker. Yeah. Oh, that, there's nothing I like, are there? It's one... No, it's pathetic, that, actually. That is him, yeah. That's where I knew the name. I was yeah. thinking, where do I know that from? Ah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, let's move quickly on then. Oh, he's not He's not a great lad, in no. my opinion. I did like the, the comparison of, oh, it's Travis Scott, and then, oh, yeah, Gunther. Yeah, he's going to spit some bars. Yeah. Yeah. Are you safe with Gunther? <laughs> uh, Drew McIntyre opens a show and again calls Seth Rollins an attention junkie. Mm. He also takes another shot at CM Punk, who is not a junkie, famously. <laughs> he talks about the bigger picture, the return of The Rock, with big picture in The Rock, that's like going to be in the Scorpion King's coming back. Yes. Saying he can take the industry to the next level. He mocks Seth for thinking he's bigger than the business. So Seth interrupts. He says, Drew almost has his full attention and turns his... Oh, and goes, yeah, do you want to hit me again? Okay. Oh, no, that's not how you do things. I'll turn around so you get a free shot. Oh, that was, good. that was good. Drew tells Seth to follow his own advice and get our The Bloodline, focusing instead to defending the title. Seth says he thought CM Punk was the biggest hypocrite in the world until he met Drew, who has received a lot of help from the bloodline recently. Uh He claims he'll win both of his matches at WrestleMania. Drew refuses to be provoked and heads up the ramp. So Seth says Drew is at the bottom of his list of priorities. Drew storms back to the ring and almost attacks, but stops himself. This was mint. It's another promo from Rollins there where you can see it making sense from his point of view, but also from Drew's point of view, it makes sense. It all just makes sense. It's (laughs) human beings acting like human beings. Yeah. Go Drew, back to 2019 when people are fighting over dog food. This is beautiful. Yeah, here, right? and giant spiders. Because Drew hasn't asked for the help from the bloodline, but he hasn't turned it away either. Exactly. So he's a bastard. Um, I liked his, his, when everyone was going, what at the start? He was like, oh, say, say what if you're glad I took out CM Bonk? Although, then when Rollins like alluded to Punk later, that guy from Chicago with tattoos, the crowd kind of didn't, I don't think he got the reaction he wanted because Punk had already been improved mentioned earlier by yeah. Drew. That's a minor, really minor. But that also plays into Drew McIntyre's hypocrisy. Because he's yeah. focused on Drew McIntyre. Oh, no, I see I'm punk, sorry. When he should be focused on the thing he says he's focused on. Yeah. Rollins yeah. isn't so focused. many layers. Rollins isn't focusing on Drew at all. I think this looks really bad for him at WrestleMania. Yeah. I, I also think Cody's taken the fall in that tag match. You think? Because if Rollins loses to Drew, he's taken two big pinfalls over two nights. I don't think they'd do that to him. Seth can take it. Drew needs to get this win. I think he'll win. I think he'll lose to Drew. He's hotter than Nigel McGuinness right now. But I think Cody will <laughs> lose in the indeed. tag match. And then in like Bret Hart, WrestleMania 10 fashion. Yes. Mm. That's a nice way of thinking about mm. I like that. Well, I've mentioned Bret Hart. So I mean, of course, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I want to hear from Jack. Blah, 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 Bret Hart. Yeah, yeah, great <laughs> point, Jack. Great point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Seth beat Drew with facts and logic. Oh, yeah, he did kind of. Yeah. Uh, Becky Lynch wins a singles match against Liv Morgan, which stems from the fallout of Morgan interrupting Lynch versus Nia Jax mm-hmm. last week, which I thought was nice. Uh, Rhea Ripley arrives and Liv argues with her as she leaves. 
Rhea gets in the ring and says when she beats Becky at WrestleMania, Becky won't be the man. She'll be the disappointment. That, that's not going to sell me t-shirts, is it? <laughs> Becky says when people believe in her, she's good. But when people doubt her, she's great. Oh. Mm. I'll take on the world. She's like Millwood. <laughs> I'm going to say, what a great promo. She's so convincing. And then Ross just, just, just hurt me. <laughs> do we think... <laughs> Do we still think she's losing though, to Rhea? Yeah, well, I, I think uh, it's very interesting because the whole story know. is like, I need to believe I'm better God. than you. <laughs> so you can see just under that guy's just like, you know, she could do it. Rhea should win in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can see Becky also winning. Yeah. It's a it's a toss of a coin. It's, it's good you asked that. I thought Becky was going to win until I heard Ross do the impression. Okay. Well, what? Because I, I can't take it seriously. Though. It was a good line from Becky. It's me yeah. against the world. <laughs> <laughs> There's also similar themes between Seth and Becky because Drew's saying you're not concentrating on me and that's bad for you, and Rhea's saying why are you having all these mad matches? Because you're you should be staying fresh for WrestleMania. Feel like a proper champion and never wrestle, right? Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, later on, we'll learn Becky's done the opposite of her advice. What a silly woman. She is silly. Yeah. But she's too proud. It's because of her pride. It is, yeah. Mm. The match between Becky and Liv, though, I thought was good. Yeah, they got the was. they got the Kavorka right because of the last two weeks of life yep. and what they've done in each other's lives. Uh, there was a couple of shoot code breakers from Liv Morgan to Becky, especially the one where Becky comes off the ropes. Oh, that, that was great. Oh, it was like the code breaker out of nowhere. Uh, there was a power bomb on the floor that looked stiff for Becky yeah. to take. It mm. looked uh, they were just and then. At the end, they're resting like, I don't know, just two wrestlers on toot. Not saying that they are, <laughs> but <laughs> endless. You heard it from Cultaholic Podcast. <laughs> they're on the toot. It was just breathless back and forth. They were doing all the sequences and whatnot. They're both like, rolling out the ring to hang on in there when the other ladies hit the fi- The other lady has hit the finisher. Mm. <laughs> I don't know why I'm t- phrasing like that. Lady. The other lady hit the finisher. <laughs> they're female moves on each other. <laughs> Sound like Adam Pearce. Ladies, ladies, <laughs> calm down. I need a beverage. Yeah. Was, oh, I agree. I just what would Adam Pierce drink? Oh, f- He'd probably have, I reckon, a nice stiff whiskey. Mm. Oh, okay. All right. Were you hitting at something else there? No, that works as well. <laughs> you know what? Um, I don't know why. anyway, so. I just agree with Rod. Right, just a good match. Yep. Yeah, well said, Ross. As Cheers. Always. Thank you. Yep. Good night. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, Adam <laughs> Pierce and Tricky Nikki uh, make an announcement regarding the tag team titles. At WrestleMania, the JD will defend against five other teams in a ladder match. A six-pack ladder match. Yeah. Called the police. It's yeah. a match that's going to steal the show. It could. But they're <laughs> risky ladder matches, aren't they? They yeah. are. Yeah. In the clubhouse, the JD are not happy about it. They storm off to find Pierce and Aldous, who needs a whiskey. Now, I don't even like ladders, says Finn Balor. I'm scared of heights. Everyone knows I don't like ladders. <laughs> I think that's later on, but yes. <laughs> um, don't worry, Prince. Time to fly. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's not scared of ladders. It's time to fly. <laughs> um... The judgment they've been screwed over here. Yeah. They've been But they kept on interfering, so it's only fair that they get some come up with it. So in the case well, I guess yeah, that is true actually. But I was just looking at it in the case of Gunter, a dominant heel champion, and then his opponent has to go through like a grueling gauntlet match to even just to earn the right. Whereas these lads have got to defend against five other teams. Gunther hasn't been having interference. Gunther's been winning because he's Gunther. He did once, but I don't, he, I don't think he asked Jimmy for Jimmy Uso begs to differ, yeah. Matthew. But hmm? I don't think he... Oh, he says a lot of things. <laughs> I don't think he... Well, one thing in particular over and over again. I don't think he wanted him to help him, did he, though? He didn't, he didn't ever ask for it. Mm. Hmm. It's, not help, it's not his fault he's better. But you are right what you say, like, the Judgment Day, it's like comeuppance for them. So, yeah. yeah, fair enough. The qualifying matches are interesting. What are they? Well, one of them I know is the Creeds versus DIY, so one of those two teams will not be on WrestleMania. Oh, I hope it's the Creeds. What, no. the wins or not? Is yeah, not the, the wins, sorry, yeah. yeah. Not, no offence to DIY, but I want to see those big boys mm. and some big ladders. They'd yeah. lend themselves better to a ladder match. Yeah. Imagine little Johnny, bless him. They Why have a, I gone down that they route? They had a good ladder match once against the AOP. <laughs> He's a very small man. Remember that? It might have been the match before Champa turned on him. The yeah, it was the, uh, the other match. The, uh, yeah, 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 that was the match that it returned, yeah. yeah. But they battled each other so badly during that match, both got injured during it. So it's the slowest burn of all time. Crazy period. But it actually worked out because it led yeah. to tension building for when Champa came back. Yeah. Mm. And then we got the great moment where Garner's like, I'm going to beat you, my best friend, for turning on me. And then Champa shows up in the best shape of his life. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, oh, God. Great. Oh, no. Well, Johnny actually did. Oh, no, he's hurt. 
Uh, Travis... Zier, uh, Zier, uh, Veer and Sanga are involved in one of the other uh, qualification they? matches, yeah. They might win Which all. Oh, hell yeah. Thing. Very, <laughs> very excited for the stage of them. Let's see if I can find the, the qualification match No worries. Uh no the they're just running through what tag teams could be in it. I definitely saw Veer and Sanger on the graphic they put up there. Okay. I'll come back to you. Could it be on the WrestleMania 30 uh WrestleMania 40 Wikipedia page? Oh, it might be. There they are. Right. Ah. So we have the New Day versus the American Alphas. Oh, New Day. Otis and Tazawa. New Day winning that. DIY versus the Creeds. And then the awesome truth, as I live and breathe, against Veer and Sanger. So that means there'll be other ones oh. on SmackDown then, I guess. Yeah. Wait, no, I don't think... Mm. Well, the awesome okay. truth have got to be in it for storyline reasons. Yeah. They're going to win it. They might win the whole damn damn yeah. thing. And then what, New Catch Republic, maybe? Oh, aye. Oh, they are there, SmackDown boys, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. They couldn't win that match on 2K24. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. then... Who else? I was going to say the Usos. They've not existed for a while. Bless <laughs> you. Yeah, sure. Certainly one of the biggest matches this year. Yeah. yeah. Against each other? Yes. Could I have an NXT tag team in there? Chase you? Or oh, don't. Sorry. Yeah. Don't tease me like that. Why half the NXT crowd wouldn't even like that? Because they've gone rogue. That's right. Pathetic. Pathetic, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Travis Scott is ringside for Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell versus oh, Ivan Allen, Maxine Dupree. God. Then things get even weirder. No, they get better. No, they get weird. Let me just describe <laughs> what happens. Midway through the match, Candice interrupts Maxine's... Halfway through the match, it's like, it's like 10 seconds in. Right. Candice interrupts Maxine's caterpillar attempt and verbally tears her apart. She says Maxine doesn't belong in the ring, is hated by both the internet and the women's locker room. She's glad Maxine's dead brother isn't around to see what embarrassment she's become. What Go on, that? Candace. Ma- <laughs> what? <laughs> Maxine tearfully tries to leave the ring, <clears throat> but Indy kicks her and gets the win. No, uh, and s- even, part, even before this part, McAfee made a comment about Maxine being a talking point online, but she's improving. Right. Which she is, by the way, because that transition into the caterpillar, she did like a handspring turn into the caterpillar. You've never seen Otis do that. No. no. Maybe that's why Candace was annoyed because she was doing the backwards caterpillar. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> You're forwards. Yeah. If you think you think the crowd hater, you should hear what the locker room think of her. By the way, your brother's dead. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was an interesting way of turning what apparently became a big talking point for a lot of people going, should you boo people if they're crap? Which I thought was interesting. Yeah. But what, what a weird, what's it, it? Not that weird. What an interesting time we live in. Because it used to be like, of course, I've paid my money. And Maxine Dupree... I think no one's going to argue the fact that she's ready for the spot she's in because the big two, biggest two spots she's had this year in Raw and Royal Rumble, oh, it wasn't good. Yeah, yeah, she had that match with Rhea where Rhea seemed to get really Oh, annoyed and there was one as that one. Yeah, yeah. Towards she, the end. But that's, she's just getting put a bit, pushed a bit too hard too soon. Yeah, it's yeah. a sad one because it's not her fault. It's just they've booked her too, yeah, too far too yeah. soon. But you then should the you say that? Or, and I've seen other people say the thing going, what is it with these people going, no, let's just be positive about everything. It's like, no, shut up. Just these woke kids. Yeah. <laughs> you can't be negative because of woke. Podcast, not to say that word. <laughs> Tom said it when he was on a couple of weeks ago. They woke. Yeah. What, what, what about sugar? Oh, what are they called now? Sugar. The cereal. Yeah. Right. And they've changed them because of that. Yeah. And right. I was like, why have they changed the name? Tom was like, woke flakes or something like that, didn't he? Oh, my God. Oh, no. Don't remember. Tom, the, the older Tom gets, the more fat she gets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? I'm absolutely fine with it, me. Because they're not going to have done that. They're not going to have sat Maxine down and gone, right, here's what we're doing, whether you like it or not. They would have gone backstage. We're going to kill you? your brother. <laughs> We'll get him to the metro station. <laughs> My dad didn't know. <laughs> Jack Dad owes us a favour. Sorry, don't don't worry about it. I assume there's a chance that she maybe even pitched it to Trip or whoever's in charge backstage now and gone, well, could we make yeah, this storyline canon? Yeah, yeah. yeah or, <clears> the, or they've sat down and gone, we know this about you. Is there a chance that we could possibly do the, the people get if Maxine Dupree herself is not getting upset about it, I don't see why anyone else has to. No, no yeah, I don't think yeah, I, I'm yeah. not gonna be people. I was gonna be like, no, they sh- they shoot, told her there and then her, her reactions were real. It's like, no, it's interesting. It's all right, yeah. especially when we all enjoy Christian Cage going, "Hey, guess whose dad's tweeted. dead? Your dad's dead." I think he tweeted or like liked a tweet or something, saying like, "Everybody wants to do this" or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Copy yeah. Yeah. Said, didn't he? yeah, but I don't know how this is gonna help Vaccine. Um, no. To well, be no, honest with you, they messed up in Your not having. Your brother's dead. Your brother's dead. <laughs> it's it's not quite CEO, is it? They messed up by having her get emotional. If she oh, was that's like, it, yeah. If that's you're, if, is that what you're saying, you little bitch? You stupid little poison pixie was it? Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, you could say hi, be brother, a minute when I snap your neck. And then that'd just, be good. If she laid the smackdown on Candice, I would have saved it for me. It's just yeah. a, no one likes the cry. Remember Lana a couple of years oh, ago? Yeah. 
was going to say, it's Come such on. a WWE trope that they st- even now everything's generally better. Women got to be crying. But even Bobby Lashley. Don't, oh, my sisters used to take me to a field and tie me to a tree. Oh, and no, beat he, me. Was, he, was, he was. That was a fond memory. <laughs> he was like, yeah, I, no, he wasn't crying. He, he was, was like, oh, great memories of I being love, tortured. I love my sisters. But there's that shot at the end where he's getting all like, Oh, because he loves them so much. <laughs> That's <cabinet>. love. <laughs> not because the men don't cry, <laughs> no, <laughs> could be. W- women cry at the drop of a hat. Bloody hell. <laughs> what, what, what were they thinking? Oh, it's Vince in charge. Yeah, yeah. There, there we go. Anyway. But I, I, to be for Candice, who showed no character like since the way days of NXT, yeah. for her over the past two weeks to go, I don't need a pity party from someone like you who couldn't lace me boots. And then now this about the dead brother. I'm fine with it. it, it was Let's a, go. It was hilarious how quick it was. She did one move, she did it properly. It's like, <laughs> your brother's dead. It's like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, all right, it was, it was because they get like two minutes to do it like, was like, the move, the match, the angle. Like the most NXT yeah. thing I've seen on the main roster in a long time. And, and it, it was it meant to be like a work shoot as well? Because she goes like, she interrupts the capital and goes, she's not taking that. Like, she's not taking that move. And I was oh, like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. breaking the fourth wall here. Oh. Not that it improved. <laughs> but when we're sat here in like four weeks' time after the WrestleMania main event of Candice LeRae versus Maxine Dupree, mm. and Maxine has snapped Candice's ankle because mm. of what she said, we'll all be saying, bravo! That, yes. That's it. Like, Wonderful yeah. storytelling. I'm with you. When, they, when they're showing Kavorka and going, yeah, I'm going to beat you up for saying those horrible things, it's fine. When they're going, whoa, 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 my uncle. Yeah. Indy looked shocked as well. She was like, what? That wasn't part of the script. Even though it was. Ugh. No, no, she didn't say that, but she was looking like Candice. the script. Wait, uh-huh. What page are we on? Indy pissed her off last week as well, Candice, didn't she? Like, cool, chill out, bro. Oh, that's We'll get segment. a tag team shot, even though we just lost one. That but... segment made Tegan Knox look like a child. You might have missed this. They're no, arguing. I wouldn't say the... I missed it. They're arguing in the back. <laughs> have you seen you it? Avoided it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. Yeah, they're arguing in the back. Candice is like, Indy, we need to get our act together. Over the other side of the locker room, Natalia's like, I agree, Tegan. Come on. And she takes her by the hand and leads her up. <laughs> it's like, Ugh. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, let's move Here's on. Here's a sad real life story. I've written down what it was, the real life story. Maxine's brother was called Wyatt and was killed in 2017. Oh, my God. Uh, he was only 22 in an automobile accident. That is sad. Well, I'm glad you've shared that and made it all miserable, Ross. Well, yeah. I was just thought I had a bit of context to what they're on about. It is context. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. the context. I had to search that out because I didn't see anyone else mention it. So, sorry for being a journalist. <laughs> <laughs> you should apologize. <laughs> <laughs> the JD confront the GMs about the ladder match. They demand to know whose idea it was. And found out it came from Miz and R-Truth. Mm. Womp womp. Priest wants a match with them tonight, but Pierce explains that they're away on media duty. Truth immediately arrives because he got his dates mixed up and didn't know tonight was Monday Night Raw. Yeah. Yeah. Th- th- these jokes are crap. Yeah, <laughs> Your but job is mega but over. But it's truth, so it kind of still works. It's, he doesn't know anything. No, no, no. He's apparently got serious brain issues, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a wrestler. He used to, oh, oh, yeah. He used, to, he used to have an imaginary sidekick. That was all right. You, you can live with that. You don't know what day it is. If anything, that we've learned that's what smoking does to you. So kids, mm-hmm. don't smoke. Because our truth used to smoke. He and had look one at the tab in 2011. <laughs> and look what happened to him. It was a weird story, though. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a match where the stipulation was he was allowed one tab during the match. <laughs> he had allowed like a tab to smoke, right? I don't remember like, that. Was that. He on got TV? on the outside and there was a bottle of water and a tab. Oh, yeah, it was Morrison. Yeah, yeah right. And then he, his heel taunt would be to go and breathe the smoke <laughs> off. <laughs> I forgot he did it for more than one match, didn't he? Did he? Oh. This stipulate, it was like the catch clause. He had the, <laughs> he had the smoke House break. House of Black Rules says <laughs> Truth can have a tab. Oh, all right. It was weird. Um, but now he's just really damaged. Yeah, he's damaged. Now he, yeah. he's booking Monday Night Raw as well, booking WrestleMania. He is. <laughs> mm. And they're like, oh, yeah. And then Priest tells Pierce, book the match. Uh-huh. I like Priest going, look, I don't want to do this, but I'm not going to be outsmarted by Truth. Mm. How good are people respect me if Truth doesn't even know where he is? He's like winning. And outsmart them. So, yes, yeah, correct. Like the, That'd be the final spot, wouldn't it? Truth on one side of the ladder, priest on the other. Priest will lose and then walk out of the weekend, the world heavyweight champion. Mm. I hope he doesn't. That would make some sense, but it would be funny if Truth just goes, ha ha, and just goes, yeah, I've been faking the entire time, pushes Priest <laughs> off, runs up, grabs it, ah. Hey, man. And then Priest, uh, yeah, Priest out of embarrassment cashes in. Yeah. I've got to get my, my mojo back. They've just not built like them up. Yeah. For it to work at this, like, in it is a satire, you know, entering April soon. Well, two weeks yeah, away. Yeah, he needs another, like, Bad Bunny level. Big main event or something. Bad Bunny should be champ. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, he should. <laughs> Michael Cole brings out Cody Rhodes for an in ring interview. He asks why Cody slapped The Rock. Cody, why would you ask that? Cody doubts that The Rock is really his boss, but if so, it felt good to slap the boss. And it was a receipt, he said, sorry as well. Yeah, because Cole, did you not see he him slap me? Yeah. Yeah. You're not seeing the t shirts, Michael. The really I, cool t-shirts. Cody says, no, I try to avoid them. 
Yeah, nothing made Rock look like a, a dad than those t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Cole asked if Cody can trust Seth in the tag match. Cody says people change and mentions the coal mine. Wow, that's gone back a bit. As well as his own throne smashing instant in AE dub. Yes. The second time AE dub got a swift little mention. It got near pop though. Yeah. Near pop. Because it so, to do it, they have to be so vague about it. So it was like, oh, okay. Um, he says his story is no longer just about the title, it's about all of us. <laughs> We're all losers. He mentions various fans, friends, and relatives and says that for all of them, he'll finish the story at WrestleMania. Babyface stuff. But yeah. he's only got his mother left. Michelle Rubio. Yeah. Yep. Michelle looks um that's where he looks that's he looks like his mom. He doesn't look like Dusty. He looks like his mom. I've always thought, why does Cody look now like Dusty? It's because he looks like his mom. He's got the good jeans. He's Cuban or something. She is anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cody says he doesn't Heritage. care about the old heads doing podcasts. Hey, come on, man. I thought we were friends. Are we the old heads? No, he's referring to, you know, I'll take your pick from retired oh, wrestlers. Oh, right. Bully yeah. Rays and Eric the Russos, Biscoff. the Richards, Nash. the Biscoff. Someone clapped back at Nash this week. Because he's full of it was Alex. It was Ali Knight. It was Ali Knight. Yeah, I think we're, again. Ellen Knight was like, who the hell is he? <laughs> that was year. That was like last year. I, I did it again. again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was asked about Nash. And um, he was like, oh, I mean, I don't really care. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she, I, this is right. I do feel a bit bad for Kev. Yeah. Because ba- yeah. Bailey and Tamina and Naomi have proper whizzle wazzled them. Have they? Just by turning up to Boston last night, didn't they? To watch their friend debut in AEW. Oh, he was like, yeah. I couldn't possibly be there for Sting's retirement because the WWE wouldn't want to see me on camera. He's backtracked yeah, on that Yeah, but they now, weren't though. on <laughs> he said oh, that okay. yeah, He could have been... still been there off camera, though, is the point. Yeah, if he wanted a payday. Yeah, That's his friend, retiring. If you were it's your final podcast, from a benefit, your final <laughs> your final podcast on OS Dub, if it ever happens again, I'll be there watching from afar. <laughs> You'll be in the room cheering you on <laughs> on the back, sat on top of a step ladder watching. From yeah, the but then you can't see Ross in his big coat <laughs> and my big favorite, hat. My favorite one was when Regal went to Bloodsport and he looks like a final boss from above, just <laughs> oh. looked really angry. Because yeah, Regal at Bloodsport, like you're gonna get in the ring, man. I, will, I should mention. Apparently Nash has been more reluctant to make public appearances since like, his son passed away, which is fair. Oh, I well, should mention okay, that as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but he didn't say that on his podcast. But he shouldn't have to, I suppose. But yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I stick. Plus, with you know, Kev. He, 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 plus you can't get high and say the f word every three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> He's there in the crowd. What do you think about Sting? Well, he totally <laughs> can. He totally <laughs> can. People would let him do that. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, the, the Michael Cole though in that promo. What a what a saucy man. Straight in there with the can you trust Seth Rollins stuff. He's a broadcast yeah. journalist. I know. He's, he's sowing the seeds, though. The seeds of dissent. God damn. The plot is thickening. He adds some flour to this lovely storyline soup. Mmm. Is that what you do? It? That was, you are hungry. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. Uh, I'm quite hungry today. Yeah. And up, up up, the Hannah. Up the blind Hannah, as he referenced in the promo. Yeah. And Michelle. And she came out of the show just to feel it. The weight belt. Was yeah, that? or to feel the atmosphere. Just to feel the atmosphere. Well, there was what? Yeah. Who did he mention? He wanted to give the weight belt to his pal. I've who... got that written down. Uh, but it was it was <laughs> it was good babyface stuff, and it all was probably true as well. Yeah, yeah. Kind of... He's so good. I'll tell you what, though, go? interesting when he got out the ring, and they've got the two well, the, the shot of Cody in the WrestleMania sign in the sky in the background. He does the old like elite hello young bucks kissing the hand sign thing. Kiss the hand and do the other thing. The two. <laughs> Oh, is that what he was doing? Huh? He does that. He did it when he won the rumble. <laughs> he does like me, me, me. it's like Luis Suarez when he scores. He's doing ah. Reno two two zero. Two two zero. So I was happy. Imagine all the Patreon producers. Yeah, yeah. Imagine. Imagine this is the week he stopped. <laughs> Oh, so we get that. <laughs> All right, you got Cody's love. You don't need those. I'm going to imagine, enough. right? If that little thing was because Matthew and Nicholas have agreed and they've worked out a deal for mm. the EVPs to get involved in the WrestleMania main event. No, no, no. Yes. No, no, no. no. Come on. I told you to stop. What, the, word so what would the haters of either side say if the two sides started working together? They would speak about the Canadian Spike Railway. Yes. yes. Oh, good. sign of unity. That'll be the wrestling spike. Okay, you know what? Tyrus isn't that bad. Billy Corgan, <laughs> you get my money. It should be like it would be like two planets crashing. Has there been a film where two planets have crashed into each other? Uh, no, because that's not what planets do. Um, no, there should be though. Get um Christopher Nolan on the phone. Mm-hmm. Get just, well, like, two planets. The visual of two Uh-oh. planets crashing into each other. Yeah. Wow. Palm and and five thousand when the worlds af- collide. Then the aftermath of said crash. Write that down. (laughs) (laughs) Proper lyrics. Oh, on one of the trailers for Dune uh, Part 2, it was like Civil War. And it's like, this is the disaster movie about Civil War in America, this fictional thing. I've seen it. But the trailer was like, like, from the guy who did Annihilation, 
um, maybe like 28 Days Later or something like that, another film's like, all this film's about like the world ending. Oh, there's that his thing. It's like, the, from this, it was the, I can't remember the exact films. One of them was Annihilation, one of them mm. was um, another apocalypse film. It was just like, this guy does not like the planet right now. Um, even if it's not good, I'm quite excited to watch that film, actually, the Civil War one. Mm. Looks like even if it's bad, it'll be good, bad, good trash, entertaining mm. junk. Cast looked good. Did it? Mm. Mm. I saw it when you I know went... why I think that? Because that guy uh, who plays the dumb guy in Breaking Bad. <laughs> oh, no, it's him. The dumb guy in Breaking Bad? Yeah. He, um... Oh, Jesse Plemons. Thank you, yes. Um, Todd. Todd. Thank you, yes. Yeah. Todd puts on a bit of weight. He's Everyone a... goes, ah, I know, he's yeah. It was Poor like 10 Todd. years later. I know, yeah. Todd's a, he's a great actor, him. <laughs> he's a great heel. He's also yeah, in he Kills of the Flower Moon as a good guy. He's a policeman. Oh, I need to see that. Oh. I, I, yeah. Have you seen it? When they have the film, uh, the scene in the living room about him having intercourse. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> he's a policeman in that one. That's the thing I've seen with him, but I don't know what it's called. Oh, in Kills the Flower Moon, he's like the... He's like invest... No, I don't think it's the same. <laughs> that, that might be like Fargo TV series. I, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Mm. I saw. A, I might have been watching, right, highbrow television, everybody. Ricky Go Smith. on, Gogglebox. Okay. Uh, and they were watching that scene on there. How, how, they, how Giles and Mary? Yeah, uh, fine. Hello, Nathan. Merlin's well as well. Merlin the dog. Mm. Up the Crufts, by the way. Fantastic. Oh my God! So it is you. I knew there was someone I knew who wanted. Do you want to go to Crufts one day? I was gonna go, but then me and Kayla decided it wasn't worth paying hundreds of pounds uh, to go and pet some dogs. Uh, <laughs> I knew that. I thought it was you. I knew there was someone I knew who wanted yeah. to go. We, had, we booked our tickets for the Sunday to like see you know the final show and whatnot. We were just going down to pet the dogs because apparently you can walk around the backstage area a bit, just all the dogs that have entered. Because obviously there's like. Hundreds of dogs you don't even see on the carpet who have been in the like the preliminary rounds and whatnot. Jobber dogs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> jobber dogs, <laughs> underdogs even. Yeah, but where the jobber dogs where the moon is full. Mm. Uh, but it's like really expensive. Aye, mm. just to, well, obviously trains and travel and yeah, yeah, yeah. Accommodation. Yeah, it's down in Birmingham, isn't it? Yes, at mm. the neck. Mm. NEC. Aye. <laughs> Backstage, Becky Lynch and Liv Morgan shake hands. Nia Jax ambushes both of them. Throwing Liv into the side of a road case and slamming Becky through a table. A shoot throw, by the way. Yeah. My goodness, Liv yeah. Morgan nearly perished. Time to fly, Prince. Yeah. Uh, princess. <laughs> princess, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On a magic or Liv. Carpet, right? What is this? Because, right, it's Becky versus Rhea. Mm -hmm. Liv's keep, she's flying around there. She won't leave. Liv versus Nia. Is that a WrestleMania match, is it? No, no, maybe not a WrestleMania. Oh. It's something for next week, maybe. Yeah. I don't think so. No, because it's Becky versus Nia next week. Oh, aye. Last but then is Liv going to interfere again? And Becky's like, all right, can you stop? I don't know if Liv will get added to the title match, though. That seems... Yeah. People are getting worried that, that yeah, she's going to be... I like, like it. I realise I'm agreeing with the thing you've just said. I'm really uh, sorry. No, you were. That's okay. But yeah. I you were like, Not again. No, no. Well, I don't... I like Liv, but I don't know if she's right for... I don't know if that title match would be a, a triple threat, though. Mm. She uh, would feel like the odd one out. And that, on this instance, I think... Liv yeah. versus Nia could be a Mania match if it was, like, buried alive. I had like a stick, <laughs> maybe not buried. Buried alive. <laughs> yeah, no one. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want. Like that, like that guy that messed with you at the mantra. Um, some reality that's a show. Real person who really died. Like I don't know if I can. <laughs> He'll never bother you again. Some reality show cowboys in the crowd. <laughs> to Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark versus the Kabuki Warriors. <laughs> the champions retain after interference from Dakota Kai. Oh dear. Zoe Stark and Asuka wrestling like. Page seven of the wrestling textbook. Seven this time. Yeah. Page seven. Yeah. A bit further in. Oh, now. This is a new thing. It's it? not not the basics. A bit further in. Ah, yes, mm. fantastic. I thought Zoe was actually the most impressive one in this match, which is what she always is by and large. Yep. But it's a shame the character is not there. There. Uh, the challenges were made look strong in this one. They almost won on a couple of occasions, but then Dakota cheating. She's the most evil lady in the world <laughs> since Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> <laughs> she <laughs> cheated. To hand the Kabukis the win. Yeah, it was that. <laughs> Got nothing after that. God. Myra. <laughs> oh, 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 anyway, anyway. Yeah, I thought they looked as good as they could do considering they've, they've been given an out. I thought yeah. this was a, Yeah, it was only going to hit a certain amount because it's people like. You can hear the crowd go like, all right, here we go. But they were getting there towards the end. And they did like, or didn't like, but they liked to boo with Dakota Kai because mm -hmm. she's a bad person. But yeah, bless them. They're going, this, these, how long are they going to keep these tag titles going as a thing? I think it's, it's, it's been more invested than it has been for a long while. Just since... Well, like, Kabuki War is holding them, sure, but like doing anything with them on a regular basis seems... 
Maybe. Mm. It doesn't help them when they get, like, get used like they did last week when they had the title match and they defended. Yeah. Then they had this week's title match announced, but then had to defend them on NXT. That doesn't yeah. help them. Yeah. It's just foregone conclusion squash matches for titles. Exactly. Yeah. Come on now. We're better than this now. <laughs> hey, see? <laughs> 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 Andrade meets with the Judgment Day. Rhea Ripley says Dominic isn't here tonight, but speaks highly of Andrade. She suggests they meet in future discuss business. Andrade leaves and Finn agrees that he could be a worthwhile recruit. Priest seems annoyed and says he's focusing on his upcoming match. Mm, he's been a little bitch. <laughs> this was the most interesting <laughs> thing that happened in the world of wrestling this week. Oh, absolutely. Because last week, Matthew... <laughs> The Spanish-speaking lads of the JD oh, yes. were speaking Spanish to Andrade. That and makes sense. JD especially was like, well, I don't, I don't understand what's going on here. Then this week, Rhea is the one who's brought in the Spanish-speaking lad to speak with everybody. So what's happened? Because it felt like the Spanish lads were in cahoots. Unfortunately, maybe maybe that would have that would have been more interesting, but maybe that wasn't true. Yeah, what Which is a shame, because I, <laughs> I liked your theory there. Because then Finn would have been... Because Ross's point was like, in the Judgment Day, the Spanish-speaking ones are going to betray someone. But Finn, they don't know. Finn knows Spanish because of his wife. Yeah, and wouldn't that just be... So it would just be The JD. bloody Kabuki Warriors thing. Movie? Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah, but I liked... When Ross explained it, it sounded captivating last oh, week. Oh, okay. Well, if we can do different things with the same sort of... It's a completely or... different language. You yeah, are right. It's, well, it's like different. we explained earlier with uh, Naomi and Bianca. Just like Drew McIntyre. Yeah, and Finn Balor going... going like, Truth C, and Sammy... C, C means yes. I don't know what's happening. Truth <laughs> and Sammy... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Truth and Sami Zayn? As in, like, similar similarities in the Judgment Day with Truth and the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing the thing. exact same sort of line at the same time. Mm. Just imagining Sami going, like... Uh, I just think Balor's going to be... Do you think Balor's going to ruin the, the coolness by going, hey, yeah? He's like, what? <laughs> it's a first sacrifice. He's like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just dead. Yeah, get like, reacts like this. I feel uh, like my Hall of Fame chances are waning every time we do it now. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, it's not. It's all right. Uh, during Priest match with Truth, Balor and JD attack Gargano and Champa on the outside. Truth dives onto everyone. Well, kind of. No, he Priest, did. No, I mean, but no one caught him. Poor, poor get. Oh, God, his head, he went a bit like that. It's just he? like yeah. someone's arm and just didn't, and he's, mm. uh, you know. Uh, but Priest takes control when he gets back in the ring and wins the match. The brawl continues afterwards and the heels stand tall. Boo. I thought it was a really enjoyable watch, watching Truth get all of the five moves of Doom and a five-knuckle shuffle in. Yep. And an just F like your lady. Yeah, just like your lady from 1900. And then it was a nice after the dive to the outside. Happy Jade, happy Jade. <laughs> I think about that one. Thank you. After the, the the dive to the outside, it was just a massive lariat from Priest was hairy, so it was. Mm. Well, Truth's always been good at taking lariat and yeah. clothesline, didn't he? He can spin. The Rikishi. Yeah. Yes. The Rikishi. Also known as the Mai and the Billy Gunn. The who? Mai Janetti used to take Oh Marty! He just went Mai. Sorry, did I... <laughs> No, I got it. Hey, my, my voice doesn't quite work. Marty. You sound very Jordy. Little Marty. Blue <laughs> Marty. Um, <laughs> also, another good Rikishi bump this week was Dar, but it got completely overshadowed by what had just happened before. Yeah. I can't wait to talk about it. I know, yeah. It was hot. <laughs> uh, Becky Lynch cuts a promo from the medical room, challenging Nia Jax to a last woman standing match next week. She has been silly, all right. It's silly. me against the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, she, she is just giving herself a quite convenient excuse when the mother beats her up at WrestleMania. Her and Seth are so similar. They're pushing themselves too hard. Pace yourselves. Mm. Yeah, does she not walk around the house seeing Seth all crippled with his back and his knee and whatever else is wrong with they him? They probably have matches in the house. Yeah. Just to stay sharp, but they're ruining <laughs> themselves. Rue! <laughs> Get in here. There's the black and white for you. Ring the bell, Rue. <laughs> 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 oh dear Jey Uso comes to the ring and says he came to Raw for a fresh start but the bloodline won't let him go mm. so he wants to make a challenge for WrestleMania Jimmy versus Jay. if Jimmy accepts Jay says he's going to knock the yeet out of his ass yeah, yeah. What a pretty painting he pictures that was a weird thing to say but the crowd loved it yeah. and this whole promo yes Pat made it an interesting point that it's hard not to yeet all over yourself which Pat said after yeeting. So Pat was actually covered in yeet when he said that. <sighs> God's sake. It's like the Smurfs. So yeet's now jizz. Yeet's, yeet's jizz. So oh my God, it's like Ricky Stanicki. <laughs> John Cena has brought another great thing to the world of professional wrestling. And that's why you should vote him and his down for the lols for this week's Hall of Fame. 
Do we think that Jimmy and Jay... Patreon.com forward slash cult. I can't see that being anything other than... It seems like a textbook WrestleMania opening match. Do you not think? Yeah, the yeah. Ima- image of Jay, he'll be the first thing we see, I think. Yeah, Jay covered in yeet coming out. Yeah, yeah not no, covered in yeet. Like Orlando Jordan. <laughs> he used to be covered in yeet. <sighs> yes, he did. I uh, can't believe that was a thing. I saw a that gimmick. a few weeks ago. Just Lads, him. he fancies men. I'm living more than this good, huh? <laughs> I've never heard anything like and he's, it. <laughs> and he's very subtly being a sex pest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, I was yeah. like, God almighty. He comes a, down with like, the, the merge, like the... There's a tie that he's the tape. tape. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Covered in yeet as well. Yeah. I hated that so much, man. I'm, I'm not surprised. Yeet. Yeet. If you if just yelled yeet over and over again, I wonder who that was. Like... Yeah. <laughs> He's a good dancer with his posse. Yeah. <laughs> Gunther is interviewed backstage and denies becoming overconfident on the road to WrestleMania. He was elevated, sorry, he has elevated the IC title to heights never seen before. He wishes the winner of tonight's gauntlet match good luck. I found this weird. Oh, thank you. It was very reserved of Gunter. He should run for office. That's what I'm thinking. It was after like this. politically. It was. Po- it was like he was trying to be polite. He had like a, not a cool, not like a cool wrestler suit on, just like a a nerd suit. A Cody <laughs> Rhodes nerdy <laughs> suit for president. Nah, Cody's a cooler <laughs> than the one he he was like he was going to work. Yeah, weird. Insurance man Gunter. Mm-hmm. Adrenaline I'm... in my soul. I eat lots of schnitzel. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to test drive this Volkswagen? <laughs> this Volkswagen. is me. This is the noise of me driving on the autobahn. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> mein Vater said, Sprechen. Who has it all away to give him? I can't remember much German, if you can't tell. Here comes the sun. That's not how it goes. That, that bloody song. That doesn't matter. Well, not that here bad, comes the sun. No, not the beast. No, no, son, Rammstein. Rammstein. <laughs> oh, I don't know Rammstein. I just know Du Hast, but I don't know. Yeah. I mean, the video on Gunther's icy oh. title reign was beautifully done. Yes, it very was, good. Yeah. Jericho got a little bit, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, I wish I was everything, didn't he? Kofi <laughs> was involved, I think. Lots think? of people were involved. Yeah, yeah, lots, lots of champions. Lots, lots of important people held the icy title. Yeah. Triple, aren't, aren't wrong ones. Triple H was in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go, of course. That's another one. Yeah. So just show it. They're doing an amazing job with Gunther. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We didn't mention earlier about the, the promo for Chad Gable, or as I was calling him after it, oh. Perk Gable. <laughs> he Why looked, is that, Ross? <laughs> he looked... He was... Talk about AJ Styles bursting out his, his arms like a <laughs> banana. He was the entire body. Yeah. He's an Olympic athlete. Oh. Well, uh, looks, oh, that's a horrible way to like. Oh, and there goes Chad Gable. He's been eliminated. So we give him a bear hug. <laughs> Who's doing a bear hug? He's exploded. Also, Muhammad Ali, the greatest, will be in this year's Hall of Fame class because mm. you know, he referee was he referee? Yep. Yeah, referee for WrestleMania one. I'm genuinely. Also, Grim Monsoon spun him around that one. I time. was surprised. I had a check. I was like, oh, he's not in already. You just think he would be? It's a bit tenuous, but you know, it's Muhammad no, Ali. No, so. Arnie's in. Well, he paid for that. I mean, I was just. Did he? Well, I mean, it was a. It was like a sponsorship deal, wouldn't it? Because oh, that's what Triple H got the, the Terminator entrance because oh, he had the well. Terminator 19 if or whatever the sequel it was. And Trump's in and Kid Rock's in. Muhammad Ali's more linked to wrestling than them. He wrestled Inoki and oh. he invented. Tra- yeah, you know what? I forgot about Inoki. And yeah, he yeah, invented but... trash talking, basically. Trash talking. Well, he didn't yeah. invent it, but he pioneered it. Yeah. I think. I was shocked he wasn't in already. Yeah. He shook up the world, Matthew. I don't know if you've heard. You know what? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he shook up the world. Oh no, I'm pretty. Anyway. And you get the uh, the action figure. The, the, um, oh, the company it's not Jax's anymore. Whatever, mm. whatever just the, the is really Ross's cool... or Matthew's or? Ah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> he shoots, he scores. Could it be Joel's? Yeah, it will move on now because I'm boring Sorry. everyone. Uh, then we get the gauntlet match. Again, gauntlet match for number one contendership for the title. Main event and Raw. Mm. Fantastic. I story. found it really funny though because in that promo, Chad's all about, I'm going to run the gauntlet. I'm going to start the match and finish the match and run the gauntlet. Yeah, the plans change. He's the last one in there. I feel like, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like plans must have changed because that was... Because he used all the energy doing that bloody promo. Oh. <gasps> in fact, the match would have made more sense. I'm on the toot. Well, the story, I liked the match, but the story of it would have made more sense if he'd started off. He would have got more sympathy. I was shocked when he wasn't the first one out there. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Trevor and JD. Started yeah. things off. Ricochet making his return. Uh, Big Trev looked very, the, very good, I thought. Goodness promo reminded me Ricochet is the man he beat for the belt. Yeah. I, th- I honestly, oh. if you'd asked us, all right, who, who did good the beat? I'd be like, um... A god? June of, god. <laughs> June of 22, I believe it was. Wow. Yeah, I was like, was it Ricochet? I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. And that, that vaguely rings a bell. 
Uh, Ricochet beats JD McDonough to start the gauntlet match, but is limited by the next entrant, Bronson Reed. Big Bronson Reed, who also got a, I think they all got promos. Oh, uh, yes. Episode of Raw. Daddy Thanks. Uncle. He's uh, pitched a match for WrestleMania, hasn't he? Getting all the big boys in there. I forget oh. what he said. Oh, like a meat sort of. It's a meat planet meat match, planet. yeah. Oh, um, well, the other company's not doing it, so yeah. That'd be fair. Might as well. Yeah. Uh, I think Ricochet looked good and he would have plenty of time. To Jim. get his stuff in and remind everyone, look, I'm really good and flip it and fluid. Do you see him after the show as well with the crowd like, go on, Trevor, do a flip, please, Trevor. <laughs> just yeah. he's carrying all his bags and whatnot and just in a bag. Think, he's with pants. Samantha like yeah. leaving the venue. Just does a standing back flip. Does he? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like the Spider-Man meme from years ago. He can just do flips, can't he? Just flips. Yeah. 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 JD <laughs> looked good as well. The tight brain buster he nailed. He, uh, Trev mm. did a DVD on the apron before a lovely sequence of maneuvers brought yeah. their portion of the match to the end. And yeah. Pat point out that is the hardest part of the ring. It is. Apart from the I, it was post. all good. It was good. <laughs> yeah. What a, what a thing to say. <laughs> they are both obviously good at the moves, but uh, it was the crowd weren't that like, into it. I mean, it's a, it's a start of a gauntlet match, True, so you're not going to get, you know, you don't be like starting off going, oh, it's crazy this. Yeah. But, you know, I think they were very good. But I agree with Rob. It would have made more sense if Gable. Got the crowd in straight away. Hmm. Doing it for his daughter. And also protects him because, wow, I used a lot of energy to beat JD. Yeah. Oh, Bronson Reed just steamrolled me. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Lovely tsunami. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Tsunami. And then Sami Zayn in at number four. And I thought this was amazing. Cole pointed out that Zayn, obviously he's a proud Muslim. Today's the first day, of, first day of Ramadan. So it may not be 100% due to not being able to eat during the day. That yeah. is the sort of commentary I'm like, I enjoy. I'm like, yeah, that's true. Oh, I don't recall that like, ever being brought well. up again. Maybe it has, but like, what a good way of protecting a loss. Mm. Yeah, fair. Yeah, and obviously it didn't affect him because he was able to reverse it with Sunset Bomb to advance. And Nakamura <laughs> is up next. And I thought there'd be a big, ooh, not him, they've been beefing, but it was just like, oh, yeah, okay. It's yeah. It wasn't, <laughs> like, it wasn't quite that, the pop I thought we were going to get. Because the promos doing Nakamura then loses the big matches. He wins some matches, but loses the big ones. But yeah. I was shocked to see Bronson getting pinned off a, a Sunset Bomb. Off the ropes, that's how Sammy got him. Mm -hmm. Sammy Wow Wow. It's a lot of impact for a big talk. Guy. Sammy yeah. Wow Wow. This is Bronson Reed we're talking about. He's a natural disaster. I was quite surprised as well. Was it meant to be very more? Nice. Do you think even though, was it, I can't remember, it was more of a slamming sunset, but then a roll up. Or yeah, maybe it was meant to be on more. On ah, so so bomb. If he yeah. pinned him with more of a rolly roll up one, then I'd have got it more. A jam roly poly. Oh, uh, yeah, jam yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I see you're a wrestler or something. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, then Nakamura obviously tries to tire Zayn as much as possible, but Zayn's able to hit a quick hoover kick for the pin. Like the, the quickness of the... Like, yeah, oh, yeah, I yeah. managed to just, just get him. Then Chad Gable out at number six. Give us the final two. Uh, at least he let Sammy stand up, so it's like started good and proper. Right, so he could kind of run a match. Shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Should have just pressed the advantage. It's for his daughter. It means more, said mm. Chad Gable. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> I liked how desperate they were mm -hmm. towards the end because they're both gagging to get to WrestleMania. The ankle lock spot was tantalizing, Sammy almost tapping out, but then straight away trying to hit a halluva kick with one leg. Yeah. My goodness. Mm -hmm. That's what WrestleMania means to these men. Yeah, the psychology was good. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't able to get the near fall straight away after the halluva because his foot hurt. Mm. The, yeah, the, Ch Gable survived it, which yeah. helps him look kind of strong, but he did. He has lost to a man who's exhausted, though. But that's, you know, yeah. Sammy is higher than him in the pecking order. That's right. The work, it's the workout from early in the show, I tell you. <laughs> Knackered him out. Too much. Perked yeah. him. And the angle, the angle goes again. Only have Zayn reverse, cradle for the pin after 41 minutes, 25 seconds. Mm. And then Gable's gutted. Mm. Yeah, they did it. Because the, me and Thomas speak about the news the other day saying that like, they could potentially do the, the shoulders weren't down properly sort of thing. That's what I saw some people going, were they? Because they're like that. And I'm like, he does shoulders. really wrench him, yeah. But I think yeah. I think it wasn't supposed to be. Like, no. Yeah, put but on I like think that. WWE have since tweeted it or something. Or Pierce, maybe, or someone. Well, they did a digital exclusive interview in the locker rooms where Chow was, yeah, was just like, I'm not going to be trying to get a rematch. That's it. I've, I've buggered it. I'm not going to WrestleMania. I'm gutted. But then Jax is there. I've not seen the one then myself. Like, but I don't know. I feel like I've seen from like quite an official source. They were like, oh, we can not confirm that the... Dolmeo! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the show. <laughs> no, <it's> just... <laughs> yeah, it's not... It's not Tesco brand. <laughs> that was so stupid. I love that. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> With the hand, are you doing? Dolmeo! 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 Oh, there we go. Uh, we'll, have more, we'll have more Italian restaurant shtick in NXT as well, by the way. Yeah. Can't don't you every dare. Every week until you do it. Ah, yeah. No, no, just don't rock up uninvited and you'll be fine. Oh, yeah, that was... That Make really sure you get an invite. Him, yeah. yeah. 
I'll have a piss break, shall we? Ah, NXT. <clears throat> OTM attack the LWO during the entrance of the opening match of the night. Wild and Del Toro fight back and end up winning, becoming the number one tag team contenders in the process. So uh, there's, there's going to be a triple threat match between the three tag teams, one of which is the LWO. Right. That will face the Wolf Dergs at Stand and Deliver. Oh, and then the so they're winner. not the number one contender. Oh, they're right. one of three who are now in a number one contender's triple threat sorry, tag yes. team match. It's the tournament, sorry, yes. I've, I've explained that yeah. wrong. Yeah, sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, we went. All right. Okay. Um, dive was scary. Spring it was. Balls. They had a run to catch him, but they did it. It was good. It, it was, was off, good. Good, good, off good. the back of Bronco as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's that bloody... <laughs> is it the one yeah. who's DJ... Um, Yif. DJ Z from TNA. It's wild, isn't it? That's wild. Yeah, wacky yeah. wild. Yeah. yeah, he's the one who did it. It was, oh, it was huge. Yeah. And he did a lovely hopping up the ropes 450 for the win. The highlight of the match was, though, the, the, the armpit toss over the top rope from the floor by the OTM boys. Mm-hmm. Time to fly. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bronco Nemo seems to be the better of those two. I based can't off decide. this match, yeah. I guess so. He I, has I, long trousers. Yes. I was surprised they lost, you know. I thought they were going to win. Yeah, so did I. I thought yeah. so. But if you get the LWO in NXT, try like five times the team they are on SmackDown. Oh, true. yeah. And I'll put, hell yeah, the NXT tradition of a sweet opening tag match. Yes. Mm. Always good to see this. Mm. Power versus speed, done really well. Yes. Okay. Jeremy Clarkson's favorite comedy. Traversa <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Jervis are> cocaine. <laughs> Allegedly. We see footage of Oberfemi arriving at the performance center earlier in the day. He's very confident about beating Brooks Jensen, who happens to be right there, who overhears him talking about him and says, what did you hey. Say? I tell you what, the car park's not what it used to be. Because if this was 2015, <laughs> Ober would have been killed. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> By a certain member of Jack's No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Josh Briggs, the security guards, hold him back. He's a big fan of JB. Just going like, sorry, BJ. Just, here's, here's me balls. I'll show you me balls. Yeah, I'll show you me balls. Let me balls. You should have got them out. No. no Deal with my yeah. balls. I've shown you me balls. Deal with them. <laughs> my friend asked me to get my balls out, and I can't stop getting them out. Here's my balls. I'll show my ball. I'm BJ. <laughs> <laughs> BJ Big Balls. <laughs> Uh, Thea Hale breaks the ice of Andre Chase and Delightful Hudson, saying they haven't really had a proper chat in a while. Thea checks her phone and sees JC Jane and Jasmine Nix hanging out Jasmine. without them. Jasmine Nix. Jasmine Nix. Jasmine Nix. <laughs> she, <laughs> she says she has other friends and reveals that she'll be teaming with Kalani Jordan tonight. Yay. Ooh. Well, it's clear that Thea doesn't have any friends, which is <laughs> yes. sad. Yeah. Because um, you have to say that, it means you have I mean, yeah, we, we can see how she used to deal with the likes of Bodie Hayward. Uh, mm. Back in the day, he obviously died for her sins. Are Andre and Duke <laughs> not? They're more mentors, I suppose. Yeah, they're more mentors. Yeah. You're not friends with the teacher. No, oh, no, I'll never yeah, see a friend yeah, of a teacher. Yeah, 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 true, ah, true. It's weird for the teacher, that. Yeah, true. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't stand, stand there so close to me. <laughs> Shabba. Uh, but this is the, fir- <laughs> the first time that Andre and Thea have talked since Talgate. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. So, yeah, this is when th- uh, Andre was trying to protect his student by throwing in the towel. When well, she that's why pal. she went away from him. Yeah. And hang out with the bad girls. Mm. Mm. It all comes she, together in the end. It does, yeah. I don't know if it does because the bad girls, well, Jazz, JC saved the you. She was a good guy. What's changed now? Why is she now evil? But she saved it through underhanded means. No, she a, didn't. It was a, a calendar. scantily That's, clad calendar. It was just cheeky. It was like carry on. It was like the 50s. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. It's like that film Calendar Girls. Yeah, I've not seen it. But yeah. yeah, yeah. Or The Full Monty. Oh, The Full Monty, mm. yeah. Or Only Fans. Oh, only, only Fans, fans. yeah. Only Fans and all. Speed of John Cena. <laughs> uh, Roxanne Perez. Comes to the ring for a heel promo. Don't, you're laughing already. Oh, no. She brings up her collapse last year and says it was a result of carrying the entire women's division. She complains about the title being taken from her and talks about not being appreciated by the fans. But now she doesn't care about what anyone thinks about her. Just as well. She brings up Lyra not giving her a rematch after the title match was ruined by Lola Vice and Tatum Paxley. She was pushed to injure Lyra as a result and calls out Ava to vacate the title and hand it to her. Ava arrives and begins to justify Roxanne being stripped of the belt last year, although she does point out that she wasn't gym at the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's seen run by Tate and Paxi, who jumps out the crowd and attacks Perez before being dragged away by referees. Go on, Ross. I know you've got stuff to say. I've not got much to say. I just I Have thought I had to Google it here, but it's all very Justine Littlewood, isn't it? From uh, Tracy Bigger. The bad lass from Tracy Beaker. <laughs> That's what I... Go on. For, for the people at home who are unaware of Tracy Beaker... Tracy Beaker lived in a home with other children. The dumping ground. The dumping ground, that's right. Because that's what the parents would do to the kids. 
dump them. Right, Stuart Little was next door. <laughs> and Justine was the heel of the piece. She was the bad girl. She was the number one heel of the dump. Number one heel, yeah. She was just... Uh, this is what it's... Uh, when Justine would start cutting promos on Tracy, <laughs> this is what it sounded like here with Roxanne cutting Acknowledge a... Acknowledge me. <laughs> <laughs> a very heel promo for her because she's just got... She's got the, a case of the Trish Stratus. She just sounds too nice to be a heel. What she was saying was fine. It's just the fact that she repeated what her point was several times. Like the stuff against yeah. Becky, you didn't care about me. The stuff against uh, Lyra as champion was the same as the stuff against Becky. You didn't care. It went on for way too it long. It went on for show. a long time. There was nothing wrong with her delivery of it, but the crowd started to audibly get bored. Yeah. And I felt bad for her. But she plowed on, like she didn't stumble over anything. So I was like, fair fair play, you've tried your best there. Yeah. But it was a hospital pass from the script. It was. I, I Sorry, lads. I know you guys are NXT pills. You're going to say it's great. I've been waiting for this promo because it's a completely deserved heel turn. And it had the smell of HBK oh, all yeah. over it. It was similar to... Who did the really generic heel promo when she turned heel? Was it JC Jane? Tiffy Strats had a bad one, didn't she? It's all like... I don't remember Tiff Strats, so... When yeah, she was probably re- it looked like she was reading a script down below. Uh, oh, no. Um, Cora Jade. Cora ah, Jade and so on. And yeah. it's all the same thing, isn't it? It's all like, it, you it. fans have made me do this. Yeah, her voice is the least heel voice I've ever heard. Got a lovely voice. She's so small and squeaky, it was like Alexa turning heel. <laughs> Not Bliss. Not the Bliss. Device. Yeah. I didn't know its surname. I knew that wouldn't work. <laughs> I've changed mine up at home. It's now called Ziggy. <laughs> if you have if you have the app <laughs> if you have the app, you get, there's got a few options on there. And at the bottom, for some reason, is Ziggy, and she's now an Australian lady. <laughs> So when you say when you say Ziggy, she's like, "Good eye, Ross, how you going?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Play a song." She's like, "Here's bloody you." Well, I shouldn't say bloody, but she's got she's got an Australian if it, twang. If it doesn't understand it, does it go now? Yeah, <laughs> she just refuses sometimes. <laughs> Give me a beer first. <laughs> You're flying along. <laughs> it's very. I'm comfy. upside down. It's just it's all the wait words like you know Alexa, Echo, Amazon, whatever. Then at the bottom, Ziggy. Are you hungry, Ziggy. Ross, for a Chinese meal? <laughs> <laughs> Democracy manifest. <laughs> I saw a video of him the other day getting interviewed, and yeah, yeah I've yeah, seen the one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's quite sad how it all turned out. Yeah, it doesn't really explain much. I, I got deep into the lore of, uh, of an Australian YouTuber the other night. Which one? Uh, G- Friendly Geordies, he's called. Friendly Geordies. Not Geordies with a J J O R. Oh, okay. He's um he's like a a YouTuber, but he's also like exposing corruption. He's a bit Coffeezilla esque, I suppose. Oh, okay. But it's all in the local Sydney community, like local politics. Oh. And he started exposing this politician for dodgy dealings and stuff. And then realized this guy had listed his own home as a, where well, he sometimes lives as an Airbnb. Yeah. So he filmed a video inside the Airbnb and he was like, What's this in the basement? Oh, it's an unauthorized casino down here. <laughs> it's just going round. <laughs> and then the politician, you end up with this huge legal battle with the politician. I watched this big recap video. That sounds really interesting. Yeah. And his latest video has been taken down because his house got firebombed. Whose uh, house? The politician or the, the YouTubers? Oh. And the, the politician has links to a construction firm owned by or with links to an alleged crime family in Sydney. It's it's mad. Oh, it goes no. so deep. Yeah. But the guy's really good. He's really smug. He's like, don't they try to firebomb my house? <laughs> like, it's just... Yeah. It's <laughs> oh, that's the tone they go with? Like, he's oh. proper like Saki and like a smug little get, but you're on his side. Like, yeah, he's brilliant. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's mad. It's a mad thing. Bloody hell. Mm-hmm. And all that was a hundred times more exciting than this. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not her fault. She sounds like she's reading from an awful script and delivering the lines as best as possible. But, you know, it's, it's what we say about NXT. There's always when it's a bit boring like this. And also, yeah... Uh, all the bloody some point that's out is NXT there's only so many tropes for the women to do and one of them's the mean girl smile giggle combo <laughs> when that happened and she's yeah so she's yeah. she's gone from oh this is gonna be really good when she turns because she's completely justified to oh she's just doing this now is she? I know alright cool I will say I don't think it's her fault though, like we say it's right. the writing but she did a good bit right at the end just to say something positive about it like after Tatum's being dragged away by the refs she like does a good like on the apron, like, come on then, knowing that you can't get to her. That was pretty mm. good. She's good at that. I do hope that Tatum avenges Lyra. You, oh, you're now on Tatum's side? Oh, I've been on Tatum's side for a few weeks now, Jack. Okay, fair enough. Fantastic acting. She's devoted to Lyra. Lyra is the one who's been sending mixed signals to Tatum, so I can't blame Tatum for being a bit weird. Mm. And it's good to see that she still lives in the gap, which appears, by the way, because I watched it closely, a flap pops up, and then she appears. Oh, I hate when that happens. So she's, <laughs> she must have like some sort of tunnel system. Yeah, the crowd had no idea she was there. They were genuinely surprised. Tunnel system underneath the shed. So oh. we need to add this to the map. Where does the tunnel system go? Yeah, it's like Great Escape. 
Avatar. No. Nah. Avatar. Fantastic Mr. Fox. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> how oh, is bless that, you. How is that happening? I don't know. <laughs> wow. Those, those, are, those are two films you get mixed up. Blue and orange. Similar colours, I guess. Bless Finding you. Nemo was a struggle for me. <laughs> Can't see him. <laughs> oh, <God>. oh, man. <laughs> oh. Tony D and the family are eating at the Italian restaurant. Uh, they talk about Tony's win over Carmelo Hayes last week and bringing that and bringing Trick Williams out to surprise Melo after the match. Surprise! What, what pointless exposition that was! And yeah, that, oh yeah, we rang him up. That's hard in getting... NXT to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, Trick, Trick's working with the mob. Why well, he just got one off? Mm. I think. Oh, uh, on the floor. I think he's affiliated like Brett and the NWO. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Ilya Dragunov interrupts and sits at the table. Oh. The other family members leave while Ilya congratulates Tony on his success so far. But he won't be winning the title at Stand and Deliver. Stax and Luca drag Ilya outside and lock him in the boot of their car. With ease. They, when they drive off. That's the NXT champion. He should have been firing off torpedo Moscows everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I put, even when surrounded by four people doing bada bing accents, well, the best of Frank Sinatra is bumping out the background. <laughs> Ilya is still the most over the top thing on every scene he's in. <laughs> oh, hello, Tony. <laughs> hey, I think we should keep it a bit, you know, sedated in these uh, scenes uh, right here. Hello, Tony! <laughs> I like your cafe. He's a bit Danhausen esque. Yeah. He? I think he's toned it down recently. <laughs> yeah. It was chilling later on. I'll oh. tell you what, though, the big reveal at the start of the segment, because the e the legal eagle, sorry, Luca, Luca Crisofino. Oh, yeah, Mr. Mouse. They talk about the thing where Luca's done the thing and the other thing. So what's the other thing? Because obviously the thing was last week was Trick, <laughs> uh, but another thing has been done. If this Ooh. was if this was a different brand, I would think we would find out what the thing was. <laughs> However, <laughs> because it's Sean, <laughs> a very good point. I just don't think. Yeah, I did like the line where he's like, "No matter what this is, uh, Tony's like, no matter what you do, it stand and deliver. The title stays with me." Whatever he's saying. I oh, know that's what um, Ilya said in a very different voice mm. than that one there. But then Tony's retort of, "No matter what happens in here, the Don still likes you." Then he gets abducted and put in a car boot. Just teach him a lesson. <laughs> really good. And it's the least surprising thing. I'm like, what, what did you think was going to happen? I thought we were going to eat rigatoni together. Yeah. No, yeah. he's not invite, invited. That's the big mistake he made. Yeah, yeah he wasn't invited. Yeah, totally. And then the manager of the restaurant comes out with his loud some guy. shirt, like pink. like, <laughs> And he goes like, uh, it was just a weird end of the scene. He's like, is everything all right? And Tony goes, yes. I thought it was real. All oh, right, yeah. That's yeah, a real yeah, restaurant. You know, the camera was on. Downtown yeah. Florida. He goes, it could be much longer. I've got to mop up. <laughs> Lex, Lexus King beats Robert Stone in the Stone. Come on, Matthew, take take this show seriously. Beats Robert Stone in their grudge match. Lexus tries to continue the attack after the match, but Cum runs out to save Stone and carry him to the back. He's a baby. Did you hear that? Yeah, I didn't actually. But yeah, this he's... crowd are getting too disruptive. When Mister Stone's being carried out by Cum, the crowd start chanting, "He's a baby. He's a baby." Like yeah. Slade. Adam and Zong, yeah. NXT are in there. Ironic Brit Rest era of the crowd thinking they're more Sick important of this. than the, yeah. <laughs> this uh, was the first match of the night where I wanted to bitch slap Booker T. Oh, bitch! Oh, slap. go on, I know why. Because the story is that Mister Stone is fighting for his kids because Lexus King said bad things about his kids. That's the story. And he's it's American. Not, it, forget, yeah, so and you mentioned hard. a family member when you're American, you get really annoyed by that oh. for some reason. That's the story. Vic is shouting this. So a Booker T. He's giving him over everything, and, isn't he? Over as a father, over again. as a father. And then Booker's yeah. going on the Mr. Stone shouldn't be on this show. He's not a wrestler. Yeah. What's he? So he has no business doing it. He deserves everything he's getting. Now, get the Booker's a slightly heel commentator, but he's not all the way, is he? But just go with the story. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't <laughs> say the opposite of the story. There's a heelish yeah. way to go without completely just ignoring the story we're trying to tell Booker T. Yeah, you yeah. could say, like, yeah, I get he's defending his kids' honor, but it's a stupid move. Yeah, yeah. he says, what? what He's doing this. He's a nice guy. He says, I know Mr. Stone's a nice guy, but so is my neighbor. That doesn't mean I want to see him wrestle. <laughs> what? <laughs> nah. It's his own you fault for getting in the ring with a trained athlete you know what? like I've Lexus King. I've changed my mind. Booker takes things in directions you'd never <laughs> see coming. I mean, he does have a point, but shut up. <laughs> Jim, on pay-per-views when he used to say, like, his sources had told him this and that, and you could just hear the creative team going, don't say anything that's going to contradict. I know you want us to say this, but I'm going to think of the complete opposite. Yeah. And that really helped the story we're telling. I love Booker. <laughs> Booker's commentary really stood out because the crowd did not give a solitary 
SH1T about this. They match. did not. No, um, like have they. What's up with this? I don't know. But they've never been. There's never. Well, there were plants for a little bit, weren't they? But now they haven't been plants for a while. Yeah. The plants are now growing. They've rebelled. It's like ivy. Yeah. Inside of a building taking over. That is what happens. Yeah. Uh, getting in the cracks and whatnot. Uh, Combs' oh. appearance was weird as well because he runs down the ring and looks like he's going to get in there to attack Lexus King and then stops himself. But he's scared of him. <laughs> yeah, he stops himself. This is Terry Spunk we're talking this about. He's more Terry. focused on helping his friend. Okay. Oh! But if you ask Booker T, it's because look at him, he's scared. I yeah. wonder if, like, Von Orr... Except Lexus King. I wonder if Von Orstoner are ever going to win a feud. They never win. Even when they do sneak attacks. Even when Couldn't they do beat no sneak attacks. Couldn't beat Lexus King. Von Wagner couldn't beat Noam. Yeah. To be uh, fair, Noam's now in the title picture, so that doesn't look too bad. Yeah, I'm going to knock you out, mate. Hey. Aye, he sucks. Rancid Kelly Clancid interviews Oberfemi backstage. He says he's going to slaughter Brooks. Jensen, later tonight. Dijak interrupts and tells Oma to find him once he's done playing around. Once well, he's done playing with kids. Good lines from Ober here. An ignorant boy tried to convince himself he's ready for a challenge. Very eloquent. Mm. That Again, that feels like a HBK written thing. But Oberfemi's got great diction, so it's okay. The big difference between him and what's his name from you Ober. Laughing at the Why are you laughing at that? I'm, I'm being serious when I say that. I'm sorry if it's sure. not like I'm taking the piss. Goodness me. <laughs> uh, it was good. Hey. So it wasn't as good as um, Ricky Stanicki. <laughs> Put your microphone down. He's, got, he's picked up the mic. Hang on. Just having a chat, bro. Hello. No. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's Joe so happy he forgot what he was going to say. I don't know. I wasn't going to say anything. You picked up the mic. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah. I picked up the <laughs> mic. And then... Hello. Ooh. Sorry. Carry on. So, well, I want to know what he really thought of that. Anyway. What do you think of the line, Joel? He can't walk in my jungle. He'll be slaughtered by Oberfemi about BJ. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. That's poetry. He knows it. It's poetry. Ober is good. It's a shame that Dijak walked on the scene, though, because that's already foreshadowed the next thing before it's even happened. Dijak. <laughs> Dijak, like, you gave me real vibes of, like... I I thought this was just a thing in films, but it actually happened to me once. I was outside Rise with a girl I was seeing at the time. And a man oh, with and, a knife. And a man, <laughs> and a man walked past and tried to, like, hit on her and convince her to go, out with, go with him instead of me. And I was like, is this really happening? This seems like a film. When was this? Or 2016, 2017. Oh, right, yeah. And um, he was saying stuff like, oh, you need like a man. Like he was like an older guy, like skinhead, big hench guy. And I was like, but he was kind of posh. He reminded me of like an evil Simon Miller. <laughs> and I was like, what's he doing? And she was really obviously like creeped out by it. And I was as well. I thought this only happens in films. Die Jack here saying like, you need a real man. I was like, oh, I'm getting creepy, weird vibes yeah. like that. I had, that didn't happen with a lass I was with. It was my mates. Uh, girlfriend, but I happened to be like, oh, let's go to the bar together. Mm. And it was really packed around this, and it was just like way older dude, even older than me. And it was just like, just not even subtly like, uh, like that. And he was like, and he was there to show his will. <laughs> sorry, Ross. Sorry. Method acting. It was, uh, sorry, you yeeted. But um, to show his wealth and what he had, I guess, other than, you know, didn't have youth on his side. So he holds up his things and just like these, these rings. Uh, but I'm there like, yeah, no, I'm putting my arm around her. And I was like, no. You're trying to steal her as well. Well, no, I'm just showing, like, because obviously uh, her lad wasn't there, so I'm like, you're trying to with her. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. nah, like, hey, say, Chico. Say, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> you better watch your step there, pal. Say, you better, <laughs> watch out, I'll shank you, you know. Ah, ha, ha, how the, how the turns yeah. table, <laughs> sir. <laughs> but, but he did this, and I went, nah, you know, and she was yeah. alright, obviously, you know, yeah, knows yeah, what's right, happening, yeah. but like, this guy was just, cause, and it was very nice, but he was just there like, no, look. Like, hope, he couldn't get over the fact. I'm like, what, you think? You'd hope I'm he... Look, what do you, what do you want me to do? Like, you, you'd hope he was drunk, like, because that's so crazy. I couldn't tell. It's one of these images that stick in my head. It's this guy, like, look, look at my rings. And he couldn't get over the fact. We, we, he, he, she was walking away with me, and I had my arms, and I'm looking, I'm going, no. And he's just still doing it. <laughs> he had one plan, and if that failed, he had nothing else. We just kept on going for it. Like, look at my... He yeah, was, he looked like Thanos. He was like, hoping look, was, look, I was look at this. He hoping she's gone. <laughs> oh, anyway. Anyway. Dijak's weird. Yeah, but people, yeah, Dijak. <laughs> so apparently, yeah, but like... This yeah. stuff does happen. So what happened then? Did, did he just go away or did he just walk off? We like, got in our, our Uber arrived and uh, we oh, sped off away from him. He, was he wasn't like chasing after the taxi. Going, <laughs> you can change your mind. He was clinging on the roof. Glad that glad yeah. that was over. And the you put a good... Above. He's there. You put a good feeling on my tummy tum or whatever. Huh? Simon Miller says that. Oh, right. The guy wasn't like... Obviously, I really like Simon. This guy was like the ev his evil twin. Wouldn't it be funny if Simon was like that? Because no one would believe it. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. He's got such a good rep. What if it was him? It wasn't. He wasn't as big as Simon. 
Anyway. <laughs> but that's the tax driver's way he's doing that. <laughs> Why won't you go out with me? <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely going to get her down. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so what are we talking about? Lexus King. Oh. No, I've done that. Uh, Rich Holland is working out in the empty performance centre gym when he gets a FaceTime call from his wife and daughter. They wish him good luck tonight and tells him to be careful. Shut up. Don't no, this was cute. <laughs> good luck, Daddy. That's the best part about his gimmick so far: the fact that he has a, a real, phone. a real wife and a real <laughs> daughter a and a real phone <laughs> that can take real FaceTime Soon calls. <laughs> I bet it can take pictures as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, because that's sort of like, oh, we're, see, we're seeing him. We know his purpose. Yeah. The rest of it's complete bollocks, though. I'm, I hate it. It's yeah. terrible. Um, there we go. Oh, yeah. What was his ringtone? Oh, just the standard thing, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> just after we were speaking about ka the other week. <laughs> it's just, that's living all right. Or something like that. Do you know what the Okada's little sound effect is at the start of his theme? What, the money being dropped? Yeah. Well, give us an impression. Could you do one or not? Or money being dropped. Um, Cha-ching. Oh, wasn't too far away. It does sound like the ka in... Because Jack ka-ching. went for uh, ka-ching. No, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> it was not sad. <laughs> ka-ching. We ended up talking about the CBBC program, classic uh, ka-ching. Which one's that? Taj is... I watched a bit of it the other day, just to refresh me. <laughs> Taj is the main character. He's like a... Rude boy. Rude boy. He's a normal teenage lad going to school and that. Problems with girls and everything. Oh, classic. Hanging out with his mates. But... By night, he is a secret entrepreneur. <laughs> and he's the guy behind the anonymous website, Rude Boy. And he sells like ringtones and stuff. This is a couple of years after your CBBC vintage would have been. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, what yeah. year was this? Like, oh, 102, uh, I reckon, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, cool. And uh, it was called Kaching. It's all about them, men. Karisha, Karisha, Karisha. Yeah, Karisha, Karisha. One of his mates fancied she was the hot girl. The hot girl, <laughs> Karisha. And he'd go, <laughs> all right, Karisha. They're so cockney. <laughs> like, so awesome. uh, yeah, good. Okay. I am oh, the nice. scene I watched was Karisha and uh, Taj's sister. She's like a pal, mm. Missy, and they're hanging out in the the like the, the the cafe where they work. And there's the manager Carlton who only speaks to them via the. You never see him. Oh yes, what a he's like the Wizard of Oz. Isn't he? he speaks to them via the intercom. <laughs> he's like, oh. get back to work, you two. And she's like, ah, oh. it's classic. It's very good. Yeah. So yeah, Okada's uh, <laughs> sound effect at the start of his theme. <laughs> Ka-ching. Yeah, because that's what they would do when he would make some bucks. Yeah. Ah, little him and his pals would all go. Ka-ching. Tick tock. Don't, Don't stop. stop. Ka-ching. It's the sound of the rude boys. Uh, BJ versus Over Femi Matthew. Ooh, the podcast long enough. <laughs> <laughs> JB, yeah. JB comes to ringside to support BJ in his title shot against OF. He can only watch as OF destroys BJ to retain the NA title. A Really destroyed him, yeah. He did. It was fantastic. Uh, it was good. I put, the crowd did not give two dams about this. I know. Was this a long TV taping, or as BJ brought Ober down? I think they were just all a bit too drunk by this point. They're rowdy. They're such a rowdy group of plants. I reckon they were taken aback by BJ's Ole Anderson t-shirt, Matthew. Yes. I thought it was Harley Race, and then it zoomed in. It was like, Ole Anderson. Nice tribute, yeah. yeah. I wonder where you get that from. OleAnderson.com. Ka-ching. <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. Oli. Yeah. Rip Oli would never have seen that in a few years ago. I mm. like the, uh, the the method that well, it was just acting from B uh, from JB. Sorry, backstage. He was like, "Oh no, what have I done?" Because mm. he was the one who told BJ to get his bollocks out, which has led him to this gone too far. Ass whooping. Yeah. JB's a brilliant actor. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah, we all need a friend like him to tell us to do stuff we are completely <laughs> incapable of doing. You can jump off that bridge. He ain't that big. Get him. Because <laughs> uh, Ober, I thought Ober, it really shone through what a great presence he has in the ring. Because yeah, this would have been boring with the wrong big boy in there. But with his big boy Kavorga, it was entertaining throughout, I thought. Yeah, I agree completely. Really good. Uh, the Ober. Yeah. It went on a bit long, maybe, if it, you're looking yeah, for it. Yeah, I think it dragged, to be honest. Got with a bit ward Louis towards the end in terms Ooh. of loads of power bombs and that. But sometimes that works for Wardo, sometimes it works for Ober. Because if it was just a pure squash and there was like 17 power bombs and J, uh, BJ died and JB had to come down and pick up the pieces good and proper, what have I done to my friend, he would say. Yeah. That would be mm. a lot more effective, I think. I agree. Look at this a balanced analysis about NXT. Mm. Wow. And no one's going to hear or care nah. about it. Tony D and the family bring Dragon off to the Two Dimes Bridge. That's what they call it. Mm. Tony says he didn't mean to disrespect Ilya, but he wanted him to realize who he's dealing with. He can end everything at the snap of his fingers, like Thanos. Dragonoff isn't intimidated. Before Tony leaves, Ilya tells him that he always finds a way to win. Mm. Well, he said, I always find a way, because Tony dropped him off and was like, ha, you got to walk back now. 
They've been driving for 15 minutes. I've got maps. I know, yeah. He's got, he's got his phone. It's not too far away. It's probably like well, you can't use Google Maps because then the FBI knows where you where you are and what you're doing. So. <laughs> Does Ilya not want No, them? Ilya, man. Not Tony. Yeah, Ilya's, oh, Ilya's the one who gets left. Yeah, gets left on the bridge and then Tony drives off. But it's not that secluded. It's in a park, I think. Yeah, you can, it's not. It's <laughs> honestly, yeah, it's left of the NXT beach, yeah, but yeah. right at the car park. It's right. probably about a 35 to 40 minute walk home or uh -huh. back to the performance center for Ilya. So it's yeah. not that bad. If there's any scooters about. Even quicker. Yeah. That's right, huh? He'd probably just run the entire way like the baby from Incredibles. Mm. Oh, no, like the, the middle child. The middle, what's he called? Jack Jack. Dash. 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 Jack Jack's the baby. Oh, yeah, yeah. the baby's got the... Back. The baby can... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No, it was good. Uh, we learned that uh, Tony's <laughs> walked onto that bridge with many men, but he's walked off alone so many times, but Ely is not going to get killed tonight. No. So who else has perished? Who else has left NXT? If you call it Bachelor Bridge, then, if that's what happened. I don't, I don't think they're all wrestlers. I think they're from Tony's mob history. Yeah. yeah. They've just they've put out there, just anyone who has left NXT has probably been killed. Yeah, true. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I like this thing about, like, Ilya's like, obviously, you're very successful at everything you do. And it's like, because he's got all these restaurants and other businesses, and he's never said what it is. He's just got money. Yeah. He's in waste management, yeah. remember? Because they got that lad who was in that one documentary. That oh, yes, the ice hockey thing. That's oh, right. I forgot um, about that. Yeah. Um... I still think Ilya's going to win. Yeah, yeah of course. Okay. As much as I'd love NXT champion Tony D just then, for the skits. The legal eagle. What's this other thing he's done? Stipulation. Yeah. Maybe. Ah. Buried alive, like living Naya. Pasta eating yeah. competition <laughs> for the NXT co uh, championship. <laughs> oh, Ilya destroy that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, we've really yeah, misjudged yeah. this situation. He yeah. looks like he hates carbs, but he <laughs> has yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's like, yeah, but here's the thing. Now, now we wrestle. He's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ariana Grace. He can't get his shoulders down because he's so bloated. <laughs> he's like, uh, he's like, he just keeps on rubbing his belly till he taps out. Like oh, when, I'm going to be sick. Like when Bender becomes a human in Futurama. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> what a scene. With the roll up. No, he's rolling here. He's literally rolling him up. <laughs> We've all been there after an Italian. Absolutely. Ariana Grace low blows Gigi Dolan during the singles match. And what a low blow it is. Oh, hi. You can see why now Tony Storm, when she was speaking a promo to someone, wanted to, and I quote, sock them right in the box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who should say that to you? Um, someone. <laughs> Can't remember. I will sock you right in the box. Do we, I think Ariana's was accidental. Yeah, so Gigi does it back, but the referee catches her and awards Grace the win via DQ. As per the stipulation of the match, <laughs> Gigi has to let Grace teach her how to be a real lady. Can't wait. Obviously, it's going to be better than what Gigi's been doing. But the fact yes. that Gigi <laughs> got herself in this pickle, mm. she's just the worst written character on TV. Yeah. Maybe apart from Ridge Holland, that's yeah. maybe the only one who's written a little bit worse. She's we'll not allowed to mention her house ever again. We'll <laughs> see where it goes. You know? Oh, now it's going to be mm. good. Yeah, yeah. Do you like Ariana's comedy face when she got low blow? I was going to say, I wasn't thinking anything about the smash. Then Grace got hit low and pulled a Mr. Bean face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 10 out of 10, best thing on the show. Yeah. It was. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, page 73 of the wrestling handbook comedy face. <laughs> Ariana Grass. Grass. Mm. <laughs> She's been right on that part. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But I, it was. Um, Gigi did confirm on Twitter that it does hurt. I can get, imagine it does. Thwacked. Taz, Taz used to say that. Does that hurt a lady? <laughs> he used to say that all the time when, like, whenever it would happen. And you can tell he's doing it just to crack people. They said up, it on. Uh, it happened on. Uh, was it in the Tony Storm match? It happened on AEW recently. Huh. A woman got low blowed, and I th maybe it was Taz. Someone went. Does that even work? Yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's a Taz. <laughs> Taz is the woman getting low blowed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's imagine Taz in a dress. Oh dear. Well, I'll leave you with that thought. Cheers. Uh, <laughs> Carmen Petrovic <laughs> is hanging out with Sol Rooker backstage. They talk about how mean Blair Davenport is Losing. when Lola Vice arrives to insult Carmen for being weak. They almost fight, but Sol calms him down. Carmen challenges Lola to a match next week and they'll accept, saying Carmen's skills are no match. Basura. That means garbage. I googled it. Ah, mm. thank you. Uh, Vice leaves and Brittany Reese cartwheels into frame. Oh. She congratulates Sol <laughs> for the views of the situation hey, well and runs on positivity. And in the highlight of this, I'm like, oh, not her again. Edison Offay and Malik Blade arrive to literally carry her away yeah. mid speech. I thought that was nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everything else was garbage. <laughs> I no, I, I really enjoyed uh, Lola Vice's <laughs> verbiage in this, where she's like, I am a master. Your skills are no match. Mm. Obviously, fighters do talk like this in certain films. They're in Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, bad kung fu ones from the <laughs> 80s. If you strike me down, I'll become even more powerful. I yeah. I, I don't think it made common and Sol look good. They look like nerd and nerds and losers and nerds. 
Yeah. Oh, bless you, me. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> I know, Carmen took karate girl as an offensive term to say to her. I gave up halfway through uh, that sentence. Well, offensive. <laughs> Well, she's got Chris, so many. Ross will be watching Christopher Walken films. <laughs> You've got, she's got so many elements to a really well established character that, yeah. She's got that sword or stick that she sword, takes. Uh, yeah, it's a sword, isn't it? She's yeah. got a sword. Hmm. And after this, Vic hypes up the Reese YouTube numbers and says his favourite clip of all time is Booker being beaten up by Austin in the supermarket. Booker threatens to kill Vic. <laughs> <laughs> I missed this, did he? That's unreal. Yeah, it was just so great, you and Austin. That's my favorite moment. Yeah, you shut up. <laughs> you think what Austin did was bad to me? I won't wait till I get my hands on you. Wow, that's brilliant. Awesome. Love you, Booker. That's Booker really hasn't watched any of the shows he's been <laughs> off. Doesn't care. Knows nothing's going to happen to him. You can kill Vic. <laughs> Anyway, Very Vic good. might like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Vic's like, oh, please kill us. <laughs> we learn that Carly Jordan has been attacked backstage. <sighs> Thea Hale is forced to wrestle Kana James and Izzy Dame on her own. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. But hold on. Saddle up, partners. Saddle up, saddle up. Because Get on that horse. Ballad Headley <coughs> arrives at the last second to be Thea's replacement partner. JC Jane and Jas Jasmine Nix arrive to watch at ringside where JC pulls Fallon out the way of a kick from Izzy. However... It just results in Thea taking the move instead, and she's been shortly afterward. So after the match, Thea cuts a tearful promo on JC, saying she's betrayed her friendship. She realizes that she doesn't want to be anything like JC anymore, and the old Thea Hale is back. Bitch. And she emphasizes her point by running around in a circle. She <laughs> <laughs> no, she did. This you think, you think effing show. show. You think she, have you seen it? I saw this yeah, bit. It looks, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It looks, it looks like she's going to like clothesline her or something, but she just goes... <laughs> <laughs> and she runs around in she, it's so circular that the heels have to bail they're like no not the circle this was the moment I became a fan and understood Thea Hill what <laughs> this promo here and the bitch followed by <laughs> <laughs> running in circles it's prime NXT <laughs> it's the it's the story of good versus bad the the good has prevailed so well the good the good lost the match but she got her away from the evil bad ladies Jasmine Nixon there JC Jane. Mm. I thought JC Jane was a highlight pulling that. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jane. she was like, mm. she was like, you've been so mean to me, and I don't know what I did. And JC's like, yeah, <laughs> she did face it. Yeah, I did. I, yeah. Don't, I don't care. Yeah, sorry. So you got Thatcher, and you got Dakota Kai, <laughs> and then JC Jane. Yeah, yeah she, she's she's in my fake five. <laughs> Who did you compare to the fabulous Moolah last week? Oh god. Oh god, I can't remember now. Oof. Maybe it was JC Jane. Yeah, because she walked the off. Calendars. Didn't she? Yeah, the calendars. Yeah. I, 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 did, a calendar. I did no, retract no. that statement. Yeah, you Thank did. you. Well, I got brought up again. <laughs> we tried to retract it again. Sorry, yeah, sorry about that. Ah, I meant it. Um, <laughs> but Booker, this is the second match I would like to have bitch slapped him because oh. he was just ignoring the story. Just obviously, Thea Hale's tag team partner has been taken out like in the backstage area. How can she go alone? She can't possibly do it. Why can't she go alone? It's called a handicap match. This is a wrestling type. This is a wrestling match that we have in wrestling. Such just yeah. shut up, bugger. It was a bit, Such a dare. bit Mark Lawrenson, wasn't it? it was, like, yeah. like he's just passed it. And, oh, I can't be wrong. He even had an issue with Fallon. Like Vic brings up friendship, and Booker's like, "Friendship? <laughs> shut up! All my friends are dead." <laughs> he's like, "This is a business." Oh, <laughs> God. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you contribute at this point, Booker? <laughs> other than us laughing at you? <laughs> Uh, I thought the Fallon looked like a proper main eventer in there. Yeah, yeah, she's she's a star. She was whapping out all the manoeuvres and whatnot. Her, I'm hair, a, no, looks no. out. her hair looked lovely this week she as well. She looks great. She, she's full of baby face fire and farm energy. I'm a big fan. And whiskey on the uh, backs of horses. That's yeah. how they do it. Yeah, yeah. She's got the best. She's got the best team in NXT, and she's made for made for the big time. Yeah. For that moment though. The real Thea Hale. The old Thea Hale, sorry, is back, bitch. Give me the old Whee! Thea Hale. And then Fantastic. Ran, ran. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, what did she do? Oh, yeah, she ran around here. Yeah. Who beat up Kalani Jordan? I don't want to just assume that they're going to do the bait and bait and it'll just be JC Jane, but we'll find out, I guess. Or, we'll, or we might never. <laughs> That's the beauty of NXT. <laughs> it was probably Booker T. <laughs> <laughs> Friendship. <laughs> I Damn love it. that. It's the business. Houston hangover <laughs> off a crane. <laughs> gonna pay your dues. I've been here for years. <laughs> Kylie's got a slingshot. From the announcer's <laughs> table. Shocky ducky. He's so boring. He's just throwing three pointers <laughs> in the back. <laughs> Lobbing them over the fence. Seeing who he is. Booker redeemed himself in the main segment for me, actually. Oh, good. Around. Well, we'll get that in a yeah. second. 
Uh, a proud Riley Osborne is watching in the locker room. Oh, my pocket rocket's oh, back. Oh, God. His, <laughs> he, the, the end of I the Thea Hill that. segment's happening. He's like, oh, yeah, nice one, Thea. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it was oh. not. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, nice one for you. Oh, that's oh, fantastic. Brilliant. <laughs> and in KV, he's in the room on his own. He's there going, <laughs> oh. oh, great. Oh, <laughs> nice one for you. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, he's got a face you'd never get sick of hitting. <laughs> oh, no, he's a handsome boy. He's Not a... if he talks like this. <laughs> he's got a tattoo of like a gothy, yeah. evil looking. He's got a know. skull. Right, well, I wouldn't hit that. I'd never... <laughs> he's got the goth s- tattoo can stay. The skull tattoo is completely at odds with it. It is, yeah. As we know. People with tattoos are evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, but it's... People with tattoos sort like Baron Corbin. I know what Ross means because it's the style of the... T- it's proper like death, like skull. You and can imagine like, Rhea Ripley having this tattoo uh-huh. and he's got it on his arm while going, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. <laughs> that tattoo's like, not to this. You can stay, but I'm leaving. It takes off. Uh. He's interrupted by the No Quarter Catch crew. Who oh, say, no, these guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Who <laughs> Thea reached her ceiling when she was training with them. I forgot about that. I was like, oh, continuity. Yeah. Riley reminds the lads that William Regal said, what like William said last week, respect the Heritage Cup. Johnny Dempsey says Riley and his fancy moves belong nowhere near the cup. Nathan Fraser and Axiom are ready to save the day because the segment can't get any better. Hi, guys. Nathan Fraser here and <laughs> Christ. Fellow, fellow Flippy Gun. <laughs> also, fellow Flippy Gun. Fellow Flippy Gun. I knew he could proper, <laughs> proper tarrant. <laughs> he could take care fellow of Fellow Flippy Gun. Fraser is a fellow Flippy Guy. He's pretty sure Riley could beat any of the crew. Axiom wonders whatever happened to the inaugural cup holder. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, hum. <laughs> it's a kid, Tim. Drew Gulak says the crew will be walk out of standing the level of both the Heritage Cup and the tag team titles. What do you call like a collection? Like, you know, like there's like a murder of crows or whatever. This was like a gathering of arseholes. <laughs> <laughs> a diddler of arseholes. <laughs> My God. It was a proper podcast of arseholes. A po- yes, there you go. A podcast of arseholes. Uh, <laughs> I did like how Riley oh. clapped back saying, you don't, you don't even qualify as be English because you were born in bread in Atlanta. Yeah. yeah I'd say that one, mm. Charlie Dempsey. Yeah, you're racist. What? No. Is he? No, oh, he didn't sorry. say that. <laughs> he just said that the Heritage Cup should be by the British for right the now. British. I'm just laughing. I'm just saying stuff. I apologize for them. Um... <laughs> Nothing against any of these guys personally, but the character, the character, the every oh. I dear. like Charlie because you can see what Charlie's just an old-fashioned British wrestler. Yeah, That's him, Charlie. One-line gimmick. <laughs> but then when Nathan and Riley and just oh. Nathan and Riley, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's all you need really to push <laughs> over the edge. Grizzled bloke trying to be hard, and there's all these lads running going, oh, whoa, flippy, whoa. oh my god, yeah, <laughs> bag em. I love NXT man. Well, as a former champion and a fellow flippy guy, oh, yeah. get in the he's bin. cool. Ugh, he's, like, the he's like self-aware, but he's not. Mm. <laughs> well, buff my butt. Is he not fuming? <laughs> Who? Tears, Riley. Tears is lady. No, Nathan. Nathan, yeah. Oh. oh. It's not Cafabe yet, though, is it? No, it's true. Not Cafabe. No, because it's even by NXT standards, that's literally unbelievable. <laughs> those promo, that that's it. That's like the WrestleMania X7 of NXT. Imagine if those two talk together. Promo. Wow. Oh, God. Wow. They'd just be that's like. a sign of the end times. Five minutes of them just talking over each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's like us. <laughs> Uh, and what could possibly follow that? The Good Brothers could have promo their tournament opponents. Time Hank to get no, none of these nerds. God. Now it's time for the real wrestlers to be on a center stage. This was such oh. a good promo. Yeah. Gallo says he and Anderson were bother were brothering. Oh, big pun. Well, they were bothering me. Brothering <laughs> on every continent before the other two had even bought their first pair of bazoots. Oh yeah, Kazani. Right, okay. Yeah. Hank and Tank are oh, oh, watching oh, on a monitor Hank elsewhere. They're building, brother, and they fancy themselves to cause an upset. The wolf dogs interrupt, but they respect Hank and Tank because they're all cool football dudes. Yeah. The rookies get hyped up for their match next week, and then they bugger off. That was it. This was amazing. The segment <sighs> started on a fantastic note because the Good Brothers just like, ah, we have Hank and Tank, the energetic big boys. <laughs> it is true. That's what they are. Right. And then we get, the where, see, we get to the bit where we get the bit where Tizank is calling himself a cup of coffee. For, I can't remember why. And, <laughs> and but then, <laughs> then Hank. You hear what Hank says after that? No. So they're going like, well, I prefer... They're talking about something to do with coffee gets brought in somehow. Tank says that about himself. 
And then Hank goes, I prefer my coffee. Black! <laughs> I swear on me, I had to rewind it. I was like, what? Is that what he said, right? (laughs) This was like the Gauntlet match from Raw. I'm going to find it. Just prove that I've not gone. Carry on. Please do carry on. I'm like coffee. I'm black. (laughs) To be fair. It was... Despite what Jax just said, there was a good promo from Hank and Tank oh, where they're like, "We like, like to despite." Go- I mean, that's evidence that it was. <laughs> that's amazing pro- we like yeah, to go th- improved it. We like to go three yards at a time. Whenever that, I guess that's a football yeah, reference. Yeah, yeah. Um, three blue- yards. Well, they just. Persistent. Pers- per- 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 picture bit, oh, yeah. okay. Uh, they like to go blue collar, smash mouth style wrestling. They're just having a good time. Tank then has like convulsions. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the ass lad off uh, AEW. Ass lad. The ass lad. <laughs> his name should just be that. Not Boulder. The other lad. I forgot yeah. his name completely. Sorry. Ass, ass eating Jimmy. <laughs> oh, I can't find it, man. Um, but yes, it looks like they're ready for the qualification match with the chance to win a match to take on the Wolf Dogs and stand and deliver. What well, said that sentence well? What's Hank? <laughs> yeah, you are technically correct. But God. What's Hank's surname, man? I can't. I'm not going to find it. Ledger, isn't it? Yes, it is Ledger. Cowabunga! Just like Heath. Uh, skateboarding. Was it Hank Ledger Knight. and Hank Walker? Maybe. He, he, what do you mean skateboarding? In the, the Dark Knight. There's a picture from skateboarding while dressed up in the Joker get Oh, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Cowabunga. How do I know that and you don't know that? Is that a real photo? Yeah. I thought it was yeah, edited. It's, it's kick flipping over Batman. There I thought that go. was a joke photo. Is that sorry, Photoshop? No, it's real. That's real. It's like behind that? the scenes. Uh, oh. That's a real photo? Yeah. Oh. I can't find it. <laughs> I'm so sad. You did such a good impression of it. I think we should leave it as it is. <laughs> yeah, <that was> good. <laughs> anyway. Sean Spears. To- oh, God. <laughs> Sean Spears dogs trash to Ridge Holland during their match, saying he's disappointed his family. An enraged Ridge, <laughs> enraged Ridge, puts Spears through the announce table, tries to use a chair back in the ring. The referee takes it from him and inexplicably puts it in the corner rather than taking it out of the <laughs> ring. So Spears hits the C4 through the chair for the win. Well, he's right. I know why he dropped the chair and I'm going to defend him. Not just because I know him in real life and he's a nice man, this referee. <laughs> it's um, Chris. But they call him like Tig American y or something like They call him a really American name. It's Chip Chipper, son. But his real name Chip is he's Chris. I don't want to just give his shoot name out. He's um, yeah, Doxum. You know him. He's American. He's with one of the Blossom twins. Chrissy McCrissy face is his real name. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, sure. He used to do WCPW sometimes. Oh okay. He has blonde hair. Yeah. All right. So guess who? It is, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. is he tall? Did he once screw Bret Hart in Montreal? <laughs> <laughs> Did he tell us he sell T-shirts? Oh, that was car. Um, but he, he gets the chair off him, right? Good refereeing. Yeah. Then a roll-up happens. So yeah. he puts the chair down to administer the count. You know? He's right by the ropes. No. How oh, fair enough. It's slapdash officiating back and see why he got caught up in the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was two good bits to this for me. Just two. First was the character work from Ridge right at the start of the match. Because he's sort of like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh. <laughs> he's whispering to himself like Prime Heidenreich. That's what I've compared it to. Oh. <laughs> no, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> and the and o- you're going to steal, steal from the best. Yeah. And the other good bit was the C4 on the check. Because it was a gnarly move to watch Ridge take. Cause he's a I big boy. it had gone a bit wrong at first. I was yeah. Jesus. I was wondering if he knew the chair was there, but I assume he must have known. Mm. He must have known, Sean. He knows the truth um, because the rest of the match, I hated it. Ridge, like, not wanting to hurt Sean and then actually going to hurt Sean. And in doing so, by the way, committing gimmick infringement. You don't table people on NXT (laughs) unless your name is come. That is true. Or Terry Spunk when he's doing that because that's his hardcore persona. Yeah, you've been tabled. Imagine Rich yeah. saying that. Oh, you've been tabled. I took <laughs> it. I took, I took it to table. <laughs> it doesn't ring the same. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> um, it was all right. Though. It was. Uh, there was a hell of a chop block as well because Rich did a chop block, but to the front of the knee. Yeah. And then Sean went in the air like I don't even know. Yeah. Like, like a, a spear. Like a yeah. Uh, you throw them. Uh, one uh, one thing. <laughs> That I can't quite wrap my head around is this facial expression that Spears has been doing since he came back. It's like like really vacant and wide eyed, but like pervy as well. <laughs> like, oh no, don't beat me up. <laughs> Please do. It's weird. No, uh, I'm with you. I've, I've looked at my notes. Oh my god, it's Sean Spears' music. The best of theme I've heard in ages, and it's yeah. for him. It's, it's like a, good. It's, it's, it's really good. Like a yeah. synth 80 sort of feeling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, wow, this is great. Who, 
Him? Him and BJ. Oh. BJ's got a good one as well. He's got like a synthy 80s number. No? It's obviously yeah. not as good as Journey, but it's up there for a, a, de- the name a, of them. Def, a deaf rebel theme. Mm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> See if I'm um, live. <laughs> so I'll put, wait a minute. So on NXT, there's two psychology mind games gimmicks. Him and Joe Gacy doing similar things. No, I'm, no, I'm, Gacy's not anymore. I, I'm dragging off a bit. He loves pain. That's just, that's just him. Yeah, but it's a bit similar again. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, there's three then. Gacy doesn't have a brain anymore. Hmm? Gacy doesn't, ha- doesn't have a brain anymore. He yeah, just, like, just, he just yeah. takes, just takes it. He's like, well, he's taking out like your butter. He's McFoley, yeah. <laughs> yeah. After that match, <laughs> again, after he was kept in the, the glass box for a week, it was indeed surgically removed mm. and then replaced with a ball of barbed wire. Yeah, that's the hardcore cutting of a brain, yeah. It's good. No, it's yeah, good. It's- <laughs> <laughs> NXT. This is what happens if you want to have too much NXT. I mean, we've not even got to the best bit yet. Oh, no, we haven't. Is it this bit? Trick Willie yes. arrives to cut a promo. He says Carmella Hayes' success inspired him to become a better wrestler himself. And he fully supported Bello until John Cena told Trick that his partner was hating on him. <gasps> that's that did happen. Like, that's like Matthew creating AW. It goes all the way back to yeah. John. Down yes. for a laugh, John Cena. Mm. That's, that's right. Get your dick out. That's why Trick <laughs> asked if Mello was the one who attacked him. And Hayes lied to his face. Trick says they're going to have a match at Stand and Deliver where he'll get his revenge. The metaphor interrupt, and Noam Dar says, We're all sick and tired of hearing Trick complain. That was horrible, I do apologize. Dar admits that they're here to steal the spotlight because nobody's hotter than Trick right now. Trick agrees, judging by the way Lash Legend is looking at him. Oh. Dar says that next week he's going to knock Trick out. Trick starts a brawl with Dar and Oro. Lash Legend tries to attack Trick as well, but he seduces her. And they have a kissy wissy. Uh, <laughs> the crowd lose their minds they, for this. Oh, the pop was insane. Yay. This was bigger than Macho Man and Elizabeth. Yeah, <laughs> and sexier. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Vic going, Booker, why are you sweating? Well, looks and so Booker, bad. this is where he redeems himself. He goes, it's <laughs> <laughs> so funny. It was, the, it was the best Shucky Ducky Quack Quack I've ever heard. He just said it so low and like oh. earthy. <laughs> that would suggest that Lash Legend is indeed on the Biscotti list. Biscotti. <laughs> Which is a thing now, Matthew. Yeah, he's got a list now. He's got a list of Biscottis. No, he's not on one. No, <laughs> They're a real couple. Sorry, no, no. Apparently, they no. might. Be, I think they're, I've heard they're a real couple. I apparently they are, and they've oh. brought their relationship to real. You can't fake that. That was hot. You're right. Was, ask, was... ask Seth and Becky. You can't. Okay. Well, no, because it goes against the Joey Tribbiani Chandler being rule, doesn't it? Because there was chemistry on yep. screen, which means they might not For be off the screen. Segment. Yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, it was. It was brilliant. He was like Zorro. He was fighting, he was like necking spot. on. Yeah, because <laughs> in the middle Not of like the that. fight, yeah, yeah. he's like, huh. and then they made it. They, they, I can imagine them backstage going like. Please, she has to start the kiss because you can't look like you've done like. Yeah, yeah that would be weird. But, I'm, I'm yeah. worried though, just because Trick Melly's, you know, this is the, the hip hop happening cat in town, and now he's got his girlfriend part of his storyline. It never ends well for a baby face, Ooh. does it? Ooh. Well, maybe Macho Man. Yeah. <laughs> but in the modern era, you look at Becky you. and Seth it's back like Rocky. Then. Yeah. Women weakened legs. Yeah. Heyman in the Attitude yeah. Era when Austin attacked Spike Dudley because Molly Holly got That's involved. Right. Women weaken brains. Yeah. Rollins when he tried to defend Becky's honor and then Lesnar cashed in on him. Yeah. Oh. And Baron Corbin. The end of days. When end of the, days. Yeah, 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 end of days. days. Oh, imagine if he gets an end of days on Lash Legend. She'd the, no sell it. Pop her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bonus. I mean, to be fair, if there's anyone who could pull it off, it's, it's those two because they have the right Kavorka between if, them. And, oh yeah, they're both funny and cool. And if they had a kid they'd become instant WrestleMania head main eventer. They're both so... Ju- well, instant. They're both so jacked and tall. Anyway. <laughs> I'm glad you've said that. Because I used to think when Braun Strowman and Raquel Rodriguez oh, yeah. were going out with each other, I always privately had the thought of, I'd love to see what their child turned out to be yeah. like. Yeah. Because they're both massive. Yeah. So well, <laughs> Montez and Bianca... Come out the thoroughbreds. Like, <laughs> Monte- Montez and Bianca... Take the kid to Croft. If Montez and Bianca had a kid, they'd just be a great wrestler. They'd just be amazing. Yeah. Seth and... How's Rue going to be? <laughs> Anyway, because it doesn't work. Monroe with anyway, something about like, <laughs> <laughs> rest of shack no, and it, pumping it on kids. It doesn't work because you have a, have a stallion like my father who was six foot five. And was a, he? You're six five. A little person like my mother. Well, she's not. She's like five foot six. Right. I'm five foot ten. My brother's six foot five. He got the. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? It's disgusting. See, that doesn't work always though. Just to make you feel better, like my parents are both, yeah, my height, but my brother's taller than me. Right. But no one else in the family is. So oh. we're just like, where's he got that from? The milkman. Oh. <laughs> 
Hey. It was hey. a fantastic... Oh, sorry, just a trick line about the Timberland boots. I had to mention that because it was the line of the night. Go on. Just when he's on about Mellow, you could put on your Timberland boots, get out a stepping stool. He mentioned something about hair, but I didn't understand what he said, so I didn't write it down. Okay. And your st- your little punk ass will still never be on my level. I was like, hey, oh. No, okay. oh. You can stand on all this. And, yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's a very small man. You stand on the yellow pages. Mm. That's what we used to do. Yeah, but Matthew, why won't you date yourself some more? That was a Christmas ad. I, mean, I remember that oh, Christmas thank you, ad. Yeah. Yeah. This, was, this was the, the best wrestling romance angle I've seen. Well, not that long ago. At Kuhan Nanj, and I was a big fan of that. Ruby, uh, Ruby, Ruby Soho. Hey, still yeah. happening, yeah. Is that still going on? I've not been watching Rampage. Well, Soraya's brother thwacked him. Uh, with a, it looked like a shalali, but I guess it's just some sort of pipe. Why, why do they care? Yeah. Yeah. And it, this it's is crazy, because they're putting him over as this crazy person who attacks people for no reason. And then it's like, it's good. And then like, oh, we're recording. <laughs> AEW. To be I'm fair not the, saying out about the knights, they're big boys. I'm scared. To be fair to the zebra boy, is that the right? So I don't know which one it is. Yeah. It's not the zebra kid, no. No, uh, oh, sorry. To be fair to Zach Zodiac. I don't think it is. No, no I can't be right. Um, it's that, not RKJ because he's smaller. You know, I don't know who, I don't, I don't know. watch them. Sorry. That movie does where he takes like a bump between the ropes onto the floor and then somehow goes back in the ring without skipping a beat. Does he? Have you seen it? No. No. You know, wrestlers like go through the middle and top rope and then to the floor. Like hands locked up, locked on the ropes, mm-hmm. he somehow just bounces straight back through. Like they've just literally reversed the tape. Hmm. Incredible. Hmm. What a guy. Sounds like something you'd imagine from a luchador, not from a Norwich-based. Uh, hey, what's he know. called? Zach Zodiac. I don't know. Anyway, while you're googling that, you know who he wrestles for? AEW. Uh, that's, yeah. that's and I've been told his signing is big business. Renee is in the car park when a Mercedes. Pulls out in the background. Who, well, who te- could it be? Technically, it's a Maybach. Um, they, Isn't Maybach a Mercedes? Yeah, it's a fancy Mercedes with a body body kit on. Okay. <laughs> oh, is that true? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and again, it was so, they really watch this, this, right? We can't show it on the podcast. Look Whoa! at that! Wait a minute. Oh, that's I nice. need I need to watch the other Did people oh, to okay. make sure that wasn't the. Ooh, oh, Unbelievable! Yeah. It's like a. It's like he's been looped. If yeah, you, if you want to see what? this, it's Dude. at the Zach Zodiac, and he tweeted it on February the twenty eighth at seven twenty nine p.m. It's a rainmaker. Look at that. Does he follow you? Nah. Oh, he I would like hate. Him. He would hate everything about me, Matthew. <laughs> but apart from that, <laughs> so Mercedes pulls up. We don't know who it is. They're really Mister. Who could it be? Who could have swerved? Or just has a joke? Like see, cool, cool hand. hand. <laughs> 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 okay, fair enough. Then yeah, of course it is Mercedes Monet. Is revealed as the big debut. Uh, she comes out. She's got a dance version of Ring Camp's old team. Well, it was a song before that as well. Let me no, Ring Camp <laughs> by the band Ring Camp from the album Ring Camp. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> this one is C E O C E O. I thought it was like, okay, that makes sense to have the CEO. Is it because they're going to chant Sasha? But they're like, wait, she hasn't been that for a while. They're going to chant Monet instead. Monet. But whatever. Um, I. She, I hate the theme music. Do you know? It's I think people are joining in with this, so it's all right, but it was, I mean, it's cheesy as out. I don't know. bad. I think it fits her, like, you know, all the bling and whatnot and her coming out looking like the dog's her, bollocks. I prefer her last one, the Jackson 5 one. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Manny. Manny. Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> she talks about her early career and being inspired by wrestlers like Eddie Guerrero. She's still bringing a dad up. That's nice. Mm. That was a joke from years ago. I guess she does really believe that, and it wasn't just forced upon her by right. WWE. It's nice like, to know. Oh, yeah. okay, right, right. She also can't wait to face all the great wrestlers in the locker room as unfinished business with Willow Nightingale. She says Mercedes Monet is all elite, calls herself the CEO a few times. And she almost does the Brit Baker, blah, 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 while mm. saying CEO. Yeah. Heat backstage. The feud oh. writes itself. Oh. No, it's a wrestling angle. I see. No real life beef. Yeah, right. right. This is a new AEW. Uh, and I'll put, again, women got to be crying because, you know. No, oh, in this case, no, we can but, excuse But I'll put the, glad they've realized in order for people to be seen like stars in AEW, they have to be presented as stars. Because, you know, she danced a little towards the end and I was expecting something to come out. Nothing did. It was all about her. Mm-hmm. She felt like a big deal. They literally named this show after her. Give her the fake car, <laughs> as Ross said. No, it's, um, it's, it's I think it's, it was just, they put her over like, yeah, they couldn't have done more. It's a Maybach, it's a Mercedes on roids, if it's anything. Super cool. That's just yeah. pretty spe- oh, speculation, man. Uh, Get sued. <laughs> PEDs, performance enhancing drugs. She mentioned. Drives better. Was it Chaos Wrestling, like her old indie? Yeah. And she mentioned how she was like 90 pounds and she was a kid. And it was just a classic, like, my. my yeah. I've come up through this business, but she, it was good. It was maybe, because she's not like as good on the mic as she is in the ring. So it was maybe like the best Mercedes promo I've ever heard. 
I thought it was the best. I, halfway through, I've realized that like they've never presented a female talent like this in AEW. Yep. This is the first one, mm. and it really worked for her. Obviously, the teasers and whatnot, and just the way the first she opened the show. Obviously, comparisons to CM Punk and whatnot because the way it was done without yeah. overtly announcing it and whatnot. Secret, yeah. um, but I thought it was it was everything that had to be and more. Yep. And obviously, it's Bailey. Stealing the show without stealing the show. The picture of her with an iPad, like recording it like a grandma at a graduation ceremony or something. Oh, I don't know. Ee, that's our Mercedes down there. Mm-hmm. Ee. Ee. Yeah. And she dropped out of school at 13 to take care of her brother. Yeah. Mm. What, a, what a story. Mm. How nice. But she looked, she still looks the dog's bollocks when yeah. she walks out there. Like she's still got the Kavorka, baby. Yeah. Nice dance. Yeah. I like the dance, yeah. And in a backstage interview, Samoa Joe says he hasn't forgotten what happened between him and Wardlow last time. Wardlow is overdue. Joe doesn't lose titles at the Garden. Does he not lose in Boston? Like, is that a thing? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe just, yeah. Okay. Just being very lucky. Oh, yeah. Wardlow has the kids soon. No. Yeah. Yeah. We get an Adam Cole <laughs> video package where he recites a fairy tale. It's all a big metaphor about Wardlow <laughs> as up and out the shot. It's like the start of Shrek, isn't it? No? I hate this trope in wrestling. Go on. It happens more often than you think. Like, Shane McMahon did it with a big show. Okay, yes. that was 20 years ago. Maybe not as often as you think, but, like, I hate it every time it crops up mm. where a wrestler mockingly reads a story, but it's, you'll never guess, it's actually a metaphor for what's going on mm. in their storyline. But, I mean, I think it makes sense for Warlord to keep on mentioning other stars from AEW's past, and now, look, here's somebody finishing their story. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, right. I was sitting there thinking, like, the, you know, the sniveling heel Adam Cole, the cool heel Adam Cole that we've gotten known over the past however many years. He wouldn't do this, but no. then... Learn a bit more about real life Adam Cole and his penchant for video games and stuff like that. Maybe he would do this. Speaking about stories of a brotherhood bound by undisputed hatred and <clears throat> they marched into war with the most dominant of beasts. He would... That fits him, yeah? I didn't like it. <laughs> just, I just, I miss, yeah. I miss old Adam Cole. Mate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cole had the audacity to say, Wardlow was a big guy who was used and lied to. And then Wardlow will win the title and give it to me. Yes. But you know what? Like the package. Like that they're putting the effort into this. Yeah, yeah. The, the production was good. Yes. The storybook looked like it was from the film Hocus Pocus. Still haven't seen them. Oh, really? God. I has got crazy fandom. Yeah, my girlfriend's one of them. Oh. Not one of the cast. She's, She's a witch. One of the fans. <laughs> my girlfriend's a witch. <laughs> I put a smell on you. That's um, Bette Midler, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I know, and is one of the witches, it's a room, she's got a... Hoover. 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 Yeah. One of the yeah, witches yeah, yeah. is Sarah Jessica Parker. Ah. Yeah. The fit one. Yeah, the hot one. Why? <laughs> uh. <laughs> 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 up the witches. Up the way. Up the one specifically. I, uh, Joe I, retained... looked, I oh, looked at Matthew and bit my lip and went, uh, and I feel like I'm, by, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you bit... Mm. Oh, uh, my like, Jesus. I like that. Watching, no, is that what you're doing? <laughs> I just went, uh, but I realized I mm. bit my lip as I did it. Stop. <laughs> uh, okay, like that. Stop, 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 stop. That's the second thing I'll not forget after this podcast. The first was the look in when you were prete- who was you pretend to be earlier when you were a bit like Ooh. the guy in the bar with the, the guy rings. in the bar, yeah. like, <laughs> the ring, the ring master. Look at my rings. Yeah. And it's like the guy didn't go. Uh, Joe retains the AW World Championship, choking out Wardlow with the Coquina clutch. Swerve comes out afterwards, armed with a chain. He fights off security, but Joe just walks away laughing anyway yeah. and kicks one of them down <laughs> on the way out. Um, that's Wardlow's tall shot over then. Yes, That's... it's... Hey, you ready? It's the annual Wardlow push. That's it. And he's done. Yeah, See cheers. you next year. Yeah, <laughs> no, cheers, Wardlow. There'll be more to this one because he's part of a faction so he can obviously get a bit disgruntled and then turn on them and keep his momentum going. I really hope uh-huh. so. Good one, Rob. Yeah, I, I hope, hope so. It's so funny. Yeah. He, in the match, he looked... Like, the, the start of the match where he's going 100 miles an oh, hour yeah. and just beating up Joe, he looked very, very good. Like, even used Joe's body to break up a 10 count, for goodness sake. Um, He did the wee off the top rope right onto Samoa yeah, Joe's head. Wee. I forgot the, na- the, the name. Wii. Of the, the name of the move. Like the flip over. Bit of a corkscrew. Bit Twist, of, yeah. Twisting body attack is what uh, it's called. In the old video games, that's what's down. Twisting right? body so I still call it that. <laughs> I'll go with the Wii. Mm. Uh, but the Wii looked good. And he, get all, he got all these power moves in. He looked the part in what was a title match. He got put over strong. He even like saw Samoa Joe's walk away fakey spot. I was going to say he yes. Even that saw that one coming. Um, he yelled his catchphrase, Ward, no. And then nailed the shoulder tackle. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Did he moo though? He doesn't moo anymore, which is no. a shame for Wardlow. <clears throat> Do you remember that? We used to get in the top row and go, yeah. moo. It's hard to be stealthy though if you're mooing. <laughs> <laughs> but I like this. I like 
obviously it's a shame that Wardlow has just like seemingly as West out here had the title match and is going to move on and whatever. But the sudden nature of Joe's win sort of kept him quite strong because Joe just sort of like was getting his ass handed to him and then hopped on his back. Yeah. Because Joe's so big, he locked it in and couldn't get out. True. Yeah, it's true. I'll say the match was okay for Wardlow, but good for Joe. Yeah. Because Joe's like, me. look at him. Small Joe, World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, Wardlow's done this so many times, it's hard not to see. I know. Like, oh, okay, so are we doing anything with you or not? I think he's probably, I don't know whether he's become a better wrestler or just has more of a chance now to show more of what he can do, but I feel like his matches are like quite thrilling at times. But it's it just, can't be him. yeah, but it's just like, I, I really don't understand the, the timing of this. Right. Yeah, a guy can have a good match on AW, there's about 15 of them. I just meant, yeah. I just meant, only 15. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> I just meant the timing of it. I tried like, to come up with a crazy high number and that's still <laughs> crazy low. I just meant the timing of pushing Wardlow when the champion's in this like three-way feud that he can't possibly lose the yeah. belt before it's over with. So yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. If it was just for that, then it was absolutely fine. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just there going, oh, it used to be so good. You hate AW. <laughs> he does hate all, all these comments so far. You hate AW. <laughs> You're so biased. That's Do you like right. Collision more than Dynamite? What's going on? Collision was pretty good. We haven't even finished yet. Sorry, okay. yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're, sorry. We're 20 minutes of the show. You hate it. <laughs> 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 we haven't even... AEW Dynamite. Oh, Matthew hates it. <laughs> Alex Marvez interviews the Young Bucks Okada. They pick on Marvez for not using Okada's full name. They explain that they've joined forces because they've been friends for 14 years over Botchamania and the <laughs> three best athletes in the world. Okada makes Marvez sing... That's how he tells Marvez, all right, tell him happy birthday to Matt Jackson, to Matthew Jackson. And he goes, happy birthday. He goes, no, sing... <laughs> And he goes, happy birthday, and it goes to the break. <laughs> good. Loved it. That was good. I hope they released the full director's Please. cut. Please, I was waiting for like picture in <laughs> picture, like, oh, where? <laughs> <laughs> it was a really good promo. They haven't missed, as the kids would say, with this trio oh, so far. Uh, yeah, books are so much better as heels. And Okada joined them going, Okada has 14 million reasons to join the elite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ka-ching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dollary dues is what they meant there. Dollary dues. Right. Yeah, um, all this. Yes, just one, just one, I don't want to be, it was good, just one, the New Japan... Look, look how biased criticism <laughs> I have gone. I hate AWM. The, the New Japan story, the, the universe of New Japan just doesn't matter. They've not been friends for 14 years. They've been at each other's throats. Chaos, Bullet Club. Oh, oh I'm so no, happy I didn't watch New Japan. Because <laughs> that's, that's not an issue in my world. Omega and They Oka have been friends. Omega and Okada had this like... Wrestling friends. This intense feud of over four matches that was... I mean, I imagine, like, Omega, when he comes back, might be the one to topple Well, he's back. no longer in the Elite. They fired him, so... Well, they did. Sorry, I just got a text there. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Yes, you yeah, yeah. Sorry, I just checked it wasn't an emergency. Bless you. No, no, it's, all, it's, it? it's absolutely fine, Jack. You can check your phone. Really? The Elite win a six-man tag match against Eddie Kingston, Penda, and Pac, with Ricardo getting the pinfall on Kingston. Oh, remember the Eddie... That was way too high, sorry. Ah! <laughs> remember the Eddie Kingston Pentathenix trio? Best friends. <laughs> no, yeah, you're my best friend. Not you, Ray. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they were, they were doing that. And Did then the Pat was feuding with Eddie Kingston. He? Not Santana, though. He used to call him Monkey, didn't he? Hey, Monkey. Santana's there. What am I, chop lip? So cute. Yeah. Mm. Like when Undertaker calls the Godfather Bear. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's nice. Bear? And just imagine Taker going to sleep in his big arms. Yeah. Give oh. me a bear. <laughs> Give me a bear hug. <laughs> to be fair, he was a... Not a pimp. Just a strip club owner, wasn't he, when he met him for the first time? Yeah, I yeah. Believe, yeah. Slash street fighter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was only a part-time. No, it was in, in real life in Vegas. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. sorry. Right. I thought you were doing the storyline. Yeah. Oh, right. I'm sure that was true. You were working at a pimp shop <laughs> when I met you. Bear. Yeah. Bear? Anyway, <laughs> there's not much to say about this match because all it was was Pac, Pent, and Matthew and Nicholas being on f in fuego yep. doing their bits. Then it just descends into a proper AEW tag team match. There's all these moves, these sequences, and Rick Knox missing some cheating, <laughs> which led wow. to the finish. It's had all the um, all the hallmarks of a classic AEW tag match. Eddie taking a thwack to the plums, um, and Whoa. the NXT <laughs> version. Oh. Goodness. I was attempting to throw back on the <laughs> No, sorry. Matthew, try less. That's just what Eddie Kingston did when he was thwacked in the plums. <laughs> <laughs> and now we learn that Okada wants the Continental Crown, but I thought for a 20 minute, whatever it was, just tag team match, it was. It was, it was popping, wasn't it? It, it, was it, it certainly was. Both of them were popping. Plum <laughs> popping. Oh, yeah, this, this ruled. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was great. 
And oh. I'm, I'm, you know what? Me being from the area, Newcastle upon time, apparently, um, it was like, oh no, Park's not winning every match, but it, like, it doesn't matter. That that he's still there. Mm. Yeah, he wasn't. It wasn't exactly like he was headlining last time he was here anyway. So, so it was interesting that Kingston took the pinfall rather than Pender, who you'd assume because yeah. he wants those belts. Oh uh, yeah, he wants the CC. Yes, fair enough. Continental Crown. That's right. Does and that... Kingston's like, I don't really care. I'm an old Japan lad myself. Oh, we <laughs> give two, two poos about these. Winners like... of the Continental Crown, technically the Ring of Honor champion. They've never really said. It's the bridge between all three promotions. So I think you, you can appear on right with that belt. New Japan but strong. Just keep doing this Ring until people Honor, go, yeah. oh, yes, Ross, I know what you mean. Oh, yes, Ross, I do get it. I do get it. It's just, it's, it's, it's weird, isn't it? So you've got Ring of Honor over here, <laughs> New Japan over there, yeah. AW in the middle, and they can go across they've all three. got oh, this good. belt. If got, you can't, sorry. you can't go those. So he's bought another promotion, taken its top belt, merged it with two, merged it with two of the belts, <laughs> and now that championship doesn't really get mentioned. It's very weird. It's only Ring of Honor. Oh, that's such a sad thing to say, isn't it? Given the history, the heritage, the, the fighting. The non -serie. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Toy Shivani <laughs> interviews Will Ospreay in the ring. Ospreay talks about his admiration for Brian Anderson's career and is excited to face him. He also talks about hitting the Tiger Driver on Kenny Omega and says he doesn't regret it. No, bro. Here, here now, here. Why have they mentioned this when he's going to be wrestling Brian Danielson? Uh, surely. No, surely. he's not going to hit that on He him. cannot do that to Brian Danielson. Three days from retirement, Danielson. Surely. Take it's, a tiger driver. <laughs> Danielson's exactly the sort of person who'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. He's gonna you imagine Bernie Danielson. Big at home. Papa, <laughs> please doff now. Oh, no. <laughs> do not do the tiger driver 97. Mom, get, get out of Brimo. Dad's in trouble. <laughs> Osprey builds this match of Brian as the best in the world versus the best of the 21st century. Right. What? And so Osprey's says, saying he's the current best. I know, best I know, I'm saying okay, right, something. Okay. Um, and says, although he respects his opponent, he'll show no mercy. Mm. Another fantastic promo from Will, I thought. Bloody hell, the crowd love him. He's just very likable. He's just a bloody chav. He was talking like Essex, -y, and the crowd like, yay! Even I like him, I'm proper northern, me, and uh, he's proper southern. You know when you're like... He's, he's just this top shelf baby face... Bloody Osprey. He's experiencing the thing that all English people experience when we go to America for the first time and people think you're like clever and cool because you've got an English accent. <laughs> it's magic, isn't it? It's not quite the same over here with that accent, <laughs> is it? It's the love actually fallacy or whatever. Yes. Yeah. He's doing really well. Please for him. <laughs> Hope the match is good. It's got a lot of hype to live up to, though. Daniel's going to mess with him. He's asking basic math questions. <laughs> None of that here, bruv. He's going to lock him in one of his holes. He goes, all right, I'm not like hell. What's two plus two? No, bruv, no. I'm not Carol Vorderman. <laughs> you slag. You slag. <laughs> I'll restore the feeling. Uh, just a couple of lines oh, yeah, now. He's he like, on about yeah. restoring the feeling. Where's that started, by the way? Because that's passed me by. The Online, people are like, when's the feeling going to come back to AW? Like Ooh, the olden days. The feeling? Yeah, the feeling. It's just the way I'm feeling. Make him say, ah, oh, the feeling. Never be lonely. <laughs> <laughs> what a, oh, what a throwback. <laughs> but, but baby, I'm going cook, cook, cook crazy. The feeling need to play the opening theme of the next pay per view. I love it when you call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure, have I made this up? Is Pachiti a fan of them or does it just seem like he would be? It would seem like, I've yeah. not, never heard him overtly say no. he loves the what feeling. What was that big one? Fill my little world right up. Right up, right, right up. up. Remember them? They were big no. in the mid-noughties. Do you know Big in the mid-noughties. I love it when you call, but you never call at all. Oh, Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that heavy. Maybe. That, it sounds like something I'd hear, I'd, I'd recognise. Oh, yeah, something in the background. I but. love it when you call. It's like, oh, there, it's like, oh, They have that other song. Oh, oh, maybe. Oh, that, oh, oh, ba, 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 ba. that was quite a good one, though. We're going to get copyright claimed this yeah, time. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> But I the restore the feeling line, bruv, I am the feeling. I was like, oh, go on then, big Bill. You, 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 go on, you're feeling you. Um, and then <laughs> the, the, the closing line where he's like, um, I have respect for the man opposite me, but when the bell rings, it's your life or mine. And I don't plan on dying, mm. you mug. And he goes, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Oh, Osprey. Oh, Osprey. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Leave singing his song. Um, never be lonely. Yeah. That was their other one. Oh, uh, good lad. That's but yeah, I can't, for, I can't wait for oh, Daniel Son to go, right. yeah, do you feel this? And just punch him in the face. Son? Oh, yeah. The Son's a very tepid song. Whoa. 
Give me a song and I'll sing it like I mean it. Well, I don't know so much about the feeling. Their last song <laughs> came out. This bloody band. Like it, Their last it. song came out in 2022. It didn't chart. It was called There Is No Music. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It's just three minutes of white noise. Yeah. There is no music. Oh, whoa. Jay White wins his match against Darby Allen. That was Darby a handshake afterwards. But it's all a ruse. A Bobby ruse as the mm. guns attack. They get ready to pilmanize Darby's leg, which wouldn't hurt him for longer than a day, I don't think. But... The acclaimed and Billy Gunn run out to stop them. Jay hits Billy with a chair and the guns beat the acclaimed down. The Bang Bang Scissor Gang, I know more, the oh, now yeah, just yeah. the Bang Bang Gang, injured Darby's leg then the segment. What was the bloody point in that then? Yeah! And please, because it wasn't working. I think they realised it wasn't yeah, working. Yeah, okay, you know, you're right, yeah. This is, this is going nowhere slow. But it had a lot of potential. It's a thing I think people wanted to see when it initially happened. But now we're sat here a few weeks down the line and all they've done is really... Said their catchphrase. They've done segments, yeah. yeah. So it's not working, so it's good that they split yeah. up. Uh, yeah. So, and Max, as, and Max Cast is being weird on Twitter. Oh, he's done that God before. I. What's he doing? And people are like, oh, he's just, he's he's playing a character. And you're like, <laughs> it's not clear that he is. Not that it excuses. And it's also not that not on TV to like go, ah, oh, that's a thing. I saw a thing on Reddit or a post on Reddit. I was like, not to excuse him being weird on Twitter, but apparently his dad died quite recently and it might have like. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. So hopefully well, we'll, he's doing we'll, all right. We'll though. move on then, However, so we don't look like a, a pair of dickheads. But um, I'm glad the group's over. Yeah, because they, they came together to fight uh, to defeat the United Kingdom. Then the United Kingdom's not been that big of a deal. So it's the like, United, all right, well, we'll not have that big blow The Undisputed match. Kingdom. The United Kingdom, that's right. Okay. And um, they're all from England. That's why they're heels yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how, that's how Americans know they're heels. Because they're English. Because that's exactly right, yes. And now they've done that. Well, that's gone away, yeah. yeah. So now they're not really doing much. So it's like, well, we've, we've literally done nothing since we formed. Uh, okay, cool. So now they're split up. All right, cool. You know what? I'm actually happy that they've done this because it means they're doing something. Uh -huh. They've done nothing. And also, Jay White versus Darby Allen. Oh, nice little... He's very climbing, good. He's climbing ever soon. He's always like, is, is he now? sure? I know, yeah. yeah. God. They've done him a favor, if anything, after last week's promo. That was a weird promo. I hope he's all right. Do you see him, Matthew? It was very bizarre. It was just like I watched it, but I, around me, just a uh, watch that wrestling. It sounded like he was going to die. It sounded like he wasn't. He was planning on not coming back. Oh, oh, he was. I think he was just planning the eventuality that it it could happen because many people have died. Well, I guess so. Yeah, Everest, but but, many but people... again, it, if you see the other interview he did, uh, we talked about like, oh, maybe he did this in the promo. I forget because there was segments on um, the amazing cultaholic.com about the promo that he gave or an interview if he gave. Would you want? Where he said he like willingly became homeless because he wanted to like. Make sure that it wasn't being in the safety zone. Oh, so no. something like there's people who like to get up and spend half the day looking at pictures, videos of dogs online, and that's all they'll do. What? I so want to make sure that I wasn't going to do that. So he's going to live as much of his life as possible before he pops his clogs. Oh my god! Bloody what a hell. crazy lad. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was interesting to read that and go. Well, he's certainly doing everything he wanted to do. Headline and paper, he was Sting. There's a no climb Everest. I'm like, there's, there's one thing you say about Darby Allen. He's, he's not. He's, yeah, he's, he's here for a, a good time, not a long hey, time. Hey, you can do that and have, enjoy the occasional dog meme. If you want. <laughs> yeah, one dog meme would yeah, yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and uh, you can tell because that bloody coffin drop to the outside. Oh my God. It was set up so well though because straight away like he's taking the bumps, or not really bumps, but he's getting backed into the corner by Jay White and he's going like, oh, oh, oh. Mm. His back's obviously bugged still from the pay-per-view. Mm. And he's taking the, the, the bumps in the ring and just, you could the, just because of the work he did very early on when he wasn't even mm. taking moves, it made everything that came after that feel so much more What's the word I'm looking for? You can feel it through the screen. Yeah. Uh, that Tangible. Word. Tangible. Ooh. Tangible. Mm. Um, but yeah, the one we missed the coffin drop on the apron. Oof. Yeah. And yeah. it's just like, oh, he's going to finally beat it. Oh, I made it in. Yeah. Uh, bang. One, Good two, three. finish as well. Big, yeah. big win for Jay. The switchblade. Kind of needed it. I'm yeah. ready for the bang, bang guy to get back on track. Because oh, yeah. When they were I, flying they were before, they were. Up. I think they're in danger of getting cheered over the... The acclaimed, yeah, yeah, genuinely. It's just because they're doing stuff, yeah, which I, is the interesting thing about. And they've started to have better banter, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope they don't forget about Caster choking that many times because yeah. that needs to be yeah. resolved. Yeah, that doesn't just happen, mm. or does it? Find out next week. Do 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 Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go yet. It's all the frat boys in the leather jacket. Drop, you drop your papers. <laughs> oh, no, my notes. He appears to be having a heart attack. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Oh, those frat boys. <laughs> the worst oh, busk yeah, of all yeah. time. 
You just get, hey! Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the Fly of the Concords one? I'm the hip hop no. My lyrics are bottomless. Oh. And he just stops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's oh, I've thought about that in ages, mate. The hip hopopotamus and the rhyme nocera. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Oh, well, I stopped having a good time. I uh, no Hook and Chris... I laughed. I'm embarrassed by that. But no, what I was be... saying earlier, you look no, at the cast of characters that's been there. Jay and Darby, the Bang Bang Gang and the Acclaimed and Billy's there. Dionna, Osprey, the Elite and the Good Lads in that tag match. El Scoops was there. Wardlow and Joe. Mercedes Money. Up until when Jericho appeared. What a what a stacked card. It, oh, this was oh. big. This was Big business. Oh! Mm. And then, <laughs> then Hook, Jericho, or whatever the hell they call themselves, beat... Lion Hook! No, I'm not calling that. Beat the gates of agony with a combination of Red Rum and the walls of Jericho. Although Jericho lets... let's go. He kind of breaks up the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Later back say, Jericho says Hook has proven that he's a future world champion. <sighs> but now he wants to face Hook next week in Toronto. Hook agrees. And steal his heat. <laughs> this is literally paying your dues. Yeah. Right? Well, you want to be good in A-Dub? Got to lose to Jericho. Do we think he'll lose? He can't beat him. I hope he'll win with a no, prom. No, he'll, Hook will win the first match, and then Jericho will beat him 37 times afterwards in the next then, weeks. No, Hook will... Wait, how did he used to go? Did Jericho just used to win the one at the end? One at the end. So yeah, get, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. the, uh, Ricky Starks got a victory over Jericho, and then, you know... God. <laughs> Jericho's embarrassed the match. Well, do you remember so. when Jericho beat Orange Cassidy, but then Cassidy beat him by knocking him into a pool of orange? That was good. Yeah. Yeah, he's totally bested him there. <laughs> yep. I've got faith that Jericho will put Hook over strong next yeah. week. Faith. Does he not want revenge on Taz for breaking his neck all the time? I've held a grudge since 96. Yeah. You know, that, that's very Jericho-ish. <laughs> but uh, the Gates of Agony, first and foremost, look the dog's bollocks with their new, like, attires for their entrance. I thought that it really... It looked good. It was very extra, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, I don't get <laughs> extra. Extra. Well, no, like... It, it was in... so extra. Oh, hey, it like, was serving. In a RuPaul, <laughs> it, was, it was giving... <laughs> Um, no, it was real. It was, real. and then did you notice that when they took it off, they were in Lakers colours, and they're in Boston, and those two teams do not like each other. Oh, sports! Ah. I, I gather there was something there that they were the team that they don't like. They were in the Lakers and the Celtics, Matthew. Come on! Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Ooh, America. Hey, Torleona hey, hey. just flattening folk, not with real wrestling moves, just going like, ugh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I like watch, it. That, watch that great, all day long. That's great. Have variety from the sh same show as you know Wardlow doing. Twisting body attacks. The wee the from the, the top rope, you mean? Yes. Uh, I thought Hook got a decent hog tag because the crowd did not want Jericho there at all. They were yeah. booing. Not, it wasn't loud boos, but you could hear like a... Yeah. Yeah. They were just yelling, disdain. Yeah. So when Hook came in, he got a decent hog tag because Chris did take the wind out of the crowd sails, I thought. And I thought the good Bishop, Bishop Khan, looked strong-ish in defeat because mm -hmm. he had the red rum and the walls on at the same yep. time. And then he obviously got beat by Hook. Mm -hmm. Good lad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good for. Yeah, it was fine. It was, it was, it was not the match I was most excited for, but it was mm. pretty all right. Yeah. Right. Kyle O'Reilly's interviewed backstage and wonders if he can still compete at the same level since his injury. He's going to find out on collision against Brian Keith. So yeah, he's going to win. Can I still hang? Yeah. God, he looks so tired. He does. He's been he out for two years. I know. He hasn't slept since then. Uh, Ready Strong in the Kingdom interrupt. Ready says, if Kyle wants to do it on his own, he respects that. But does he really, though? Yeah, I don't know if I, just, I don't trust oh. this Roddy Strong character. No, me neither. Mm. Mm -hmm. You can't trust Roddy Strong. Who can you trust? Yeah. Uh, and then Mercedes Monet wishes Rio good luck ahead of her main event against Willow. Willow wins the match. Ah, suck it, Rio. <laughs> and hugs it out with Rio afterwards. But let's go down. And Julia Hart appears on the ramp. This distracts Willow, allowing Sky Blue to attack her from behind. All the women! Really good match, I thought. Yeah. Willow, obviously, yeah. just doing her stuff. Rio was the perfect opponent for her. Willow does this, like, the Rio was on top for a bit, and Willow does this massive drop kick off the ropes. Just like Gunter, I said, Matthew, because that reminded me of Gunter the way she did it. And it the was just... A snap at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, you're right. God. Jesus. Yeah. What did I do? You just hit that hard. You like hard, yeah. Probably hit it. Didn't even feel it. Oh, fair. <laughs> oh, 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 whoa, whoa. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Frat boys, watch. Out. <laughs> um... Yeah, what was it? Uh, Rio's dragon suplex and stomp uh, was fantastic. This was then followed by the massive pounce from Willow. And then just a nice clean win after the massive Lariato. Yeah. And whatever else she did, that finishing move that she has. The power bomb. Yeah. Is, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Stop, stop break, stop, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Willow is great baby face. Yeah, yeah, I was so happy about this match because I was, again, a little circling that I look out for wrestling opinions. Not always right, but there were so many <laughs> negative comments on, about Willow. Oh, really? And I'm like, no. what? I don't get it, me. And I'm like, really? She's like Batista. Yeah. 
but like a well, happy, maybe like a friendly one. Batista. One. Yeah, friendly Batista. She's got a lot of Batista's. Mo- well, she's got two of Batista's moves. <laughs> she does a spine power bomb and then and the mm. power bomb. And the, yeah. Yeah. I think she's like. <laughs> oh, if she has eyes at entrance. I'd love her. I but don't know, she's like she's such a natural face. I was worried when she got missed at that time that they were going to turn her heel. Yeah. I think didn't. they. I think they went. You know that stuff. That yeah. Monkey yeah. doesn't make any sense. Have no idea. Music's stuff. so happy. Yeah, she had a great match. Uh, uh, women's main event for the first time in a long time. <laughs> Look, Sasha, it's like this. Honestly, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> You'll Did be you, made in all the time. All right, FGR. Made <laughs> Fair play, Mercedes Money, though, because she did a full outfit change just for this running at the end. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, she's right. like Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah. Taylor Swift. Yeah. Oh, well done. She did that. Well done. I don't know what to think of that finish as she oh, started Justin doing. Hawkins. Sorry. Yeah, fair enough. He isn't? looks... Right. Matt, sorry, Joel. Go on Justin Hawkins' Instagram. No, no, way, no way. I know. Yeah. There's a picture he put up today, and I was like... Oh, it's looking great. I was like, bloody hell, it's Matthew. <laughs> it's oh, incredible. Oh, what? <laughs> it's he's sort of looking up into the oh, sky. No. Oh, right. It might be the first one there. It's I was just horrible, like, oh my god, he? it's Matthew. I bet he's gonna look rubbish. Uh, there he is. It's Matthew. <laughs> oh, you're not far off, like uh, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> the worst yeah, photo of Justin Hawkins' career. <laughs> hey, it's Matthew. <laughs> it's a clean shave in you from 2018. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's besides the point. Any Kingston band on run home. <laughs> What's he doing? There's no swear words on there, is there? He's in Florida. Oh, he's going to join the next tee. Wearing a bandana. I'm looking directly at the sun. <laughs> it's good for you. <laughs> Liver King told me. <laughs> anyway, yeah, what a great episode of AEW. Yeah. Positivity um, throughout bad. from yeah. me, the AEW hater. Yeah. What a week of... <laughs> you hearing this? Of course, like you get. What a week of wrestling it's been. What yeah. a great week of wrestling. We're going to stop it there so I can go to the toilet. I see. Let's have a run in in our mail bags. <laughs> ah, mailbag. Hi, diddlers. Hello. How you doing? Hey, you're you tight that with like four E's. In the supermarket, you always see the soap opera magazines near the till. And a thought popped into my mind that these are basically the dirt sheets of the soap world. That's right. Inside soap equals wrestling observer. For mums. This means that soaps must have smart mums who fantasy book the soaps. In brackets, there's definitely tribalism afoot. I was an EastEnders kid. I've been Walford pilled. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, enough silly bollocks aside, a question about magazines. One, did any of you subscribe to or get any magazines when you were younger? My older brother had one of those once a week for 50 week magazine gimmicks where you built a robot each week. What a grift. Ah, uh, yeah. I anyway, had a dinosaur one. I was going to say, I had the dinosaur one. Yeah. Uh, anyway, all the best, fellas. Former Poe Hang Steelers midfielder, O oh Sung Bum, a.k.a. Angelos from Leicester. Thank you, Angelos. Thank you, Angelos. 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 I guess what that. Dave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, gracias. Uh, so, when you say magazines, do you mean. Is it just that? Because I had Power Slam. A subscription, though. Oh, I thought this was a non-wrestling question. Right. No, so the, but yeah, Power Slam counts. Anything, yeah, yeah. I had, yeah, the dinosaur one, we got the T-Rex skeleton. Ah, uh, yeah. My yeah. mom wouldn't finish it off, though. She she got me to like a certain point. I didn't have the rest of the T-Rex to build. I somehow oh, got it. I don't to... remember any of the magazines, because I'll go, yeah, T-Rex. And then I remember the magazines being like, archaeology, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I don't care about digging. <laughs> what T-Rex? Yeah. <laughs> If it's, and I didn't look at a T-Rex skeleton. I said, that's just a T-Rex, but you should be on a diet, you know. <laughs> um, any other of those? Oh, I'm trying to think. Is any of us? I've got Monster in my, uh, Wrestler in my pocket. Oh, Monster Wrestlers. Monster Wrestlers in my pocket. Oh, my. That's called. unlocked. Yeah. Monster one Wrestlers. I, Monster Wrestlers. Because they did Monsters in my pocket, which is very popular. There was, there was and some, then they how did many of these am I going to remember? Monster Wrestlers in my I'm going to remember so I have many never movies. seen these I'm going to remember so many. It's a very short-lived thing, but I had all the oh, issues of it. I used to do little fights with them. Yeah. When I was when I was like twenty two, oh, that's a no. bit inappropriate. Yeah, there was. Oh no no no! no, no. <laughs> Don't. I had, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, some of them haven't aged brilliantly. <laughs> okay, bit stereotypical. Some of anyway. them. <laughs> but there was one that they were all happy. They weren't all humans. Some of them was like a bulldog one, wasn't there, or something like that? I don't know. There's a blue cre- couple of blue creatures. I had, that, I had the, the green the, one, the singlet with the. Um, this was the ones I. Oh, the big cool. ball. It was the chain gang. Ch- chain gang chomper. I can't remember. You down remember there. that yeah. executioner or whatever he's yeah. called? I. The uh, saber tooth. I one. had them. I had all. I don't know how the hell. Tony totally the Tiger. Totally the <laughs> <tiger>. <laughs> and Tony the Tiger. Go back. Sorry. It must have been a magazine or a serial thing then. Go on that one. one. That's the one I remember. 
Yeah, that like some of them are the same. That one it's is John Cena in Ricky Stanicky. That, uh, that one's called Jack. I remember being like, oh, it's my mate and me. He had <laughs> Even one, more he, offensive he called, things on the back. He's called One Eyed Jack. He had one eye. Oh, oh dear. Mm-hmm. He said Jack there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then there's the Russian one, who yeah. I think was also offensive in some way. <laughs> the <laughs> early 90s. Uh, so, yes, God, that was the yeah. magazine I had. Well, why did I, I have them the then if it was the, or was it like mid 90s, maybe? IPSV magazine. I don't know really. Get to really grips th- with monster wrestlers. Wow. Monster wrestlers in my pocket. Free wrestler now one pound ninety nine. What? Yeah, because you got free wrestler. Work. The whole free. magazine. But those like strips and stuff. And yeah. They get into wacky adventures. There were stories that all be horrible to each other. Yeah, of course. I mean the wrestlers. There was a choose your own way adventure in one of them, and you always lost to one of the wrestlers in the adventure. Really? Oh, that's. Oh. I don't remember that one, but. Yeah. Looks like you got some sort of carrier case if you went too too oh. deep. Oh wow. I'm to investigate this. Anyway, Monster so yeah, I had all them. And they would team up to fight the, the naked T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> and my childhood was great in my head. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for the question. Hi, Diddlers. No, I, I had a magazine. Oh, sorry, pick it up. <laughs> sorry. Go on. Um, James Bond magazine I was subscribed to. James Bond magazine? Uh-huh, when and you used this? to get trading. Sort of, I was in primary school still, maybe late 90s, early 2000s. All right. Um, you used to get trading cards, and you got a tin with 007 on it to keep your cards in, and it was like... Odd job, toughness, 10, blah, blah, blah. It was like top trumps, but with Bond oh, things. That's cool. Some of them were gadgets, some of them yeah. were cars. Yeah, there we go. James that's Bond. Nice, yeah. Hi, sorry. 442 for me. Oh, yeah, 442, of course. The goat yeah. of the magazines back then. Yeah. When the season preview would be there. Oh, oh dear. All of the international tournament review ones yeah. as well. They were really good. Oh, they used to have a star rating for each match. It was like melt. <laughs> the Hurley Bible. Really? Yeah. There was one where they, had, they did rate each match by like how entertaining it was. And a star rating? Yeah, yeah it was like oh, it, no they idea. didn't do it all the time. Do I remember, yeah. yeah. I specifically remember Italy versus Germany getting five stars in like the 2006 okay. World Cup. Yeah. Yeah. It was a mad semi final. I basically wow. had a subscription in, in the year 2000 at WCW magazine without having a subscription. Because every right. time I go and play football on a Saturday morning, my man would take me to the paper shop and I always go, like, Man, can I have it? Yeah. What a great time. Never um, used to read it, just to look at the pictures. I remember one <laughs> once buying Raw magazine in uh, the corner shop. But like feeling really embarrassed because the front cover of that week or month was Lita looking oh, all like hot, yeah. and I was like, "Yeah, I don't this magazine." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a subscription to Official Nintendo Magazine or Nintendo Official Magazine, as it was sometimes called. So you can call them Nom. Um, I subscribed to that, and I stopped subscribing. And I realized, hang on, they don't review anything. Let's kiss the ass of the product. Really? Yeah. And they sent me like five messages going, hey, you know, sad to see you go. You can come back, reduce rate. Ah, oh, the BF52 of that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, come on, please come back. I'm like, no, I don't like your magazine anymore. Mm. But I, I'm, as a kid, I'm like, oh, they might need me. <laughs> <laughs> Even as a kid, I'm like, yeah, Nintendo must not be paying them very well. <laughs> Interesting. Fascinating. Hi, Diddlers and the Jolster piece. <laughs> yes. That doesn't work at all. I like that. I, I read this before and I've been telling everyone in the office to call me the Jolster piece from now on. Okay. What a name. Yeah, it's good. It's confusing and awkward to say. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the fact it's not even a pun, so that just makes it better. I wonder if any of you have any specific moments in wrestling that you know very few people have fond memories about. However, it was almost a formative experience for you. Mm. Mine would be the Masalok Challenge, which was finally broken by Bobby Lashley. That moment where Big Boys, Big Bob, and Big Masterpiece had a back and forth struggle where Large Lashley broke free. It was unbelievable, Jeff. It's my arresting wish to see Chris return in a rumble and lock it in on Bobbington. Thanks for talking, Graps and Plebs. Former Cheltenham left back, Jamie Victory, aka Jamie. former teenager, Jamie Robertson. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. Teenager. Um, Thank you, mate. Good question. Because when you're a kid and you start watching, I feel like those things are really burned into your brain more. Like yeah. I, it was on my Desert Island Graps episode with Tom, and I, one of my three matches was this random Steve Blackman versus Albert I'm match. Saying, yeah. And it's like just on a SmackDown in 2000. And I just remember thinking it was the co- Blackman. I thought Steve Blackman was like the coolest person ever before he was a bounty hunter. Yep. <laughs> that got uh, mentioned last week, I think. What have you got? Uh, that's just uh, Steve Blackman's room for my head now, shouting that. Get down, you fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Molly Holly. He didn't mean it. He didn't mean it. <laughs> the yeah, hardcore he women's <laughs> match that was happening back in the day with the iron. Yes. Mm. Ivory. Oh, I'm blank now thinking about you Ivory. Said this before, and, haven't you? Yeah. Um, but that. Survivor Series 99? That one? No, I think it was just a random smack. Oh, wasn't right, it? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that happened and was burned in there. Super Bowl 2000. Everything about that card. The Kiss Demon, as we mentioned earlier. Taken on who? The Wall, brother. Mm hmm. 
cart was good. The wall didn't come out for his entrance, and the demon went up to find him, and the wall got him from behind. Oh, oh uh, it was really classic good. wall. Such wall behavior. Uh, but those are probably the main two. And just a couple of things from like uh, uh, Sting and Goldberg's VHS back then as yeah. well. Uh, one thing I saw that I thought was an amazing moment, but doesn't get brought up enough, I guess, because of pushes, change, and stuff like that. Bobby Lashley coming through the wall. <coughs> the cage. Uh, the cage, yes. Um, oh, yeah. While Humanga. pressing Hardcore Holly on ECW and Sci Fi to annoy you, Marga. Yes, that was good. Amazing moment. Doesn't really get mentioned as much as you no, think. No, you'd think because it looked amazing. I don't think it's happened very often. I think Braun Strowman, a big show, did something with a cage wall a while ago. Strowman but, ripped a cage open to get a Chain McMahon. I'm sure that. Oh, one of the, the, the matches they had because Braun and Big Show had these the great was it made of Raw or something yeah and I swear one of them through the cage and then uh, he fell backwards and Brock, and, awesome. Brock and Roman did it in Saudi not too long ago didn't they he was, oh, the oh the spear yeah. through the thing yeah but yeah. then he was like well you lost you idiot but they, no, <laughs> they <laughs> had the complete opposite yeah. effect to make them look cool they both sort of landed at the same time it yeah weird. it was yeah. weird that. yeah and then Roman spiked himself uh, good times uh, Joel's the piece do you have any specific moments or did you collect any magazines um, no nah, the only magazine I got was Games Radar because mm. I was a big nerd Games Radar. What, yeah. what so, video games? Board games? Have you video out games, video yeah. gamed Matthew here? <laughs> I don't know. It was all about PlayStation, really. I'm basically. shocked he's not heard of this game magazine. magazine. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it was too later on for you. Oh, maybe. No it's white like... dwarf, you big nerd. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to any Warhammer folk. Are they scary? Nah, they can annoying? take a beating. Okay. They're not like the Joshi fans. Oh, uh, if you annoyed them again. No, no. I'm just always fearful of doing that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and so you should be. Um, remember the perfect event? They in my mind they were Sean really, Stajak and Chip Palumbo. Yeah, in my mind for some reason because before you've got any sense of what's good yeah. or what's badly booked, they were like this cowardly heel tag team. But I remember just my logic as a kid was they're the champions, they must be the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they got locked. Their in, name's the perfect event. They, they got, call themselves they oh, weren't no. good. And they got locked in sunbeds. <laughs> they did. Yeah, they did. By who? I can't remember. Chronic, who. I think. Chronic, yeah. And then they came out, and then they got slapped on the back, I and they went. That. Yeah, God. classic. I got exposed to their theme before I ever knew Mr. Perfect ah. existed because the way I watched WCW Worldwide on a Friday night mm -hmm. before watching WF, yeah. so that was an interesting. <gasps> I couldn't believe it. I went, uh, that's that. They can't play that. The yeah. intro of Worldwide made it seem like the coolest. Whoa. Yeah. Games yeah. Master, not Games Radar. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Good lad. Good day, diddlers. Good day. I have just Good woken day. up from a nice little lap. Ah, say I got Matthew. A nice little nap. Decided I'd spend my first waking moments troubling you fine gents with a mailbag question. Yeah, that sounds about right for our audience. When I first started watching WWE in 2015, my favorite wrestler was Kalisto. I preferred the high-flying wrestlers over the big meaty men, although my opinion on which style of wrestling I like most has shifted more towards the latter in recent years. Oh, you're on team meat now. Yeah. However, Kalisto always came off so energetic and nimble on the map that I couldn't keep my eyes off his lovely, lovely mask. I also really enjoyed watching the man formerly known as Neville zip and zoom across the ring. His red arrow finisher was always a thing of beauty. I digress. Let me get back to the original point of my ramble. From my understanding of what folks think in the wrestling community, Kalisto was never well regarded. He was never, he never was the best on the mic and never had compelling feuds. I recall when he was feuding with Del Rio and Kalisto and Sin Cara would consistently lose to members of the League of Nations, mm. building up to Kalisto's US title match against the notable prick, it says it. <laughs> I wasn't saying Ryback's name anymore. Oh. Alas, Kalisto was always good at doing the lucha things. My question to you, whichever combination of culty lads appear on this week's podcast is this. Who was a wrestler you liked at any point of your lives who was never viewed keenly by the wrestling fan base? Your answer could be a wrestler old and or new. From former Yankees infielder, Ronald Torres. Torres? Torres. Okay. A.K. Xander P.S. I think Xander. Oh, A.K. Xander P.S. Hi, Joel. Your mustache is magnificent. Oh, oh thank you, Xander. We need some alliteration. Every here. email. <laughs> anyway, it's a good question. It's yeah, kind yeah. Of, kind you of, guys of, suck Joel forever. <laughs> kind of similar question to the last one thematically. Like, it could be an old thing that you fondly remember. Well, the guy he's named in that, or not named, Ryback. You love Ryback. <laughs> he doesn't get, even his, you know when someone does something so bad that it, it almost has negative energy because it takes away from the positive moments they have in their career. Lexus King. <laughs> yes. He's kind of a black hole. Yeah, he sucked up all the good stuff but he's in a, done. But it's kind of deliberate, I think, now. Yeah, anyway, anyway. but Ryback was over. Ryback was super over for a very brief yeah. period of time. And he had an excellent series of matches with Kalisto towards the end where the... <laughs> There's a stupid thing online was like, yeah, because Ryback's trying to get booked for PWG. <laughs> 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 Which sadly didn't happen. So yeah, no, Ryback, I will not take this. And but obviously nowadays, yeah, he's a prick online, I know. But still, if he's 
we're going to give him his due. He was really good for a while. Mm. I remember seeing in the build up to was it Cena Punk and Ryback the triple threat? Was yes. that triple, yeah. And yeah. there was like a video showing a little clip of some fans like saying who they wanted to win the match, like a montage. Like, yeah. Ultimate um, British Bulldog's going to win if he wants to. Like yeah. that. And there was a dad and his two sons, and the bit of their the point of their bit was that they all wanted a different one to win. Yeah. So the little kid obviously Cena. The cool, edgy teenager punk. The dad just is like, right back, yeah! <laughs> like, he's one for the dads, apparently. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And then you had that debate with Aiden about whether Ryback right should so have won. So great. Because hmm. he was so, he was really like hyped up for that. Like, I'm going to get you, Matthew. Oh. Because I, I, th- I remember beef. like a small bit of beef because I had said something in the no podcast. There was no beef. I said something in the podcast that I th- he, mis- he misunderstood or I didn't verbalate. Ver- 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 <laughs> trying to say they didn't say a word correctly <laughs> and then you mess up the word. <laughs> Uh, verbal, like whatever. Um, when I said, "Oh, let's have a look at the news. oh, predictably in the news," it says Monday Night Raw like changed before it's even started, and he's like, "You slagging off the news?" I was like, "No, no, 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 not not you, I news guys. That's the actual news that's in wrestling." So I think he, in his head, was like, "This is it. I'm going to get Matthew now." Do you not think that's podcast. in your head? I showed, <laughs> I showed up, and I, I was just like, "I'm not going like, to breathe, man." Like, <laughs> wow. And he was just like, "We're really good." I was, I thought I was going to outsmart you. I went, "Oh, cheers, pal." Wow, it's like Brian and Osprey, isn't it? <laughs> intellectually though um, <laughs> mine would be Oof. oh no I didn't mean it like that oh, <laughs> mine would be um, I love you by the way Aiden I, my, we all love I love you too Aiden we <laughs> <laughs> we all uh, we all just mentioned it before but the one who's sticking in my head a lot is Vampiro because when I was a kid okay, yeah, it was like on. the year 2000 so I didn't even Sting was when I started watching WCW. Sting wasn't even there because he'd been he'd just right. been burned. So he, he just lost to Vampiro. So I was like, "Who's this bloke?" And I remember the commentary team. I remember Shivani's voice going like, "This man sets Sting on fire." And I was like, "Oh yeah. my god, who's this bloke?" Then yeah. he comes out and wrestles Prince Ikea. <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, okay." But I, yeah. I thought Vampiro was really cool. Modern day one would be Lince Dorado. I just think he's really fun. It's a good pick, yeah. And shoot, scary. If you're Bailey, well, no, if you're, if you're, uh, only if you're a dick. Yeah, yeah. He's good as jiu-jitsu. Don't talk about dad like that. Yo, is he's, no, well. he's got a uh, shoot jiu-jitsu <laughs> skill. <laughs> yeah, my old day, old-fashioned one would be Chronic. Mm. I used to okay, bloody yeah. love yeah. Chronic. Their theme song, their presence, <laughs> Clark <laughs> and Adams. <laughs> and then you, it's Static X, is it not? Yes, Love yeah. Dump. Love Dump, a big lovely poo. Um, and the, Ooh, I guess, I love a dump. the modern day one would be Mr. Chase. Oh, yeah. I feel like not only on this podcast, but just in terms of the reaction of the people inside the shed, I'm one of the few fans of Mr. Chase. It's been waning, and it's sad. When he wrestled Mello, out-wrestled Carmelo Hayes, wearing slacks and a woolly jumper, that's <laughs> yeah. when I... Be- that was crazy. Well, I, I was a fan before, but that's when it was rubber stamp. He beat him. Yeah. He beat him. Pinned him. He's one of the few. Yeah. Not the many. Oh, dear. The I'll never forget that first promo where he just dropped an F-bomb. <laughs> Not knowing what NXT was going to become back then. And yeah, just, yeah, oh, yeah, my yeah. God. I I think I'm more of a Hudson guy, you know? Oh, in terms of modern day stuff, by the way, uh, Timothy Thatcher, who I think is getting his due now, but like, you should have seen the reviews he used to get and evolve. I remember reading some oh of 411 my God, back like, when I was trying to learn the indies. Yeah, and I've said this before. I would read like 411 Mania to read Evolve reviews. I remember going, 411 as well. And it would be like, one star, an, another awful performance from Thatcher. Small... I'd be like, what the hell is that? Yeah. You do to get one star yeah. ratings and finally saw him in them. Um... Did he close in the mines? That's why. <laughs> 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 finally saw him in 2017, Wrestle Live. I'm like, oh, he's working as an actual heel. So he's wrestling ACH. He kept on taking him down and like worked his legs mm. so ACH couldn't do any flips. And all the Americans like, oh, this match sucks. Why is he not doing flips? I'm like, Oh, that uh, doesn't translate. Oh, yeah. I so remember, booing him. I remember reading those on 401 yeah. because I remember thinking, I'd never seen him before, so I remember thinking, this guy must be dreadful. Wait, <laughs> and then he, he thinks the worst wrestler of all time reading that bloody website. He yeah. starts getting more mainstreamy yeah. and turning up places that I watch, and I'm like, oh, he's good. Yeah. Very good. Oh, no, he did mat work. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Is that another slow, boring Thatcher match? Crazy. Yeah. But obviously he's doing well in Noah, so... But Chronic got defined by that match against the Brothers of Destruction, and that bothers me. Yeah, that, yeah. That Come on now. Yeah. yeah, they were really... Remember their match against Vito and... Uh, Aye, Johnny. Yeah, yeah Johnny yeah. the Bull, yeah. <laughs> they <laughs> easily beat those two. I watched that match for a weirdest episode. Vito takes an F5, literally, from one of them. Yep. Two seconds later, he's back up, right hand. Because <laughs> <like, laughs> he's the Pavarotti of hard shots of the body. <laughs> okay. You don't harm my mother's hands that make the cheese sandwiches. <laughs> that was the Super Brawl 2000 angle. <laughs> 
<laughs> was that she makes cheese been? sandwiches. I never forget that. Oh, God. Ah. Oh. Wow, those are great questions. Uh, thank you very much for sending them in. If you have any of your own, does Mark have just woken up? <laughs> this is why if you're even awake, please type up your thoughts and send them to mailbag at gotaholic.com. Ah, time for a bit of wrist piss. Yeah. Shalom, diddlers and daddy Joel. Shalom. Shalom. With the daddy pres- Joel, eh? Yeah, I'll... We can't, we can't move on. Can't even get an ego. Okay. With the less prestige, it's really hard to edit when you've got shades on. With the less <laughs> prestigious, <laughs> but all the WWE Hall of Fame and Doug Dean. Bitches videos. all around. <laughs> <laughs> the feather bowler like Jesse Ventura. Hey, Fraser, I just went, went upstairs for a, a little tinkle. Fraser told me a story that apparently you referred to yourself in the third person upon arriving in the office today. Apparently, Fraser was like, hello, Matthew. What? How was Germany? And what did you reply, Matthew? Oh, no. This is only funny when he does it to Jack. <laughs> not he does it to me. Um, it I said, Matthew had a great time in Germany. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> I was still waking up. <laughs> I got to talk with Tom Campbell for two hours about crap. And I was just like, oh, where am I? Anyway, sorry. My Matthew. supporter, shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> How did Matthew find Germany? I'm like, Matthew found it great. <laughs> you, went, you should do the podcast like that. And I'm like, No. <laughs> So he asked, well, well, that's why he was asking he asked, is Matthew doing it? Has Matthew referred to himself in the third person? I was like, no, he hasn't. Why? <laughs> wow. Because he's met that many fans over the weekend in Germany. Oh, my God. Heal Matthew would <laughs> be <he's> brilliant. changed. <laughs> Matthew and Joel, the Battle of the Eagles. <laughs> you know, that film Jack's going to write about the two planets hitting each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. Write that down. Uh, save that yeah. idea. Yeah. No one steal it. Anyway, Shalom. With the less prestigious but all the WWE Hall of Fame inductees being announced, I want you to go through these 20 current wrestlers and say who you think would be best uh, sorry, best fit to induct them. Okay. Remember, fastest thought first. Love the podcast. Been watching you all since I was 17. Wow. I'm now 25. Get out. What? <laughs> oh, dear. Eight. Wow. Eight. <laughs> all the best. Stuart from Bristol. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart from Bristol. I hate how he's 25. Yeah, oh, I he's hate the prime. I, we all hate you, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> so, fastest thought first. Okay. So, wait a minute. so I'm doing who should induct this this person. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Who do you think would be best to induct? Okay. Roman Reigns. Seth Rollins. The Rock. Yeah. Heyman. For just for oh, a different. All I was great say answers. Seth Rollins. Yeah. Would be Seth Rollins. Roman Reigns. Becky. I was gonna say that. Um, who else is there? There's no one else in there. Dean. Drew. Drew. Yeah, mm. I don't know. Uh, CM Punk. <laughs> I know that's hard. Um, I'll say Joe, Smojo. Joe. Hey, man. He hasn't got any friends. Can we choose people outside of WWE? Uh, Joe, no. I'll say Joe. Okay. He hasn't got any friends, so I'd say uh, Ace Steel. Cena? Nah. Hey, man. Cena? Okay, Point. Seamus. <laughs> Is this the next answer? Yes. Okay. Uh, Drew. Yeah, Drew. That's the yeah, answer. Drew, yeah. Yeah. Or Cesaro. Oh, no, Barrett. Sorry. Miro. Oh, he's got loads of friends. He's uh, the opposite of CM. <laughs> Drew McIntyre. Seamus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or maybe Barrett. Yeah, one of the lads. Yeah, David mm. Taylor. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> R-Truth. <sighs> Jimmy. John Cena, his hero. Yes. Little yeah, Jimmy. Can't think of anyone but that. Uh, Batista. Ah, mm. uh, Triple, Triple H. H yeah. yeah. Flair? Uh, no. Or Orton? Yeah. yeah. Could be one of his peers, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Sasha Banks. Be- uh, Bailey. Bailey. Yeah. Eddie Guerrero. Uh, the Miz. <laughs> what's he doing? Um, uh, Maurice. Morrison. Okay. Get Maurice in the Hall of Fame. I'd be watching. That's just. Uh, I'd say Cena for Miz. Cena. Okay. His greatest rival. It's CM great. Punk. <laughs> oh, I'd be good. They cool. get along now. He wanted to comb his hair not mm. too long ago. Yeah. yeah. See you in Saudi. Yeah. AJ Styles. Joe again. Or oh, Daniels. Daniel can't go. Yes, he could. Dixie Carter. Uh, David Icke. <laughs> <laughs> Bailey. <laughs> Uh, Sasha. Yeah, Sasha's the answer there. Uh, oh, sorry, Miss. Wait, wait, hang on. Or Tamina. The mm. mother hen. Oh. They were with each other last night. I'd, I'd, mm, I'd say one of the four horsewomen. Yeah, Becky. No, I'm not Charlotte. Well, the one though. that she had all the matches with, Sasha. Yeah, but she's not in WWE, <laughs> silly. It doesn't matter. Uh, sorry, I've said David Icke, so I'm clearly taking this out. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the New Day. Uh, Craig David. I'm just <laughs> thinking, of, why is he the first non wrestler, I thought? Uh, the New Day. I'll go with Edge and Christian. I was like the a tough one because when the new day uh, started, they were like funny heels. The Dudleys yeah. maybe because that was their mm-hmm. first. Oh no, the bollocks! I'm just talking absolute nonsense. Was that the Usos. Titus O'Neil. Oh, 
prime time players used to love the new they era. beat him for the legendary title start um oh god seth rollins he was the captain that's a hard one actually i can't think the usos yeah yeah oh yeah perfect that would yeah. make sense honestly john cena Ooh, <sighs> so <tough>. many <sighs> orton yeah um Man. there's so many edge i don't know I can't think of a more suitable than Orton, so I'll go with Angle. Him. Yeah, Angle. Yeah. The Undertaker. Oh, God. <laughs> ah, he'd, be, he'd be doing jokes and mm. stuff from his one, one really dead high, man show. High, awkward handshake that to do because he was holding the title, uh, wasn't he? He going to come out dressed as Cena from the, the Oscars. Rock, maybe The Rock for Cena. Mm. Mm. Or Hogan from one babyface star to <laughs> Let's another. move on. Charlotte Flair. Ah, uh, uh, Becky. Yeah. yeah, that's probably the answer, isn't it? If not a father, if he can do it. Mm. Or David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <What's> sure. that? <laughs> Poor David. Yeah, David oh, yeah, Blair. sorry, I yeah, know. <laughs> Becky Lynch. Oh, is this the next one? Mm. Charlotte. Seth. Finn. Yeah, I'll take Finn. Seamus. Yeah, yeah I'm just talking about all the, the Finn Irish trainer. Dresses. The lead singer of Pearl Jam. I've forgotten Eddie his name. Vedder. Eddie Vedder. Eddie Vedder. Why him? Yeah. She loves, she loves Pearl Jam. Oh, it's like literally, it's a shoot favourite band. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. That's mm. nice. Randy Orton. Triple H. Yeah. 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 Or Cena. Yeah. Brock Lesnar. We'll oh, God. On. Oh, I didn't know oh. he was still on there. Yeah. Whoopsie hey. diddles. That's my mistake. William Regal. <laughs> Although there were reports that there's been moves made to bring him. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, they haven't happened yet. Re- so William Regal. Regal. Charlie. Oh, I love that dad in the Hall of Fame. Is that Jamie Clarkson? No, it's no, Charlie, Charlie Dempsey. Dempsey. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. Regal, I'll go with Tajiri. <laughs> oh, my God, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, that I've, and Storm as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and The Rock. Roman. Ooh. Austin. Triple H. Their feud's the first thing I remember in WWE. Yeah. It's not selfishly. <laughs> it's what I first yeah. remember. Wow. Um, yeah. That's a nice wrist piss. Thank you very much, Stuart from Bristol, who is now old. Uh, appreciate you doing <laughs> that. Anybody else wants to send us a lovely, lovely wrist piss? Don't worry, you can. Go to mailbag at cultaholic.com. It's Cultaholics. The question. Ah, what a lovely little podcast. And just a little left for you all shout out to the amazing producers Reno 2200 <laughs> sorry to all the right. headphone <laughs> listeners around ah. the world Noah Anderson ah. Anderson and Tear of Grace Tear of we know him oh, uh, the brat. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what else to say He's, his is, I feel bad for him because this is always like after <laughs> and Brett thank you Brett <laughs> He it's plays, the way Brett would want it. Yeah, he he, he's it. good at the game Binding of Isaac, or bad at it. Oh, it's a good game, though. I always see clips of him raging at it. Oh, it's a hard, it's an annoying game, yeah. Mm. Thank you, you lovely diddlers. Thank you, everyone. Uh, the big question this week is, what is next for Mercedes Money? Money. The dream matches. Who do you want to see do the wrestles with Mercedes Money? Money. Well, immediately one that springs to mind is the one they sort of set up on TV last week, which was Serena Deep, just as a match. A Belle de Belle affair. Oh, Serena said she was like the final boss. Yeah. So we were like, does that mean... Come on, come on, go! You can say that, but... It'll be a good match from Belle to Belle. Yeah. That's a match I'm intrigued like, I don't already. see her as a final boss of anything, but okay. I, I, like, I like people have self-confidence. That's the professor That's nice. of professional wrestling, Matthew. If um, you want to learn things about Why are nicknames like 60s comic book heroes? Papow! <laughs> <laughs> I'm the janitor, man. Yeah. <laughs> the um, janitor of jujitsu. I'll go... The first one that sprang to mind for me in the current AW roster was Britt Baker because of the Kavorka each of them. Oh, because of that as well. Yeah. But because of the Kavorka that each of them have. And they both, I think, would. I think some of the promos would be good. I think Britt's better on the mic. Ooh, you bugger. Usually. But I think that... Um, we're just looking at the AW roster picture. Matthew's very intensely scanning. <laughs> who, who should we... Sorry. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad we're taking it seriously. Um... Uh, Britt was the first one to spring in my mind just because the match would be good and the build would probably be good as well. Yeah. And what? they've both got the locked jaw into the bank statement and the locked jaw. Nah, that's right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Britt Baker hasn't been on TV for a while. No, no. Yeah, no. So that'd be good to get her 
like showing up after you know maybe they have the, the Willow match. I'd be like, well, that'll be a good one as well. Who's music that? Yeah. All I can hear is the OSW lads going, Willow! Willow! Um, Wait, what time is it? It's Tooth Hurdy. <laughs> Britt Baker's here. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how she returns. Um, I'll make you say boppin'. Shut up. Because I'll rip your teeth out. Oh, yeah. I got it. I got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Mariah May is one that sticks out <laughs> to Mariah me when May? I'm. Yeah, because I've been very impressed with her wrestles and what she's done so far. Was that Natalia? Oh, no, it's Mother Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, do you see what I mean? Uh, yeah. She has got a, a, her own uh, roster page on the website. Ma, 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 where's ma, Penelope? Wayne. What's ma, going ma, on with ma. Penelope? Yeah, where's Penelope? Yeah. I mean, there's so many. Thunder Rose is obviously going to be a good match. Thunder. It'd be an interesting... Oh, Twitter's going to suck when that match gets announced. An interesting Kavorka <laughs> with Tony Storm, obviously, <laughs> with their gimmicks. Studying both their entrances. Who's losing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frame by frame studying. <laughs> anyway. uh, what was your... Tony, yeah, right Tony. Um, it would be fun. Uh, yeah. Jamie Hader when she's back. Oh, well, yeah, Jamie. I've uh, Jamie Hader. She's been a gone Her. for a while. Athena. Everyone's Jamie saying how great Athena's been on Ring of Honor, so... Yes, from that'd be nice, but I'm not watching really, Ring of Honor. I only really watch it if she's had a big notable match. Yeah. But she usually does deliver. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that would be a really good match. Yeah. Uh, WWE Women's uh, 2024 Royal Rumble winner, Julia. Um, uh -huh. That'll be a good one because the, the sidekick said she would win. That's yeah, why I've said yeah, that. Yeah. Um, uh, Julia's a good show. <laughs> I'm with you now. Thank <laughs> there are reports you. that Sasha, uh, Mercedes is going to have like opportunities to wrestle in Japan or some stardom wrestlers and stuff. So I'll throw out some... I'll just... Ooh, who are some stardom wrestlers you'd like to see? Um, I think Suzu Suzuki is probably my favourite stardom wrestler of the moment. Mm, Mayu Utani, she's already had a big match with, I'm pretty sure. Um, so that wouldn't be the first one I'd go for either. But Suzu Suzuki, Utami Hayashishta, and Suri. I'll throw out those three names. Anyone who's a fan of stardom will know that's not particularly groundbreaking. <laughs> but I've gone for... with my heart. Good, mm. good. Any any mm. other people? Any free agents out there? I can't think of any other top man. Uh, I'd like to see, no. Everyone's been signed. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the big match. Could be, I guess, Tony Storm, if they're going to keep her at that level. I'm going to keep the two divisions separate, but I wasn't sure if they would do that to begin with just because... Oh, she's getting Willow first. Yeah. 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 Maybe Serena. Because yeah. the story's there with Willow because of the injury. <clears throat> yeah. And the title switchery rule. Yeah. switchery rule. Yeah. Who then beat Willow for it? Might have been Julia, actually. Can't remember. Julia. That's a good well, one I'd like to see. Ross has uh, said that moments, just moments Good, I'm moment. just adding more. You, in fact, interacted I'm with him when he said it. <laughs> Shut up, Ross. I've had a great you idea. Meant, I think you meant Julia Hart, did you not, Matthew? Or did you actually uh, just mean... Yeah, Julia Hart. What do you mean? Oh, you Julia, Julia Hart. Oh, Julia with a G. Sorry, that's my bad. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Julia. No, Japanese Julia. Hart. Oh, I thought you were just for short, short naming Julia Hart. Oh, no, not oh. Julie Hart, no. <laughs> Why not? Julie H. If nothing else, the entrances are going to be amazing. Oh, yeah. The match could suck, but the entrances are going to be awesome. It would be a good match. She's good. The Jule, J, Julie, Julie. Just to give her, oh. give her some flowers. <laughs> Just to give... <laughs> can I throw out... Um, Jesus. Can I throw out Queen... You can Am say anything you like, Jack. Can I throw out Queen Aminada? Because I, ah. sure. I always make a joke every week and go like, what? leader of the rebel forces. Hey. Like, but... She is actually good and is be a better wrestler than that one and lazy joke. Mercedes Monet was in Star Wars. Oh my God, it writes itself. Yeah, there we go. Aye. Who did Queen have a match with recently? That was good. I can't remember now. Jar Jar Binks. Last week. <laughs> <laughs> Before. Uh, yeah. Can't good remember, enough. but I know you yeah, did. It was done. On collision. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah. It was great. We're done. Thank you very much for listening to us ramble incoherently for several hours. Oh, it's warm in here, isn't it? It's oh. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> uh, Jack, what have you got for us until next week? Uh, myself and Owen survived relegation with the Nagata Swans in Japan on twitch.tv forward slash called the Holly. Come on up the Swans. Up the Swans. That's that's a Swan. Uh -huh. um, and uh, I've got a weirdest episode in the works, which should be out in time for WrestleMania. It's a WrestleMania themed one. A weird WrestleMania. And Ooh. matches of the month for February is my pinned tweet now at Jack the Jobber on Twitter. Hell yeah. Or you can find it on the Cult the Holic audio feed. Thank you, Fantastic. Tom, for editing that. I'm going to start twitching at one o'clock on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> Are you all right? Because I'm going to shoot everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Twitch.tv forward slash Cultaholic. Yeah. It's useless information for this week, but from next week onwards, 
Check on in. What are you going to do? Fantastic. She did uh, Thursday last time, I right? did I, but I, I did it too soon after Sam had finished, so no one got a notification. So Matthew oh. here saved my ass by raiding me like Ivar the Viking. Yes. <laughs> like, what are you doing, Ross? You're like, oh, thank you, Matthew. Football, football, football. Oh, my God. Ah, uh, suckers. Um, so I'll do that on a Friday, and there's a tier list, Joel. Is it, is it done mm, now? It is done. It's, it's on the back end. I think, it, I want to say Sunday. He's cooked out. it. It's, it's been my, it's been cooked. It's about meat planets. It's a meaty list. Wade Barrett got involved. We've got a video from Wade Barrett, oh, nice, which is very nice here. So he's defined meat planet for us, so the comments cannot argue. We've got clear criteria. I'm really struggling to get my words out. Bless That's you, all mate. I've got. Long afternoon. Total toodle pip. Fantastic. <laughs> Joel, have you got anything for us? Just that meaty video that Ross just said. A meaty uh, video. Ooh. Said. What no, was I've your favourite part, Joel? <laughs> <laughs> um, ranking, <laughs> ranking me. Oh, maybe the when you exported it was that a good bit? That was good, yeah. I, I, I like seeing Wade. When I, when I saved nice. it before it crashed. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually how it goes for a video editing. Um, I there's a new Watchmania out, it's still online. Yay! Okay. Same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. And I'll be Twitch streaming on Thursdays right after Sam. What are you doing? I get he gives me the hot tag. It's watching crap. Good. I've tried doing stuff like, let's read a book. And then I just put watching whatever and people show up more for that. Perfect. So I was like, all right, cool. Good. Yeah. Good. Good stuff. Watching crap. Not like this podcast, no, which no, no, is no, prestigious. No. And if you don't believe me, you can go to mailbagacolic.com and tell me otherwise. Or go to patreon.com forward slash callaholic and vote in the prestigious Hall of Fame. This has been, uh, what was it what was saying? Not Magnificent Joel. Joel. The Joel. Joel's to peace. Yes. That was it. This has been the Joel's to peace. <laughs> Thank you. This has been Jack. Hello. Uh, goodbye. And this has been Ross. This has been Matthew. What shall we say to end this lovely podcast? Mane. CEO. <sighs> no. I, I prefer you don't like that, do you? I prefer Mane. Yeah. We'll do Mane on three then, okay? One, two, three. Um, Mane. Mane. Mane.